Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Welcome back, everybody. Quick little tech fix. We're ready to go. Um, but now I will say, you know, we talk a little bit about Briggs M. We talk a little bit about Ball, right? I right. think so, one, of the, one of the sleeper kind of carries that we've seen all day are the DPS exchanges. Like DPS yeah. players have been shining in, in this team environment. You know, obviously we see a lot of enables, but especially the echo play today. You know, in it's the, been special in the Oklahoma match. It, it, it was phenomenal. And now, speaking of echo play, I'm ready to see some gameplay. So we're gonna head I'm into ready. the match here. We're starting off on Oasis, right? Surely we see ball on Oasis at least a little bit. I, I highly doubt teams are gonna come rush on City Center, uh, whichever one has the call. Okay, well, speaking of City Center, folks, first map of the day, City Center, gonna be. You know, I, I want to see a Weeper roll out on the cars. You know, if these guys are really the chads that they are, you know, I want to see a Reaper roll on the cars. But, you know, I think uh, think we're in for some surprises today. Blake. Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, I think they got surprises for us. For the yeah, fans out there in the world I, watching, I think they got some good stuff. For people out there in the lobby, get ready for this first uh, bat. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, people out in the lobby, you know, I mean, you, you guys got to gotta show us. We're on a Orissa Hog Sim Tour bat. Surely they don't play this. Yeah, way. surely. They couldn't. They couldn't. These teams are no, there, too. There, there's, there's they know no, better. They couldn't. No. I mean, no. listen, I, I've learned never to underestimate the quicks, the quick shots, right? This man should have a statue among the goats of Overwatch, right? As you know. <laughs> I, I don't really know what to expect here. It looks like they're, they're, not, they, they're not swapping. Okay. Uh, they are staying on the, the Torp Sim. But it appears Wait. the only people going to the point are the two Torbjorns. Only Torbs? Wait, they're just being... And, oh, oh, my. The Gentleman's no. Agreement. The oh, battle. no. The Hammer Battle commences. It's Hammer. Oh, no. Oh, someone's up. Oh, Maxwell. Oh, oh Maxwell. Oh, 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 my goodness. Graham <laughs> View. Maxwell wins the And that's the game. Run. Just end the match. Just end the match. <laughs> Gentleman's <laughs> Agreement coming out for both teams. And you know what's crazy? Converse told me they were going to 3-0, and they just lost. I mean, that's I'll tell you right now, you definitely did not win the, the Pride battle. That's a loss right there, as they are coming out on the D.Va. Brig, Zen, Sombra, Tracer, Boss. As Converse is actually, wait, no, Converse did win it. I'm sorry that we, we had to flip up the screens. Okay, so never mind. Converse, oh, right. actually, Converse did win that. Converse okay, did yeah. win that. I'm back, uh, I got it backwards. As Maxwell is going to get the kill onto the ball on the opposing team. They're going to get the place. Maxwell enters with the hammer kill and is now fragging out. Cleaning up Grandview University. What a play from him. Maxwell MVP so far. Talk about a carry, man. You win the gentleman's agreement, then you entry frag two in a row. It's Garchomp is on hog, man. We'll see if he can play better than he does in my ranked games. That's all I'm saying. We'll see how it works. As we do see a switch over to double shield transition. Double shield Briggs and Bap as Grandview seems to be a little all over the place with what it is they're trying to play here. As the window gets popped early and great ult usage from Converse, right? They're taking the tempo really early, especially against double shield where you have the damage and ultimates. It's really imperative that you use them very early in the fight. <laughs> the Lucio Bap comp coming out from Converse. They're doing a great job of actually like getting aggressive as Hammer. <laughs> He only 65% this deep into the round, and he's already dead again. Are they ever going to get oh, this yeah. MP? Oh, yeah, that's crazy. That's, uh, unfortunately, we are on the screen right now. There we go. Okay, we're back on to uh, the trank and popped here as Maxwell's turret is going to go down. Opia is going to get the kill on a chance as Converse is trying to turn it. Hammer gets one with the visor. Garchomp is there. Hey, oh, Hammer's on the flank in their back line. That's my guy right there. I love to see it as they are going to clean up the fight. They win the gentleman's agreement, and now they are just bodying them at their spawn. Hammers hitting the beeline on the flank. Love to see it. Quick shots. Popping that bongo early. Look, at they're not even going to be able to, allowed to touch. And that is why you rip ults off cooldown. They have dictated the tempo of this round from winning the Torb 1v1 to... Oh, wait a minute. We got a touch from the Sombra. We do have a touch from the Sombra. He does have the Almost EMP. Looks old. to hack the soldier trying to take his legs out. Can't get it. The ball is going to touch. They're going to cycle on the point. This is actually winnable with the EMP. Made it. They get a big core EMP. EMP comes out. Only gets quick shots. Nice dunk. Coming out from Converse to split the team. 
And another cleanup is going to come in here as they 100 0 off the gentleman's agreement all the way home. Chance is hype. You love to see it. Bring in the energy. energy. How do you beat the ski mask, man? Those guys are cold blooded killed. Look at Quicks. Look at those biceps. Oh my <laughs> God. Oh my God. Look at him. Right? Uh, wow. What a great round from Converse to start it off. I mean, you talk about solid play from, from you know, he like head to toe, start to finish. Just incredible job. I mean, I, the tour, <laughs> uh, the tour, the tour one v one happens. It looks like we do have a little technical pause here, guys. But I mean, you know, I, we talk about this all day, and this is something that a lot of Overwatch players at home need to take, you know, to heart. Initiating with ults is such an essential part of the game, Absolutely. especially when you're playing a bunker style comp. Because the more damage you do initially, the more space you get. The more space you get, the more you can eventually whittle them down step by step. And I, you know, we talk about this to our UK players all the time. Playing Overwatch is like the tides. You know, you have high tide, you have low tide. When you have your cooldowns, when you have the big ultimate, it's high tide. You gotta go in. Definitely. And then when you don't have them, you want to kind of kite back like it's low tide because it's you push and pull, push and pull, push and pull. And learning to, if you can learn to control that flow of the game. That's what makes the best teams the best teams. Absolutely. And I also want to point out the spirit of the game. These people, like, we're at the end of the first cycle of Overwatch 1. Like, mm -hmm. obviously, these teams could have just done their, you know, absolute best and just that. But they gave us a really, really cool as fans, point one. They're oh, playing 100%. Hog. They're playing, a, like, Arissa Hog with Lucio Bat. It's like, like these, are, these aren't normal comps, but they're doing it in the spirit of the game in a really, really fun and interesting way. They mm -hmm. told us beforehand, they're like, hey... I want you guys to know, like, we're staying in the spawn. Whoever wins the tour 1v1 gets the point first. Like, they told us that right before we are walking on. We're like, okay, we're not going to give it away. Yeah. We got to say this. Yeah, listen, so, we got we got to keep the surprise for you guys here, right? Because what's, what's the fun of the shelf? We're not giving y'all one, right? So, I mean, I will say this, too. I mean, <laughs> Converse is confident, right? Yes, These guys, very confident. like, you know, as, as a couple of our friends would say, the ego. The ego. The ego. The ego. Right? They're coming ego out, saying, out there. saying they're going to 3-0, saying all these things, right? And personally, that's my kind of play. I told everybody, they come in here, I said, y'all want to talk trash, do it. This is a tournament. We're competing. No, now, you, be respectful. No, you're, you're so, like, just calm and collective, I'm calm and collective all the time. All the time. Just, I'm calm and collective all the time. I've never gotten mad at a video game a single never, time. Never. Never once. Never once. But listen, like, you know, I love competition. And these guys love competition. We all head back into the match here. And that's the spirit of this land. Listen, respectful competition which also involves trash talk i love it <laughs> you know I, 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 I love that guys i love that so looks like we're coming out on rush on uh converse coming out with the rush comp here i um, imagine we probably see a mirror to that um oh yeah oh yeah do you think um, they play double shot? i mean i guess they can but, but like, yeah they, they they might do that we'll see what they end up doing but you know it's all up in the air All right, so how, here we go. Speed boosting to point. Going right, as you as you should. But they are going to be playing double shield, so we're not going to be seeing a mirror here. Converse needs to make sure they get on top of Grandview. They cannot allow Grandview's DPS to get to the high ground to give multiple angles. And I love it. Already the Reaper. The Reaper goes shot down. Shot from nowhere. Nice I pull. cannot believe it. What a great first pick. And they're already on the defense. Backing up. Yeah, we'll take a look here as the double shield has been forced out. The longer the fight goes in against double shield, the better the symmetry is, though. So they do have a big damage on the front line. They built a lot of the window. Still, Kiwi going to go down to 1 HP, 90% on the window. Can, can they, if they build the window up. No, it's too late. Quicks is going to go down as the double shield is going to survive. Saving the window for next fight. Good read from Kiwi there. You love to see that. Now, really, that entry kill on the Maxwell from Noah is going to be what does as Grandview. Ashton, great hit scan player. I see Ashton all the time in comp. Very frustrating player to play against because Ashton, all Always going to be hitting those shots. Usually very consistent. And, you know, when you see players like that, they get a lot of value. So I will say one of the big things we should be looking for here is the D.Va play from Converse. When they are playing that level of hits game, we saw it. If Garchomp was there to DM the, oh, the there's uh, a drone. Reaper in, they could have had a better chance there. But here we go. Already into the old fight part of this thing. Yeah, nice look with that Dragon Strike as Maxwell is going to trade up an Ashen again. Like the double shield ultimates are so hard to beat. But the Sim Wall is on the point. I don't think it's out. Oh, Rig Rally, it's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah, let's just go next fight. Yeah, listen, you, for, uh, you force the rally. That's all you need to do in these fights. Literally, you force rally. You wait out the next one. And look, Converse, they forced out everything. You force out You force out Dragon. You force Flux. You force Window. Rally, five ults forced. And they have their beat and Blizzard and Shatter and Bomb. So if they get on this point, they need to do it with just like one ultimate, maybe two. That's going to be their win comp for this round. Because if they have to use more than two here, it's going to be too hard for the rest to have a nice TP coming out. Nice. And now, oh. Up, up, immortality field. Up, 
that we love that ability. All right, there we go. As the shatter is there for quick shots, looking for it. He shatters oh, it. Oh. Put it in the montage. Oh my God! Flip as the it. blizzard comes out, they should still be able to win. His hammers on the sim, but Maxwell goes down to the dynamite. This is still winnable. The longer the fight goes on, the better it is for Sim. As Sim is in the flank on the back line, taking the duel. Come on, hammer! Little shimmy shake, Bob on the point, Bob on the Bob's head, trying to clean it up. His hammer is going to get the kill to the brig. And Converse, they win the fight, but, but it what, takes what cost? everything at what at cost, what Thanos? Cost? At what cost? But they do have Sim wall and window, so they still can get it done. But they have to window to survive. They have to play with aggression. They need to they layer their off, ults, too. They, they play with aggression, layer the ults. They it's have to really layer important. the ults because with the supercharger coming in from Grandview, if they do not stop the damage with this with this wall, I don't believe they can hold on to this point. Yeah, 100%. As they stack both ultimates, that's not good at all for them as Grandview can just kite it out and re-engage with their window flux in last fight territory man that's just what you can't do as there's the window here comes the flux right on time right on schedule who's gonna be in it's a big one they're all one hp the drones there they're gonna have to tp out but they have to take the space and they don't take the space aside of the sig was gonna get booped down oh, no he makes it back out oh, there's the rally unlucky as they're gonna be walking straight into the team <laughs> quick shots is going but maxwell gonna kill two he can turn it the Asimov is still up. Bob. Oh, he's got the Blizzard too. As Maxwell pulls off a miracle, they lose with a rallying break, and they have every single ult available. You know, you saw Grandview fail to take that space that they really needed to. They had the chance to walk with they the window used flux. And they just did it. ult. That fight and have a sim ult back, beating even the Baptiste back to his ult. Yeah, that's like, the what power a, of sim extra. The power right of sim there. and just staying alive for any sim players out there. Just stay alive at sim. You get so much value by just doing that. Yeah, nice read to keep the discipline from using that wall and stacking it with the blizzard a great read from maxwell's quick shots is gonna shatter six they're all on the ground as he tries to clean up the fight hammer going crazy on the sim and look at this discipline with ultimates we were really worried at the start that they wouldn't be able to clean it up but lucky for them grandview gave them the opportunity to actually get back into the fight by not pushing the space when they had the ult advantage and now look at this they're gonna start up front with the window and the sim wall and the oh the dragon comes out though from grandview i'm not sure if it's gonna be able to get anything as the bomb is gonna get ash as Maxwell and Guard Chopper gonna be cleaning up this fight, but Quick Shots does go down, but they do not get a touch. What great play from Converse! And you know, a round that by all means they should have lost, right? You know, the Absolutely. old economy was not very good there. Uh, you know, but at the same time, they were able to actually pull it through and make something big happen. You know, really a little bit at the, you know, if, you, if you're grand, you got to be kicking yourself a little bit there because, you know, you had every opportunity to win that. They gave it to you, but that's what's, again, like the thing that really separates the good teams from the great teams is the great teams recognize these two, three second windows and they capitalize on them consistently. So if you're grand view, what are you changing up to try to win the next map? Um... I really think you just need to go back to what you were doing before. I think they were playing with a level of patience and stuff like I think they got ahead of themselves. Kind of what we saw Oklahoma when they uh, at the very end mm -hmm. of their match on Eichenwald where they had a lot of ults, and I, I don't know if they just defaulted back to it. But, it, it, but here's the other thing, and this is an important thing to mention. Like You're going to get into those close scenarios sometimes where you are down and you need someone to make a play. But mm -hmm. Maxwell made the play, but that wasn't the end for them. They understood this is the, the simple, doing the simple things right. Yeah. They understood they cannot get to the point on double shield in time. They cannot get to the uh, they cannot get uh, to the point in time. We need to aggressively use the ults that we just gained in the previous fight, and that's what they did. And they blew them apart. They couldn't get to the point. They couldn't even they couldn't even the Ash couldn't even get in range to send the Bob to touch. That's how well they played that last point. So, if you're Grandview, just go back to what you're doing before. You're totally fine. Yeah, I mean, uh, overall, like I think we're in for a treat on this next map as we are heading over to Rialto. Which, again, is a map that could go either way. You know, you see teams play double shield on Rialto. You see teams play rush on Rialto. You see teams play ball comp on Rialto. So this is like a map where maybe all the way up to third point, you know, you see a lot of comp diversity, especially like playing rush, like trying to play rush and cross that bridge on second when you're attacking can be very, very difficult, right? Because you saw how Kentucky in the previous match how like really stuffed Cumberland. And they couldn't get in because you kept engaging first with ultimates, right? And as long as you're trying to crush crush them early, it could go either way. And I, I, I'm really curious, though, like what uh, what team comp both teams are going to come out on here, right? Because you have Converse on the offense here. Or sorry, on the defense. 
what do you play? Do you because really it depends on what the defense is playing that will dictate the tempo of this game. That's what I was about to say. I, I think it's really scenery. about counter comping. They already know what each other like to play. It's like if they believe you're about to say play a brawl, go for another brawl. Oh there. no! But are we about to see the double shield mirror? No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. Oh no, to quick shots on Hanza. What is? What? <laughs> oh my goodness! He said it was a strat. He yeah. said it was a strat. Okay. I mean, okay. Let's see it. I mean, you know, we'll uh, <laughs> quick shots Hanzo, and you know, I, you know, you don't usually see a double shield hold on their spawn doors. Um, I think they will play pretty far forward, uh, but you do see the Mercy Ash coming out for Grandview, um, as well as the Echo pick, and I think the Echo, especially with Chance on Brig instead of Mercy or Zen, the Echo Ash should be able to put in work, and that's definitely where that comp is vulnerable because that Brig is just not going to get much value on the first couple fights because they're playing full poke. But here's the deal, it's up to Maxwell. Without yeah. that Brig protecting the backline, if Maxwell can really get running into the backline and start assassinating the BAP, we could we could see another full hold type of potential. Oh yeah, 100%. So this could get very, very interesting as a nice little grass comes out from Garchomp. He's been a great, like I said, Garchomp on Sigma is, is, is usually a, a, a dub for the team. Um, but yeah, nice little angle here from uh, Ashton. He's gonna get a nice 30% ult on the Bob already. He's gonna be looking for the trace in the backline. Who is kind of stuck? You know, if I were them, I would be trying to rotate to an angle on high ground and poke that break out forcibly. But um, nice you know, they're by chance going to save the tracer. Yeah, yeah. As there we go. As they actually are aggressively walking in, and this is why you kind of want to walk to that high ground, right? Like the echo does get a good angle on the side, but your Rissa kind of gets stuck, and you've actually forced Converse inside and made them wrap around. But if you take the high ground where the brig can't brawl, you're kind of just giving them the advantage there. So. Really, just a positional error there coming out from them, but big ults coming up here. What do you want to see at the start? I'm really looking for Ashton to get another huge dynamo up here and really trying to make a Bob play. Getting the Bob deep into, especially while the Mercy's coming off With of no death. Too. Yes, try get the Bob deep into the uh, into the enemy lines and then go hyper aggressive with your Echo and see if you can really get some people picked off. Yeah, hopefully we do see them walk up to the high ground though, get a little bit more contest going. As it Ashton is. gets a nice little entry pick there, but the window is available for still Kiwi. They're gonna pop it off. Kuda see as how they're walking low ground. They're giving the break free inspire you don't want to give that brick value as hammer is going to get another kill as the window is ready for blue sandwich are they going to use it i don't think so as it just doesn't really seem like uh grandview knows where their comp has the advantage like they have been playing where the brig just gets free value when they could be forcing a lot of these angles as the maxwell is going to be taking the duel here on the echo nice little recall coming out nice little clip on to noah gonna clean him up maxwell has been terrorizing the back lines and one of the big reasons for it and we mentioned during the first fight is that when he gets in trouble chance is stepping out into the small room and helping him out if they're playing the high ground as sam has been saying they cannot do that yeah and so they need to be making these moves but they got a lot of ults coming up on both sides how are they going to layer them correctly? There's a lot of room to give for Converse at this yeah, point. This there's is the window. still very far forward. There's the window coming out first as the rally gets popped from Converse. And they're going to have to play very slow with that rally. Try to live his quick shots. is going to go down, but get one with the dragon. Is the brig is going to get one. Is Maxwell going to get the third force as Grandview. They're falling like flies. They aren't initiating with ults very well against this double shield comp. And they're not taking big angles. I think their positioning has been the biggest detriment where they're kind of just giving the win to Converse without actually forcing anything of actual there consequence. There is a break swap here. There yeah. is a break swap here. We do see a Grand break View. swap, which now will allow it to be a little bit more neutral. But if I'm them, you know, you wasted three minutes trying to do the same thing over and over again instead of trying to mix it up. And that's just so detrimental to the team. As now, they finally are going to the high ground, but they do have a break. Oh, a nice little pick from Ashton on the tra This has <laughs> to be the fight. The tracer. Yeah, this is the fight that they win as the flux comes out. Big flux onto the Sigma. Gonna look for the rock rocked out of the sky by the copy. As the copy coming up on flux most likely as the flux is gonna get popped from the copy. Gets one or two, slams him down. Not gonna get the finish on anything as the fight is going either way. Grandview does have the advantage. They finally Clean them up, and here's the good news. They forced the window out of Converse, so what does Converse have to retake? Uh, this, this Tracer Bomb from Maxwell has to be, and he couldn't even do it. Like, So we're going to see, they will have another recontest here. Converse will have another recontest here. They do have a Pulse Bomb, and with the Arisa, you can see a big pull play with it, because there's going to have a lot for the Sigma half to eat, so to take care of Maxwell, who's been great all series, is going to be very tough. Oh, yeah, for sure. As the window is ready for Grandview, they'll be looking to pop that very early, and there it goes. Not really the best angle on it, but at least it's something. As Maxwell's going to go down. Quick shot's down as well. Both DPS dead for Converse. They're going to have to pull a Miracle off to turn this one. The Dynamite gets popped. Brick goes down, and at the last minute, it took four minutes for Grandview 
to really break through this choke. What I want to see them do differently is really try to take the tempo. It's quick shots. Bye bye. Brit says Brittany, right? He he, he is uh he is gone. He gone. She gone. She gone. She, she gone. gone. <laughs> Shred Bundy, right? So there we go. Yeah, we'll see though. I mean, you, ideally you get aggressive with that pulse pump, but they do have immortality field. Right, so maybe you, you pulse to force the drone, pop the bongo early to get the space, especially in double shield shield mirrors, like popping bongo early as a dragon gets popped out from quick shots. A nice little split from him as Max is gonna be stuck in their team and look at quick shots go. Nice dragon to split them off, force the drone, and most importantly, a great follow-up from Converse as they're gonna be cleaning up this fight. And now this is where it's gonna get tough. We talked about the bridge, Blake. How many teams have you get seen get stopped without even being able to cross? It, it's innumerable but the good news is Ashton with the long range hit scan has been playing really great all series one of the reasons they were even got the cap first point was that amazing pick entry pick on the tracer previously we need to look for something similar because with Converse coming up on a lot of ults here. I'm not sure if they're going to cross yeah, the bridge. And on the there's first the try. window to start off the fight to really pressure the cross. The drone is forced. Here comes a big pull in two seconds. Can they get the finish? Oh, it's so close. The flush gets popped and they just get ripped to shreds. Look at how Converse is engaging. Take notes, all you folks at home. With double shield, initiating with these big, strong ultimates is just essential to winning. And I think Grandview's problem is that they're too hesitant to pull the trigger on a lot of these ultimates that would give them the big advantage. Because if you ult super early, it forces them back off the space. And if they're back off the space, they can't initiate on you while you also, cross. ult order matters. Oh, yeah. Hammer had his ult the entire time, but didn't use it. So he could use it now, now to yep. build up the rest of the ults that they used in the previous fight. So watch the ult charges of Converse during this fight. Maxwell already back up to another pulse bomb. Yeah, you've got to engage with something, though. You cannot be holding this copy. Like, here's the problem. This is what, you know, good teams are so great at as Ashen is going to get a kill on a Maxwell, which will hurt their setup on the next fight, which is a great kill. He's done a great job of that. You gotta go early because you have to respond to ultimates with ultimates. That's just kind of how the game works, and that's what made Overwatch have so much depth. This I really want to see Noah set up above them before the fight and use this dupe just so that they can't even initiate. As there's the flux, a nice look from him. He's gonna have to probably back off most likely. There's the second flux, and now they need to layer their ults properly. You need to see them wait as you now you see the discipline from Converse to back off against those ultimates, and look, they can't follow up. So you force two ults at the cost of nothing for just space it. Right Ramview now, still has the ult advantage, though. Here comes a rally. A yeah. great pick by Noah also. A big rally comes up as Noah is going to get killed onto Hammer as they're going to be looking to close this fight out, chasing the brig out. They will have a recontest at the bongo, and this is where the ult snowball needs to start happening. This is why they won't even get a touch here, I don't think, because, well, somebody's contesting the point. It was the tracer. They used the window, and look, they, they're going to struggle to even touch this point now because they used that bongo super early for once, and that is the difference between winning and losing right there. You just saw it. you got to initiate with ultimates and double shoot. Absolutely, and once again, Ashton saving their butts. You saw it again. The tracer pick, it was the same thing as last time. A tracer pick gives them the intro, which doesn't allow them to hold as far up. That gets them to cross the bridge, which is their main bugaboo during this. So yep. I'm really looking forward to this next fight. Yep, as the window does get popped, Max gets down to one HP. Bob goes in a little bit off sides of the ball, but they yep. do force the rally. And I take that trade any day of the week because now you're, you are coming up on your flux. you got to make a big play with this flux before they can get their bongo flux off on their own. Force big ults out this fight and try to turn as a pull comes out. Dragon Strike comes out for quick shots. The drone gets forced as Larissa is going to die through the window as they're just going to have to reset. But here's the problem, Blake. Flux was not forced. Window was not forced. Uh, 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 Bongo was not forced. How are you going to beat that? You're at a Honestly, huge detriment. Honestly, it's almost impossible. With Supercharger and Window because and look Flux, at them. there's so much to stop them. They're, they're going to go point. up here and they're just going to stuff them with it. And they have not been able to answer this all game. We need to see... This is a the high window. level five head commentating right here. We need to see a pick. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, Ashton yeah. has to find a way. He's been doing it on both points. He has to find a way. If they do not, they will get stuffed here. Yeah, they did survive the window, but now they have to survive the flux and the bongo. And I hate to break it to you guys, but as you can see, it's probably not going to happen as Noah has forced the cart. Wait a minute, with this angle, he can make something happen as the Sigma is going to get an entry kill on the quick shots. They're a little overextended. They can break that bongo. It's being a huge grass on the front line. Maxwell oh, has copy. the pulse bomb. There's the rally. Misses the pulse on the right, but the rally both breaks trade. Copy is out. He's on the Arisa. Can he get his bongo off? His quick shots coming back to the point. Ashley to clean up the fight. Guard chop goes down. And oh my god, what I a good angle! This. What an angle from Noah. That's what he needs to be doing. We were talking about this earlier as they are gonna finish up the point. 
They have to force the angles. If they're going to all in forward, we talked about this in our game earlier too with UK versus Louisville. If, if they all in forward, you need to send a flanker above and behind it to pinch them and create a crossfire. I mean, you even see this in, in, in modern history of how even World War II was won. War on two fronts. you got to create multiple angles to crush, your, to crush them if they're going to run at you that aggressively. And finally, we get to see... Grandview do that for the first time in maybe like the entire round. So if they do that more on this defense where they actually have the options to do so, we're going to see some good results. Hey, look, sometimes you need to rely on some of your better players when you're in a slump to pull you out of it, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. But that, but that is not sustainable over a long period of time. Converse over the series has definitely been the better team, but Grandview has definitely shown the signs, and obviously they're evenly matched teams. They should be able to hold on here just have a really solid defense. If you're Converse in the back of your mind, like we had them on first point and we had them on second point and we had them on third point and we couldn't stop them. And that, so if they pull this, if they pull this map out, like it's going to be something in their minds. Like we, we let this go. We really did let this go. Uh, so a Paul, a ball comp. Are we going to see the ball? Or do you think we're going to, they're going to keep the ball? Well, honestly, I was looking at those little robots do some painting. I didn't even know they were there. I river, a little, little river they, they, maintenance. They, they, I never even knew that. Can I get like one of those uh, Omnix A Blizzard? I, if you guys have patented those little uh, design bots, can I get that from my room? Oh, that'd be so good. That'd, that'd be so great, Blizzard. That's your next big thing. All right, so we're coming out here. We see Double Shield, Babsan from Grandview. As well, on both teams, we see Babsan. We actually did not see Zen last time. I guess they just decided to play Zen this time around. Who knows? As uh, that means that you're going to see a lot more angle play here, right? You're going to see way more poke. You're going to see Sigs flanking a lot more. And, and a lot less close range as Ashton going to get a big kill on a chance. Saw the fight, but they got to be careful. They have no shields. You guys play that far up. You're going to get pulled and killed as the pull comes out from Grandview. Noah with a great angle. And this is what Noah needs to be doing now to go right side. There you go, buddy. There you go. Right. Force the off angle. Ashton is doing a great job of getting picks. If you fly above and behind and force them from the back, those are the fights you're winning. And when your team actually rotates on high grounds alongside with you, that is the perfect synergy. But look at this. Converse win. got exactly what they needed after yep. this first fight. If you're going to lose, behind. at least get your tracer behind because they are not playing a break. Oh, oh. They are playing a Zen. Can Maxwell find a pick? for Converse. We'll see if he can. It looks like they're trying to get some big contest off as, as uh, the Zen for uh, Grandview has a great angle. Blue Sandwich, man. He's, a, he's, a, he's on the flank. He's on the flank. He's in his own back line trying to take out flankers on their side. The Tracer is going to be up on the high right going in. Maxwell looking for the pick. His quick shots is going down to 1 HP. The window is popped forward as they're going to be trying to spam out again. I, I do not like that teams don't go high ground here. I would always walk out of high ground here as the windows are maxed as OP is going to be trying to clean up this fight and chase them out. Chance is going to get a big kill under the bath entry frag as they need a big ult here to try to turn this fight. If they want to, it's quick shots. Hitting that bomb on Blue Sandwich to open up the doors to clean up the fight. We love to see that. Quick shots, most flexible player in the world. Um, you, you could see it in the, corner, uh, in the corner of the screen a lot of times. The bath in the Zen for Grandview is looking the wrong way so often because the pressure that Maxwell is putting on them. Yeah, look at all the pressure too. The forward hold coming out from Popping uh, the bomb, they know they have to cross the bridge. Yeah, and that's a big look and the fight is won before it even starts. But wait, the flux is popped and it gets robbed out of it. Quick shot's gonna commit the dragon. And I, I've got to say, I think Converse has been much better with ultimates than Grandview has this entire series, right? They, they know exactly how to take it to them. You see the Dragon initiation sometimes. You see the Bongo initiations off all the time. Like, the big damage amp ultimates are constantly being used properly from them. And you don't, again, this is what happens when you get a veteran team of players that have been playing this game for a long time through a lot of different metas who understand what you actually have to do to win as they're going to be pushing up the ramp here. This is a very big deal. They can stuff them here and not let them actually deny their progress across the bridge. This is going to be big. You've got to use that bongo early though, man. you got to use that bongo early as they're going to be able to window first. Flux gets popped. They're knocked in the air. He does not have Fortify to save him from it as Ashton's going to have to look to get a big pick here as the Hanzo and the Zen are in there. As Noah going to get the entry kill on the Maxwell. Looking for more as Quick Shots is on the left flank trying to poke them out. A nice angle for him, but Noah's going to try to collapse on him and get a kill. Quick Shots going to win, but it's not enough. Ashton kills one. Max is going to clean up the fight and Grandview is going to be able to do it. Get a nice little stuff, and that fight win was so important because now they can stuff the bridge. Exactly. Anything you can do, we can do better. And what have we seen from Grandview? Ashton's amazing long-range hits gameplay. And now he can sit all the way back on the bridge using Discords, using Immortality Fields. This is everything for them. Grandview has to burn almost 
all of their time bank down here. Yeah, this is this is where it's going to be big. They have to consecutively win as Noah is in there big. Looking to get kills, but he's getting poked out. The drone is forcing. Got to get him right now or you're not going to get him as Noah gets the bap. Trades out though, but it's a worth trade. DPS with the sacrificial pawns of this game. Killing a support. So where there's a dragon gets popped for quick shots. What an angle. He is going to die because there is an immortality field in the game. Oh, oh, he drops oh. out of his own ammo. Maxwell trades out, but it's too, too little too late. As the entry kill on the bat to start the fight is really important. But guess what? Now, they only have like the pull flux to really stuff them on this bridge. Can they do it? Like, what do you think Converse is going to do to answer this? Oh, 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 oh. Can you get the pick? Oh, oh nice no. kill! Sneaky kill from Maxwell. That's big. You still gotta use these ults though if you're Grand Canyon. You're, or Grand you gotta use these ults. If the flux is pop, that's a big one. They're down two. Can quick shot side. He's one, but they're all immortal. Unlucky. As the rock comes out to try to clean them up, as the bat is still one HP. He's gonna get pulled down. A nice pull coming out from Hammer. Great play from him. And Maxwell, being the hero, his team needs Batman in the back line over there. They can't even see him coming. Absolutely. We've seen it. Ashton saving the offense for Grandview, and now Converse getting saved by Maxwell, getting that massive pick on the Noah. We saw how much the tick damage was needed to get, break that immortality field. Can they even cap right now? The time bank will be so high if they can. They do a 321 time bank. They have to stop the bleeding. Grandview has to find a way to stop the bleeding on third point. Yeah, great or we cleanup. we could be seeing the end of the series already. Yeah, great cleanup from Maxwell. Let's, let's, let's talk about this, right? First of all, the ult uses are just better for, for Converse. Absolutely. The bongo is put out in the middle of the open, and the window is on a good angle. The bongo instantly breaks. You don't get any of his hammer. Look again. Their ult usage has been so good all game. And they're not doing anything to stop them as quick shots. Going to get the damage boost. Cleaning up kill after kill here. Bab is getting under one. And the Converse has just been so much better with ults. Someone signed this man. Yeah, <laughs> quick oh, shots oh, is hitting everything. Oh my god. Quick shots is hitting everything. As they do have flux. And I guarantee you Garchomp is going to use this run on the choke. And quick shots is going to drag it after. Actually, if they flip it, they're going to drag and try to force the drone. I would have flexed first personally. But that's all good. Is they're going to flex them out of the drone. Look for the big kill. The copy is used by I think it's too late. As the copy gets stuck from Maxwell. Again. Just Almost a trance. Old usage, right? As Opia is going to be the kill. Garchomp is low. He's immortal, he's immortal though, as he is going to get low. His quick shots and chance are going to clean this fight up. Opia is going to get the kill on Garchomp. Can they actually turn this? No big ults coming up for Grandview aside from Bob. Can they stall for their Bob to get there? As the ball is a kill set. Oh, oh no. Oh no. A Charlie oh, Niner, bro. No, 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 no. Oh no. Oh no. Looks like Johnny Flynn on the ball out there. Oh, oh no. no. You're going to get to do that oh, to him. Come on, no. man. Oh, no, 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 no. Holy, Yo. we got a little cloud nine here. But hey, listen, if, if you're Grandview, if you start using your ults earlier, you're in this game. Absolutely. Like, they, like they have equivalent level of players. We've seen Ashton popping up. We've seen great plays. Honestly, I'm obviously fortunate on Ashton because we've seen so much from his POV. But there's been great play all around their team. Just calm down. You've got time on the bank. It's not like it was a, a single cap escort point or a not escort hybrid point. So you can do this here, but you've got you got almost no time. You need to make sure you do it well. What do you think you need to see? Because they basically have one solid fight here. How does Grandview do it in your mind, Sam? Uh, to be honest, like you know, they it's not an old fight, right? There's a minute on the clock. You're not going to get to the old fight. Right. So you got to win the mid fight, which is actually something they've been good at. They just need to go to the high ground and stop brute forcing it. I mean, granted, there's no brick here. Actually, no, Converse is on brick. They start on brick to be prepared for the ball. So you, 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 the, the number one thing is don't make the same rotation you struggled with for four minutes on your first fight. You need to mix it up because good teams adapt, right? So they need to recognize the brick pick, rotate the high ground instead of main, poke them out slowly, and slowly win the fight. Absolutely, especially when they have the Zen. Get the Zen to the high ground with the BAP. They can do a lot of damage by themselves. Yep, as they are being forced off this high ground pretty early. Now, comp identification, as we talked about earlier, is going to be the really big thing here. Can Grandview recognize that there is a Brig on the other team and that do not want to play in Brawl range? His quick shot's going to go pretty low. It looks like they're going to try to go main, though. That's exactly what they need to not be doing. His quick shot is going to be low. Just back it up. Don't give the Brig Inspire. Kind of just letting her have that one, unfortunately, as they're going to be trying to brute force it main. you got no cooldowns. You're going to have to back off here. His quick shot is in there, but it looks like they haven't really learned the lesson or keep trying to immortality field already out for Grandview. Yeah, yeah, immortality field has been forced by Converse. And again, this just favors the Brig. You're never going to kill her here. I think they're just going to lose this one on main as the window has popped already. He's not even going to be able to hide from the shield as the Sig is caught out in the open. And they really just didn't learn their lesson, Blake. We kind of saw this one coming. Unfortunately, they're trying the same thing over and over and over again and expecting different results, which is the definition of insanity or something. It's an Albert Einstein quote. I'm not quite sure as the fight has been cleaned up that sounds all right. together. And we'll the go. Bongo has been used to clean it up. They don't even have a touch and converse they're just they just kind of know what they're doing 
Absolutely. Right? They just seem like a, a, a well-oiled machine. Their spacing is great. Their comps are very aware and have a lot of coverage for whatever they can come out on. They were prepared for a ball comp. They were prepared for double shield. They were prepared for a uh, rush, right? Their comp can really be played into anything, and, and that is such an essential part, especially when defending at high-level play. You need to have a comp that has coverage for everything, or else you could get surprised by something and get run over. You know, if I'm Converse, or if I'm Grandview, I'm going bashing on cart. What's a break going to do? Honestly, and, and look, this is one of the big things that I pointed out that last fight. I interjected really quick. I said, like, the Grandview had used Immortality Field first. Mm -hmm. If you watched, when Grandview used Immortality Field first, immediately Converse backed up to the next corner. And once they came around the corner and used the last of their abilities, the shield cooldowns for Arisa and the Sigma, it was over. They backed up. They threw the, the Converse through their Immortality Field in an unbreakable scenario. And we know it's history. So it, it's, it's really tough. Obviously, this is going to be an almost impossible hold, uh, but crazier things have happened. Crazier things have happened. I mean, I, the thing is, like, which, the, the big difference for a lot of these teams is can you actually adapt to your opponents? And, and being able to adapt so, is a lot of teams like big strong suit, and I'd, I'd really like to see Grammy work on adapting and trying to actually make the big changes, make the big plays, force the different ankles, try something different, right? And that's something that, like, as an Overwatch player, you know, it's very hard to see that when you're in the actual moment of the game. And that's why like, I think coaching can be really beneficial to a lot of people because they give you that perspective as they're going to be getting poked out of the high ground here. We see the duels start very far forward as the Fortify has been forced already. A nice pull coming out the Discipline from Hammer to time that as the Drone from Kiwi has been forced already. Which is very, very good for Grandview. Let's see if they can actually capitalize on it. He's going to be looking for quick shots with the Tracer. Going to take out Noah. That's a big entry kill. And see how the, see how Garchomp is forcing the side angle. And they're trying to take different spacing and how it forces the lamp immediately. Look at how good they're playing, or how well they're playing this double shield, rather. Sorry, we're from Kentucky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're doing a great job. It's quick shots. Going to clean up this fight as well. They're just forcing the angles so much better than Grandview is, and they, they, they deserve to win for that, as Ashton is going to look to try to get these kills, but it really limits Ashton's ability to get this picks because it's all about setting up the proper angles, and Converse, it's too hard to overcome a team that's using their ultimates better, a team that's positioning better too. If it's only one of those two things, you're going to really be able to turn that, but they, they compromise too much of the mid-fight to actually like let that happen. Hey, so, they promised. They promised the sweep, and they did it. Yeah, they did it. They did. They As, told us. The, oh, that was Garchomp with the ski mask on. Look at Garch. Look at them. Look at. I guess I have to go to six flags with this man now, huh? Yeah, I guess you do. I did. I did promise him that. Honestly, a very solid match from both teams. I think if you're Grandview, you, there's a lot to take away from that and a lot to learn because you make one or two minor changes and you might be winning both of those maps. Absolutely. They and these two teams are stacked. We will probably end up seeing them again. Yeah, I mean, I hope so. I mean, I, you know who I really, I really want to see Oklahoma again. I want to see Ken, Kennesaw and Oklahoma play again. I mean, those are that the, was a legendary match. That was a legendary <laughs> that match. That was a legendary sure. match. Down to the wire to two like of the better programs that we've seen. Like those guys are, are are very sharp. So I think, could we get a view of the bracket to see how the rest of the games have uh, have been going? Is, is there an updated version of the bracket here as a production already on it? All right. So semifinals. It looks like. And to no surprise, Ohio State A team is going to beat Kennesaw because that is a very, very solid line. I think they're favorited to win, if you ask me. Um, and Converse going to be in the semis. And Kennesaw State, we might. I think we're going to see an Oklahoma rematch in Kennesaw State, we Oklahoma. Have, we could absolutely that, see That might be what we see. And I believe that Grandview will go on to play either Oklahoma, if they're not playing Kennesaw, or the winner of UK. Um Whoever UK played, we would be playing the. We could possibly be playing the Ohio State B team. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not 100% positive on that, but either way, uh, we will still be around for the rest of the night. We've got dividing here as well. He's done a phenomenal job. We're really grateful to have everyone here at the Cornerstone facility in UK. Uh, it's been it's been a blast so far. Oh, I didn't even know realize we had a little mouse keyboard here. I might be half run some comp here after this. I'm just oh, saying, watch your cues, watch your cues. I might be playing some hog tonight. Um, but no, we'll see. Hog, hog. Hey, listen, man, it's so low key. Look, what, what do you want me to do? Okay, what fair do you want fair. me to do? Is uh, yeah. So that's gonna do it for us for now. I believe we might be heading to break production. Do you guys need us on here for a, a little bit longer? Because listen, I could talk all day. It's just in the bloodline. Like I don't know what to, I don't know what to say. That's actually true. <laughs> this, this guy literally. Oh, oh my goodness! Hey, we could we could talk all day if we need to, but 
Um, we will see as here's our full vision. The broad, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. we are going to be playing Kentucky's going to be playing Ohio State B team. Oklahoma's going to be playing WKU. Another Kentucky team still in the tournament. Yeah, another Kentucky team still in the tournament. We'll see how they do. I think that will be a great game to watch. As WKU's esports program has actually been around for a long time since even like 2016, 2017. They were one of the pioneers in the state. Good awesome. credit, credit to their program. Seriously, yeah. Uh, the wonderful people down in uh, Bowling Green. Um, go Hilltoppers. Go Hilltoppers. Right? Go Hilltoppers. Go Hilltoppers. If you know, you know. We can't help it. Also, right. I'm really surprised. I just want to point this out. How little Briggs and Ball we've seen. There's yeah. been a lot of echo play, a lot of double shield play between the teams so far. And maybe that's just their strong suits, and we just haven't really seen some like really like into double shield uh, or uh, really dominant Briggs and Ball teams. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I'd be willing to ask some of the guys out there why why they've been playing what they have. But mm-hmm. honestly, that's be better for them. I mean, and let's just not forget. Chat, I hope you've clipped it. The Torb 1v1. To begin this Torb series. 1v1. Let us not forget the Torb I, listen, 1v1. Honestly, if I had to chalk up this match to one thing, forget the ult economy, forget the positioning. You know, they set the tempo. They they won the gentleman's agreement off spawn. And the, the Torb 1v1 set the tempo for that entire tournament. They did. The I think I, they, they were shook. They couldn't, they were they shook. couldn't I mean, stop they couldn't themselves. Do I mean, you get bodied like that. I mean, I'm just saying I've never lost. You know, I have the, I one of the longer hammer hit lists in all of contenders. So, mm, you know, just mm. Razor. You got some work to do, brother. You got some work to do. Listen, I've got I've got the hard blue hammer. I've got I I, have, I might have to get the folder out after this one. I've got, I've got a long list. I've got a long list. But yeah, so a lot of great games still to be played today. Make sure you guys hit that follow button on the University of Kentucky Twitch because hopefully the more support that we see here, the more likely it is we can do another one. And as you guys know, we love Overwatch here, right? At times. Mm-hmm. But, <laughs> at times. Yeah, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's a rocky over. relationship, but we're here and we love the game. So the more... That we can play and put on, you know, all these tournaments for a lot of these guys who are grinding very, very hard for their collegiate spot, who travel a lot, who who are grinding through school and and playing competitive Overwatch, which can be incredibly exhausting. You know, these guys deserve, guys and gals deserve all the credit that they deserve, and it'd be really great to see all of you support them as you have. So Absolutely. thank you guys so much for for showing out today. We're going to be on and off for the rest of the night. A ton of great games. The best is yet ahead of us. I do need to get some water before I sweat out of my suit. Yeah, you know, it is Keeneland season. I hope the races went well today. I hope anyone who went out there and uh, enjoyed the wonderful weather in Lexington today had a great time. And if anyone's looking to come back and, and play some video games, have a good time. You're all all more than welcome here. Absolutely. And there's there's great facilities here. I'm I once again I said it before when we sat back down here. I the level of compliments that I've just heard just walking by, just people talking about like the facility, like the way the tournament set up. It's Honestly, shout out to the production team. The oh, graphics yeah, the have been, been absolutely amazing. Like, I, I was really surprised. I was sitting and watching the previous match when UK was playing at the Cumberlands. And just the like the, having the cameras on the players. Just like, there's so many just the really ski cool masks, things. You know, just ski, masks, better better. ski masks. It just gets better and better. But yeah, we are going to head to break now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And we will see you all in the next match. I think Dividing's got this one. And uh, show everybody some love. We'll see you on the next one. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do.
Averly Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from, both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students. So we wanna ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from college. So with first generation student services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it and they've also offered advising and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, the, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day, and I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful as you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy, right, in the classroom, and all of us have a common goal of winning football games. And so, to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us. On the flip side, like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives. So they are also very uh, appreciative and understand. So I mean, all around, they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible, which uh, we're very thankful for. I think the most rewarding part is probably gonna be at the end of this, when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is gonna help us when we don't have football anymore.
How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington and you don't know UK until you're here. Something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it.
Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world. Like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations. The people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Averly Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian If you Summer like Converse, we are back. They are playing once again against Ohio State 18. I am oh, Ty Guy Gaming. This dividing. is going to be terrible. How are you doing? I really feel like I'm getting more energy awful. the longer we go on today because we are really thinning the herd here. I think we're down oh, to our top no. eight, top six teams at this point. The games are getting more and more intense. You can hear uh, how the teams it's that are lava. remaining are really getting into it in the main room. And oh, no, like you said, I mean, Converse was extremely entertaining in that last winter semifinals matchup. And now we're going to get to see him again go up against this time the Ohio State A team. Now, uh, we saw the We're going to end up getting a feedback loop, guys. Our this first is going to game suck. of the day go up against Cincinnati. Uh, this is their A team, though. They were the number one seeded team in the bracket going into the day. Um, so very, very highly rated team. Uh, and I think after seeing uh, Converse take care of Grandview, Grandview put up a good fight, but it seemed like Converse had the advantage in most ways. Uh, I really think Ohio State is the one remaining team that can really, really take it to Converse That's here. That's true. The Ohio State University. The Ohio really I gotta I gotta be better about that. <laughs> I gotta yeah. be better. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get jumped by the OSU players as when I leave here if I don't if I don't do better on that. But yeah, like you were saying, I mean, they've got quite the reputation in Converse, despite not being way too big of a school, not like an Ohio State size, you know, um, just has, they seem like yeah. they've had players through all the meta. They know exactly what to do, when to swap, when to do this. But the, the best part was is that Converse, they looked like they were having fun out there. Yeah, 
Absolutely. I think that's a really big thing, especially in these kinds of situations where uh, if you are in a LAN environment, especially if you haven't been at a LAN before, there's a, there's a tendency to get a little bit stiff, right? You get a little bit choked up. You think you're playing normally, but your, your, your comms are a little bit off. You're not communicating as well, uh, and uh, you just end up not playing as well as you used to. Converse was so incredibly loose. We were out there in the audience watching them play. They were hooting and hollering the whole time. They were having a ton of fun, and that, I think, really helped them play better. That's true. The ski mask was pretty funny. They cut the cameras. <laughs> Shout out to the editing team on that. But the biggest thing, the 1v1 tour fight. Why can't we have that every time we come into hey. a control point? Hey, who knows what we're going to get uh, as uh, both teams are starting to get into the lobby here. Uh, these teams, this is kind of the Clash of Titans right now, Ty Guy. This, these two teams have bulldozed their way through the winner's bracket, neither of them have dropped a map so far today. It's been two O's all the way down, and now uh, we're going to get to see which one of them uh, is going to keep that win streak going uh, on... I don't actually know what our first control map is on this round, so... That's uh, a good question. We'll, get, we'll, get, we'll probably get confirmation on that pretty soon, but, you know, point still remains. These are two teams that have not lost yet today, so... First of all, which team is going to lose that winning streak? And then, once you have lost that winning streak, what do you do next? Because we haven't really seen either of these teams play when they're down yet. That's true. Pedal on the gas, just accelerating. I think the biggest thing is what comes out of this match, especially going to the finals and later on, is the team that's willing to adapt. Mm -hmm. Um and that goes for anything. I mean, whoever's willing to adapt stands the most chance of being able to do something. And I think both these teams are going to have, you know, their heads, butting heads here. They're going to have similar comps and everything, and it's going to be similar. It's going to be probably coming down to that last player, really. So I think the team that's willing to adapt uh, will certainly be able to take it. Yeah. And by the way, should may as well... Uh uh, bring up what's at stake here by making it to the winner's finals. Both OSUA and Converse have guaranteed themselves uh, in that top three, right? So uh, I believe there is a cash prize for first place and then second and third place win some uh, really cool peripherals from our awesome sponsors. And uh, they have guaranteed themselves to be taking home some swag, but you are now playing for a top two spot here and, of course, the chance to play in that best best of five grand finals at the end of the day against whoever it ends up being. Uh, and honestly, uh, you just kind of get the chance to sit back and relax, right? Because we have like two, three more losers rounds to go through, and you'll just sit pretty that whole time. You're going to get to watch them play. You're going to get to understand, you know, if you haven't played against these teams, you'll get to see what they play, what they're comfortable with. You can figure out how you want to play against them if you end up playing them in the grand finals. It is a huge advantage to just secure your grand final spot right now and then just be chilling till the end of, till the, end of the day. Chilling like a villain. I think that's what everybody's doing here. The positive vibes, everything going on. And hey, there's our peripherals that. right there. Look at that. That's great. All the universities there up there, and they got the HyperXs. I think it was, you said about the first place, I believe, it was the 900, and then they got the HyperX headsets. Yeah. And then the HyperX mice for the third place. But shout out to HyperX. The, the more I find out, and especially them you know, sponsoring UK, it's uh, it's great equipment. I plan on it is buying great. a lot more HyperX, the marketing great stuff so without this yeah. couldn't it be possible with it, all this it, stuff. i would i will just go ahead and turn 90 degrees here uh so that you can get a really good look at my headset here which is HyperX headset <laughs> uh it is very good it is very comfortable i have a very good time casting with it thanks HyperX. <laughs> smile how much did you get paid for that one <laughs> i got paid nothing and that's my problem i keep giving out these services for free so still wait on this map. We're almost, we promise it'll be soon here. <laughs> but like we said, Ohio State Converse waiting to see the remaining brackets. And we'll have that probably posted up here real soon, being able to see the remaining seeds and what's going down. But as you said, I mean, Ohio State's had the history and Converse had quite the run in, um, you know, across the country, what you're saying in the rankings. Mm -hmm. I mean, both these teams have just, they, they know what they're doing. 
Yeah. So this, I expect this one. I hope a map four. Can we please get some bonus? <laughs> that would be super sick. I'd be super down to see some some really long best of three maps. Just just make sure that we are gonna be going until Sunday past midnight and just get us back, get us all the way. I am. I just want to gas Overwatch, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. So we're almost there. That's the problem with scrims. You ever? I remember uh, setting up scrim lobbies and it takes forever and unfortunately waiting yeah. on every all the equipment. I got we got the lobby over here. We've got five people on one side, five people on the other. Both teams are uh waiting for uh one more person to get into the lobby. Uh but we could play Overwatch 2 scrims if we wanted to. That's true. Remember, I believe it's eleven days, I think you were saying. About I think ten two. days. It's this is it the fifteenth or the sixteenth? Uh, I think it's 16th, right? 16th, yeah. 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 So that means now it's 10 days because it comes out on the 26th. That's true. So Overwatch, exciting more stuff coming. I mean, Overwatch 2, I know for a while we seemed like we didn't know what was going to happen, but I'm glad that Overwatch 2 is coming, revive the game. But like we said, the LAN, seeing these beautiful events be able to happen after so much mm -hmm. of not being able to have it, you know, it's great to just see revival of the game. I see Spark. I felt like... The most happy I felt in this game for a long time, you know, when the game first came out, yeah. cap uh, captivating that magic that came with it. I'm hoping that uh, when Overwatch 2, the beta, comes out and we start getting more and more uh, developer communication between uh, them and the general community, we're going to get uh, a lot more of an injection of, of hype into the game that we haven't really, haven't really seen in a couple of years. Uh, more players start coming in, more money starts coming in, and with that comes more lands. Obviously, uh, Kentucky is hoping to continue uh, to make this uh, invitational a bit of a yearly tradition. I know Cincinnati is getting ready to unveil a really, really sick gaming uh, center of their own, and they might try and host a land next year. There is a lot to look forward to in this sort of tri-state. Tri-state indeed. So, Ohio, our home. That's right. We're not from the Ohio, so not any biased. I, I love Ohio State, but look, I'm just looking for good Overwatch. You know, that's all I want. Good, yeah. Clean, competitive. Everybody hey, playing fair. Shout out to Converse coming all the way from South Carolina. Yeah, quite super super cool that they came all this way. Something like five and a half hour drive. Uh, they came up last night. Uh, shout out to you guys. Uh, y'all are, uh, y'all are troopers and just goes to show how dedicated these teams are in order to get themselves, uh, to these lands, uh, to have the opportunity to play on a stage together, uh, in one spot. That's why I like to say it's like risk it for the biscuit. I mean, if you're going to go all out, the best part is, you know, like let's say 10, 15 years ago, this competitive scene like this was kind of like, it wasn't like this. And now just seeing all these athletes be able to travel across the country on big stages and the pressures even more, but it's more just fun. I mean, mm -hmm. how cool is that? You look down the road 10, 15 years from now and be like, hey, you know, I did this. Uh, and the Lexington had a good time and uh, yeah, had some good casters with some style. And with swag. some stylish, <laughs> stylish Hawaiian shirts. Listen, man. We're just chilling. Listen, Sam, Sam and Blake doing a fantastic job. They look super dapper with the suit and tie. But you got to say, there is something with the Hawaiian pride shirt combo. I am just all about good vibes today because that is what we are hoping to give you. Now, of course, y'all want to get into the game. Uh, we do have a mic issue uh, up front. Um, someone is having a little bit of trouble uh, communicating with their team, and that is very important for Overwatch. So uh, we got people trying to make sure that they're all taken care of before we get into the game. Until then, you can just listen to us uh, chatter on about whatever. Yeah, <laughs> chat about whatever. But I will say shout out once again to the tech team doing such a great job. Anything you know, none of this would be possible without them, and uh, it, it's just great to see them working and so fast. I mean, unfortunately, that's the thing. When you got all these bells and whistles and so much equipment, eventually you're going to have something that doesn't work. But it should yeah. be quick. At least it's a, a quick fix. I should. I say. would. I would hope so. Worst case scenario, you can just give them a new headset, and that would probably be fine, right? That's true. I at this point, I'm sure you have like a billion headsets just sitting around in the back, and. Just give, give them whatever, as long as it works. <laughs> so 
So waiting on that first map. But I'm guessing we're going to probably see Oasis. That was the last round. That was the last round, but I think it changes every round. Okay. I don't think it's going to be Oasis this time. Can we get a confirmation what the what the map is actually? Because we can start. We can talk a little bit about that. Uh, it still says Rialto on the on the screen. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but maybe. maybe. Once we do get that mic issue figured out, uh, I really do think we could be seeing a clash between the two best teams uh, in Lexington today. Uh, I will say, um, going on that, I know we don't know the map right now, but I got to mention a player because I just saw that player pop up here on the screen. Maxwell mm -hmm. was absolute menace that last round. I mean, insane. Uh, yeah, of course, the team, everything is going good, and the damage allows for that to happen, but the tracer play was incredible. I mean, pestering, going in the back line, taking down immortality. See, that was the biggest thing. Baptiste pops immortality. Maxwell goes in, takes it out. Incredible work, and that made such the difference in that match. Yeah, 1,000%. Aww. Oh. Oh, no, don't, let's, let's be whispering. We don't want to wake him up. And so, yeah, but that is a really big uh, deal with uh, Maxwell. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Okay, they're up. Uh, they're up. I can talk normally. Uh, that's that's going to be a big uh, issue when you're playing against uh, Converse, right? Is I've casted Maxwell uh, a couple times in the past. Absolutely cracked Tracer player. Uh, it's going to be constant with Maxwell in the back harassing your supports, harassing the squishier uh, DPS players, just giving them a super, super hard time. You've got to be able to peel for your supports. You've got to be able to uh, make sure that uh, they, uh, that Maxwell, at the very least, doesn't get away with a kill, right? Uh, I think... Ohio State, they're going to have to be very, very careful that they have people that are ready to peel for when Maxwell is inevitably in the back line. That's true. Well, I thought I was looking at the chat. I thought we were ready to go, but then some people, I can't tell. There's a lot of trolls out there, you know, around this. The, <laughs> the college athletes, they like to troll a lot, so... I think we are almost going, but uh, it does look like Oasis. Okay. You see it I, on the board. Maybe. So for you all Twitch chat, uh, just a quick uh, reading of Twitch chat. Uh, our prod team said, Twitch chat is not happy with you guys. And then an Ohio State member said, good. <laughs> that's, that's for you. That's for you. That's a direct call out from OSU to, uh, to uh, Twitch chat. So take that what you will. Take from that what you will. <laughs> So, but I'm, I'm not going to lie. It, it, it's still cold in this room. <laughs> I'm I don't, sorry. I, I don't feel like, back. I don't feel it's, like it's, it's as, I don't feel like it's as cold as it was at earlier, actually. No, it's I'm, not bad. I'm, I'm actually pretty comfortable. So, all right. I think we are finally getting underway. It's kind of a, a long time here. I need to do apologize. <laughs> Some people are like, man, yeah. I didn't know I was going to listen to casters talk all the time. We're just chilling. We're having chilling. a good time. Hey, stay hydrated, friends. That's true. Stay hydrated. So the computer, I think, I think we're moving past a mic issue. It might be something else. <laughs> it went down the wrong tube. <laughs> the wrong pipe, ladies and gentlemen. I do that so many times. <laughs> but yeah, so I said plenty of Overwatch. Um, after this game, we should be hitting about that dinner break. Take a small little intermission, just like the lunchtime. <clears throat> but we'll be back with plenty of other Overwatch finishing up today. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So... I mean, after this, of course, we're going to have, um, we're probably going to have some more losers matches coming up as the remaining teams, I think, will probably be still down to our top six or something like that, maybe top four. Uh, it's really going to be the best of the best when we come back from dinner, so uh, super excited about that. I believe Lava, Lava's the person having the, uh, the mic issues, is the team's main tank, so uh, having, the, uh, <laughs> having the mic issues is even more important because the main tank is usually the person making those callouts, uh, trying to sort of lead the team, uh, direct where everyone's going, what ults they're using, so Lava really, really needs to have it. Oh! I see R's in chat. Uh, I see R's for ready. R's in chat. <laughs> I want to see R's in Twitch chat as well. Are you ready to see the top two seeds in this land go head to head for a spot in the grand finals? Because I think we're about to get started here. Exciting. I'm glad we're casting this one. Like I said, top two teams. Things are going to go crazy. I just hope no keyboards, no mice will go flying, you know, in between. There rounds. are so it's many keyboards and mice just sitting in the middle of the stage. I feel like that could be uh, ammunition if we're not careful. 
Let's see. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. A ski uh -oh. mask coming uh -oh. back. It's coming on. Uh-oh. Oh, you know it's getting real. Uh, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen at a layout. This is <laughs> this is awesome, the ski mask. I, I, like, I like how... I like how he had it off before and put it on when we're about to go in. Like, like, like he, like he needs the ski mask in order to like get in the zone, block out all distractions. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it's just like athletes. You know, some of them have like the lucky socks are different. You're telling me you don't have like a lucky shirt or <laughs> Overwatch when you're playing competitive at all? Um, I don't know. This shirt's kind of cool. I don't know if I, I have to start like... wearing this. I love this. Yeah, you bought you bought this to, you bought that shirt today. I right? bought this today. Yeah, yeah, Walmart. Not sponsored by Walmart, but hey, you know, <laughs> it's very comfy. I like the navy blue. It, uh, it, it works out. We match pretty well. So, um, but yeah, Hawaiian. I'm glad, like I said, to be here and um, looking forward to this. So I think yeah. we're ready. We saw ready. But we always, are. That felt like an eternity ago. Yeah, I know. We're getting, we're getting there. I promise. Uh, I, there is now confusion in the chat as to who picks map or if map is assigned, and they're they're hashing that out in the chat right now. Uh, so we're just we're uh, we're just let we're just letting it go. Uh, we will. It looks like going to Ilios here. OSUA versus Converse. Hey, we've been talking for a while here, but it's time to talk about some Overwatch. We're going in. So, do you expect to see? I got. And it still you. says Grand View. We need to change <laughs> that to Ohio State. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is not Grand View. Nice try. Converse stayed, but Grand View left. Yeah. So, starting off on Ili uh, Oasis Gardens. This is the most open uh, of the three Oasis maps. You see uh, the point itself is very has very open skies there's a lot of open area around it as well which is why maxwell moving on to the echo does not bother me at all i think uh converse is going to have just all the uh, advantage advantages in the world there being able to uh have the consistent damage of maxwell from the top of course osua is going to be looking to counter it with performance on the uh torbjorn uh, sorry, performance is on the Cassidy. Grab is on the Torbjorn here. Maybe looking for a Torb 1v1 to start off here, but Converse is not going to mirror it this time around. It's all business. Using that utility with the Lucio, able to get onto the point. But look at this, a boop off the map from both sides. Eski and Quicks able to get those kills. So a 5v5 fight. What a great way to start with environmentals. Yeah, but the point is still very much up for grabs here. Uh, Converse has kind of taken positions onto the point, but OSU does have the uh, Reinhardt here. Like I've been saying all day, Reinhardt comps are so good at moving forward and taking space, and OSU pushes straight on forward. They've run over the Converse support line, and it's looking like even though they had control at first, OSU keeping their uh, tank line intact ended up being the difference maker here. They will take point first and look at the ultimates for OSU already. They have 85% to the Deadeye, to the Amplification Matrix. Those are those are two fantastic ultimates that you could put together. But that environmental kill from Quix means that mines are already available to try and get them out of this uh, little area. Oh, a little bit of stun action going there. Quicks in trouble, able to somehow escape. That almost turned bad. The dead eyes coming across the board, looking for anybody, not able to find it. Just the zoning alt. But the good thing is, is that they're keeping that percent all the way up to 30 right now. Ant Matrix comes out here from Nami. Uh, OSU trying to push forward on the doubled healing that's coming out from their Baptiste right now. It's going to allow them to push forward really, really close here. Uh, but Converse is still poking in from the outside, trying to find an opportunity to go in. Here comes the Molten Core from Grab. It covers up the entirety of the point, and uh, Hammer gets taken down. Uh, it is actually, yeah, it's interesting. Is Hammer going to be playing the Tracer right now instead of Maxwell? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe a bit of a misstep here from Converse because OSU is now 60% and counting on this point. They have looked almost indomitable uh, just sitting in this side room, uh, daring Converse to try and go in there and challenge them. And that's the best part. It just shows the discipline, the maturity of Ohio State, able to push Converse and make them, force them to make the mistake. So a lot of old dumps coming in here. There's that transcendence trying to stay alive, an aggressive trans. 
looking for those kills. The immortality does go down. Not able to find anything. It's just still back and forth. Look at this, but despite all this, 90% hammer picking up the kill. And now Maxwell, this is looking good. Converse needed the final window to be able to push this. And they're going to collapse on Ohio State. Take this point finally on the board. Yeah, and it's actually a really cheap fight for Converse. The Transcendence is something that you only want to use when you really have to use it, but Converse uses it beautifully to help them aggress onto the Ohio State sort of stronghold, and they're able to force them out finally and get controlled themselves. And now look at the ultimates that Converse has. They have Diva Bomb, they have Rally, they have Mines, they have Duplicate. If they can section these out and try and rotate these ultimates, they could have ult advantage for a while. Absolutely well said. And Ohio State going right back. That self-destruct coming in. But the minefield in Quicks able to pick up that kill for Converse. Looking to finish this one out. Ohio State getting staggered here. They're still on the point despite all this. And that copycat going out but not able to find anything. Look at that stun. Beautiful. Quicks in trouble. And the kills need to come in. Maxwell able to get it. And there's oh. Quicks. Look at that. Double with the swing. Unbelievable. So just when I thought Ohio State had a chance with the aggression, Converse, like you said, sectioned yeah. ults and did a great job. And this is the problem now with the Ohio State comp. They were looking so good when they had point control and they already had the space claimed. But now that they've been forced out of that little side room where the Reinhardt works really well, they now have to try and push in to all of the poke com from Converse to try and get it back. And they're taking so much damage while doing so. The Molten Core comes out trying to do it slowly. Grab, able to get that kill on Kiwi. Incredible work. And they're just slowly working it. Here comes the self-destruct trying to find anybody for performance. Stepping up. And this is not looking good for Converse as Ohio State's going to be able to clean the rest of this point. But at this point, it's just a one-fight territory. So whoever wins this is going to take this round. Deadeye from performance looking for a target. Gets a little glimpse of Maxwell, but doesn't need it. The uh, reload from the Deadeye is going to be enough, and Converse is looking thin on numbers right now. The Transcendence from Still Kiwi is going to keep them alive for the moment, but it fades away, and now Eski is keeping Ohio State all filled up and ready to go on the uh, with the shields. Eski is actually going to take out the opposing number chance on the Baptiste. They are large in charge on the point. Converse is trying to poke in from wherever they can, but the brawl is just too strong. Tracer's able to keep overtime just a little bit longer. Still, Kiwi is able to get on with the Lucio. The overtime wick is burning so fast at this point, but it seems like this is going to do it. Ohio State, 90-100. to 100. They're going to take the first point of Ilios. Sorry, Oasis, and get themselves one point away. I heard you laughing. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Too much Elios today, but look at performance. Unbelievable with the Cassidy play. Headshot and just mowing down the rest of the opponents. And really, I got to give it Converse. They seem to not be together. Then they dialed it up, and then it created quite... But really, what an amazing opening round for both teams. Yeah, I think we kind of got to see uh, the uh, difference of styles between the teams, right? I think Ohio State really likes to play the brawl. They like to play the Reinhardt-based composition. Converse really wants to play uh, the sort of uh, pokey compositions, but University doesn't lend itself very well to those long-range compositions. It's a lot more closed in. You see these narrow corridors, the closed-in ceilings, so they've got to play into Ohio State's game. But look at this, Lava and Esky, the damage overwhelming by Ohio State, then the pin, just the cherry on top. And as you saw, Ohio State's going to take this first fight, but that fun little fact, as we were saying before the match, is that the both teams have not dropped a map so i'm mm -hmm. really interested to see how this well, one plays out in a few minutes one team is about to ohio state wants to make sure that they keep their streak alive and taking the first point on a uh, university here is going to help them uh going to help them uh, get that first point percentage ticking up look at the uh shatter uh charges here lava is almost doubling quicks right now so Converse able to get onto this point, trying to look, but they're getting drawn out. Ohio State with the discipline once again, looking to use this amp matrix, trying to find something. Can't find it, looking for it, pushing them out, zoning, but Ohio State's doing so good. And look at that shatter. Not able to find anything. A beautiful Maywall by Maywall, yeah, by Maxwell. That was a word pull. But yeah, so here comes that Ant Matrix trying to find anything. Still Kiwi, and now Converse is going to be able to flip it. But really good work by raising the uh, percentage by Ohio State. Yeah, 40% for OSU. 
Uh, big, the big change in these two comps, right, is we have performance on Cassidy on one side and Maxwell on May on the other. Other than that, it is a mirror matchup. Performance is a, giving Ohio State a lot more consistent damage, along with grab when you get that uh, beam charged up. I mean, Quicks is not going to live very long. Converse trades out that damage for this Maywall, buys them time, and lets them section uh, members of OSU away from each other. So the question is, is it going to be damage or utility? And Quicks, I think, just got canceled out of the shatter. Wow, unbelievable. The sound barrier is going out here, and it's an old frenzy. Here comes the self-destruct for Ohio State. Goes in the hole, denied. And Performance picking up the kill, but Performance goes down. But the kills are still coming in for Ohio State. They are going to be able to flip this, but they it was a costly uh, fight for both teams. And that's the next really big thing for that uh, the Cassidy gives you, right? Is it gives you that consistent flash uh, about every seven or eight seconds, and it ends up coming up huge there for Lava as you do what Quicks was looking for in that last fight. Uh, unfortunately, I think got flashed out by the Cassidy performance. Uh, that being said, uh, Converse is going to get quite a bit of point percentage here. They're doing a good job of staggering out and make sure they can get as many points as possible here they end up finishing off at 63 percent very respectable here especially since maxwell has the blizzard coming up along with the photon barrier two very strong ultimates to get you into the point and then make sure you keep it so about tying up in the percentages as you said that blizzard is so key and it looks like they're going to go aggressive this sim wall does come out trying to find kill quicks able to take down that immortality and Ohio State looking pretty promising here, but as wow. I say that, guard chop and the rest of the kills coming in for Converse. Beautiful work, and that's going to do it. They will be able to flip this point, but as I say that, look at Parker being able to stall this. Yeah, they're going to get uh, a little bit more out of it, but yeah, there's the whole team dead from OSU. That was such a cute little microplay there from OSU. Did you see that? How uh, Lava was on one side of the point, and Maxwell uh, was trying to freeze him, and they used the... Uh they use the blizzard, sorry, the sim TP to help the Reinhardt escape to the other side of the map. That was really cool. Doesn't end up working out for them, but I wanted to point it out. Especially since Maxwell still has that blizzard. Didn't have to use it to get him there, which means with 85% and counting, this is probably final fight. That is a massive uh, tool that Converse has to use. The ant matrix out for Converse, trying to find a Garchomp able to have some good kills there. Here comes the self-destruct looking for it, Parker. Both self-destructs, and Ohio State able to get that kill, 99%. It's coming down to this final fight. Blizzard's out. Ohio State is running into some trouble. They have a few people on point. Grab able to go, and it's just stalling efforts at this point. But look at Dobby able to pick up the kills. Ohio State is staying, and they're actually going to be able to win this. It's looking like they probably will. They have just enough sustainability with their tank line still alive, but they're able to do it. So now this is absolutely final fight. Here's where we stand. Converse used absolutely everything to try and hold on to the point. It didn't happen. So now they have to play into the Shattered Deadeye combo coming in from OSU. Converse maybe gets Ant Matrix soon if still Kiwi can get that last 30%, but they have to clear out. They, someone's going to have to get onto the point and sacrifice themselves to performance. It's going to be still Kiwi, and here's the shatter from lava it locks all of them on their backs and that is almost certainly going to do it ohio state is going to take oasis and keep their unbeaten streak alive i think that was very similar i mean oasis the first round was very similar to that it started out okay and then it took converse a bit to dial up and finally get it but then they kind of lost it a bit it looked like they were a little more nervous they didn't seem as confident as they were when they were playing in the last round there so you know, they got to step it up and just be more confident. I think once they did that, but Ohio State just so overwhelming. But yeah. I got to talk about the discipline. I, You know, they have may have been the best team today that has had the best discipline out there. Yeah, OSU looks so, so good on these brawl comps. They, they're... Basing is super, super good. They know when to engage on the uh, Lucio speed boost, the freezes. They are able to isolate members of the other team super well. We saw it actually with OSUB earlier today, and I think now we know where they got it from, right? <laughs> OSUA does a fantastic job with these brawl comps, and so uh, when it comes to Converse's next map pick, right, it's going to be all about trying to make sure we get as far away from brawl as possible because Converse really wants to play 
play those wrecking ball compositions the echo the tracer all that stuff that's really their bread and butter so i wouldn't be shocked to see maybe a gibraltar pick come out of them maybe uh maybe i can something something along those lines i'm sorry i can is hybrid that's not that's not coming until map three so which i would not be shocked if we go to Speaking of Gibraltar, did anybody ever say in the chat where that's from? Where the I learned. I learned, chat. It's in Spain. Ah, in Spain. Beautiful. It's in Makes Spain. Sense. Specifically yep. the Straits of Gibraltar. That's what it's named oh. after. Oh, <laughs> now I feel bad because I'm a history guy. I didn't even think Appar about that. Apparently, <laughs> I had I had no idea. I I genuinely didn't know. Uh, so apparently, when I when I asked it in the first game, Twitch chat was yelling at me, Spain, Spain, Spain. I had no idea. I I don't have Twitch chat over here, so I couldn't I couldn't read it. Sorry, uh, but. Back to the game at hand here. Uh, Converse is going to, I assume, prioritize making sure that Ohio State doesn't have to play uh, that brawl composition because they are so good at it. That's all we pretty much saw from them from those first two maps. Force Ohio State to play something else, play into a mirror that you're more comfortable with, likely the Wrecking Ball-based compositions, and I think Converse will be in a very good position to take us to map three. So we waiting on the substitution here. That's why we're taking a little bit. Waiting on what Converse is Lava using. might Lava also might just be having more tech issues. Oh, that's, that's true. Yeah, that's also Lava. possible. Lava is the same person who was having tech issues before. So Lava. Oh, okay, ah, the well, there you go. Bio break. <laughs> that happens. So I was gonna say Lava. This is your fault. I was gonna say that. But, you know. I, I don't know why was. Lava had to log off of the computer before they before they left though. Uh, but you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> hi in the chat. That threw me off for a second. Hi. <laughs> Someone said hi. Hi guys. <laughs> so I love uh I love when they throw up the stage there. Can we talk about once again the esports facility? How beautiful oh, yeah. it is. The stage. You got about I'd say at least like fifty chairs out there for the audience that was and there it is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Man, the tech team's on top of it. But look at that display, so good, all the HyperX, and you can see Ohio State on the left there and Converse on the right. It's so pretty. Oh, 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 look at us. <laughs> the man of the hour. Does he notice? Does he notice? Does he notice? He We're getting... <laughs> hey! <laughs> hey, Sam. <laughs> Still looking Going good. really, really interested with the back of his neck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's funny. Anybody knows Sam's also UK's uh, coach here at the university yeah. and um, a well-respected uh, Overwatch player. Has been yeah. for years. By the way, we've just gotten like the main stage area, but uh, what you haven't been able to see on stream is that there's also like a really massive lounge area. There's like a LAN set up with, there's like 30 computers in there. It is super, super cool. Hey, any UK students that are watching, you have a really awesome resource here just to come by and, and play some games. You can play pretty, pretty much anything. I've seen people playing uh, Fortnite here today. I've seen people playing Mario Kart. Uh, people have been all over the place valorant for sure uh super super cool place you have here at uk and if you aren't taking advantage of it why not you know yeah so come on down to lexington I know, <laughs> i'm pretty sure when i stopped by when i was visiting a couple weeks ago i was able to just pay five dollars an hour and they let you in there and it's it's just fun Everybody was playing Smash. Let me say, I know Overwatch gets intense. Have you seen Smash players? How crazy that Ooh. gets in tournaments? Yeah, they get <laughs> they get real excited. They absolutely do. Uh, so, uh, I believe if the uh, lobby is to be relied on, we are going to be going to Rialto next. Uh, I think that this is maybe a bit of a comfort pick for Converse, most likely. Uh, they This is the uh, the map that they uh, won uh, versus Grandview last time, so uh, I would not be shocked if uh, that's just, they just want to keep sticking in the same rhythm. That being said, I think of all of the escort maps that were available, this one does lend itself the best to the uh, OSU Brawl playstyle. Uh, there are certain parts of the map where it's going to be really hard to make it work, namely the start of point two, uh, and possibly the start of point one as well, honestly. But of the three, I feel like OSU is best equipped, based on what I saw on uh, Oasis, best equipped to deal with, uh, to deal with this with their comp of choice. The nice animation here, as we say, going into semifinals. Hey, shout out, shout out to the person who has made these graphics. They are so so cool. <laughs> it is the coolest thing. I mean, this you should feels... get paid. 
Yeah, absolutely. This feels like the owl. It mm-hmm. really does right now, especially being casting next to you. It feels great. So you see, Rialto, uh, you know, speaking of this map, I still got to oh, talk about Oh, yes. We thing. get to go on a ride on the boats. <laughs> Sam, Sam and Blake got to do this. Now we get to do it, too. I like this. POV, boat riding in Italy. <laughs> I like <laughs> But I will say, uh, can we talk about how UK's uh, time was that fast earlier? Oh my that? gosh, it what was, was a crazy. Just under five minutes, it was four something. It was actually nuts. They were so good. Uh, neither team has dropped a map. Uh, that is outdated, actually. Uh, Ohio State <laughs> has Ohio State is the only one that has not dropped a map. <laughs> well. Uh, that is now uh, immortalized on Twitch, and we're going to clip it and and torment you forever. There's a lot of clips that we can have from today's match, but as you see, we're talking about these comps here. We got a little more uh, stagnant, a little bit of uh, that Ryan, or sorry, Sigma or uh, Arissa. Yes, I I forgot the characters' names, you know. So I expect it to be a little tighter here, a mm -hmm. lot of damage. A lot, a lot of damage. Both teams are running the double shield here, so we're going to be looking to see both teams kind of get set up uh, at a certain corner, a certain point, set up their Risa, their Sigma, uh, layer those uh, shields over each other, and then let their longer range DPS get the work. Of course, the real difference here is Maxwell on this Tracer did so good in the last game and is constantly going to be looking to get around to the sides and distract the OSU uh, support line. Probably most likely Nami on that Baptiste try and get that immortality field out early. And I will say the key is for Converse is also to keep an eye on grab. That Echo, like we said, whoever controls the sky is definitely going to be able to get this round. So really stacking, not too much going on here. Finally getting the cart to be at a halt. But yeah, just waiting for this first pick to pop off. Yeah, this is kind of both... Uh, the double shield is so tanky and so sturdy that uh, both teams are able to sort of brawl for a while before something happens, but Converse does manage to push forward and take the first fight. Push towards the end of uh, point A here, but uh, Ohio State's going to be coming back in with a few ults of their own. They have Amplification Matrix coming up. Uh, both, actually, Baptiste have amplific mat uh, Amplification Matrix ready, and uh, still Kiwi's going to use it first to try and make sure they don't even get back. OSU trying to make the move there. Ooh, a lot of damage. Hammer barely escapes, but look at Quicks. Able to get the kill. Maxwell taking out that immortality, and look, here it is, Maxwell. But accidentally decided he wanted to take a swim. So a little unfortunate, but despite all that, they still get the win. Yeah. So plenty of time for Converse on this next fight. Super good here for Converse because they're playing actually surprisingly fast. These compositions are usually pretty slow, but they've identified that Grab is up top getting a ton of of value in the skies right still is happening has the duplicate ready so has been putting in a lot of damage but it takes a little bit of time right for that echo that damage to pile up so uh they're playing really fast trying to just run over the osu tanks before that ends up becoming a problem it's working out so far so the big thing is this high ground we say the utility of this high ground a lot of ults going out here trying to remain here Converse trying to push Ohio State, back them up, but look at performance now and the graphitic flux coming in, able to get these kills, closing the gap. They're finally going to be able to stop this payload. But, you know, despite that, look how far the payload is with four minutes left. Yeah, uh, Converse did a fantastic job. That was just all pretty much their first initial push. This is the first time we're really seeing them have to battle their way back to the point. But, of course, this is like one of the big... Uh, the big sites of Rialto, right? The Rialto Bridge. You see how Converse has to really respect it. Uh, but look at Maxwell has actually gotten around to the back. Uh, it is very much in a really good situation to see how he's just tiptoeing on and off the point and is forcing OSU to go back to deal with it. That is now going to let Converse safe passage over, but now you've lost Maxwell. That's huge. So now Ohio State can bring their attention back to the front. Trying to be cheeky, but got caught just a little bit chance. Able to pick up the kill. Now the kills are coming in for Ohio State. Nice kill by Performance and Lava cleaning this one up. So despite Converse having a really great push to start this, they seem to finally had a halt. Yeah. 
Uh, really good stuff there from OSU dealing with Maxwell in the back really quickly. Uh, the longer that you let Maxwell just kind of exist in your back line, the uh, easier it would have been for Converse to close the distance. But a nice shot takes the Tracer out of the fight, and now you've kind of got to go for it again. But now you see the Echo's kind of on flank duty. This time around, it's a lot more straightforward uh, with the... Uh, with the Dragon Strike up on top. And look at Quicks once again proving the DPS is essential in this first fight. Does get the res out, but unfortunately Garchomp and Maxwell now picking up the kills and that Graphitic Flux by Parker. So this fight is still balanced, looking to finish out these fights, but Converse gaining some momentum and now Chance and Kiwi picking it up. So 223, they get it going, should be able to get this. This is going to be tough for Ohio State to stall. Yeah, look at the ults too. OSU, I mean, they have both of their support ults coming up very, very soon. But on the other side, you've got three ultimates available, including uh, that transcendence from Chance. Could either uh, let Converse go super aggressive uh, while they are basically invulnerable, or uh, could be really good to uh, help uh, counter maybe the amplification matrix on the other side. 320. Oh, and here comes that ant matrix. That's what saying. But look at that graphitic flux. The transcendence comes in to save. But look how beautiful that was executed from the side of Converse here. Just the aggression. And now the Dragon's coming in to clean up this fight. Performance gets a kill, but it might be a little too late for Ohio State. Converse is still pushing, and they'll do exactly that with three minutes. Oh, that's going to hurt Esky going down there with a the stall. Yeah, it's really going to hurt. Now, OSU is going to force be forced to go on to faster here to try and get back and try and uh, get this stall going. They really have no ultimates to work with right now, and you've got to look out for Maxwell in the back. 20% away from a pulse bomb could find the pick needed to open it up and let uh, Converse in and finish the map. But... That being said, Converse has decided to kind of back up here. They've given Ohio State a little bit of extra space. They're trying to get Maxwell that last little bit to that pulse bomb percentage, and they're getting it now. We'll see if Maxwell can get that opening pick. So expect the supercharger to come in here soon by Ohio State, but look at this. So much damage at Ant Matrix coming in, trying to do it, but look at the flux coming in, a huge flux by Parker. Oh, oh the dragon combo, beautiful. Two alts are better than, you know, one alt sometimes. And the, the team yeah. kill with two minutes left. That's something that we've really been seeing a lot today is the uh, Gravitic Flux is often really good, but it only takes half of uh, the other team's health, right? You have to be able to follow up on it in order to confirm those kills or else with all the healing in Overwatch right now, uh, it works out really, it uh, ends up that you just end up giving support charge to uh, support ult charge. That is how you follow up. It's a one way to do it, at least, with the Dragon Strike. And now OSU are in a really strong position here with three ultimates. So look at that Converse trying to find this opening fight, looking to use this Graphitic Flux early, but Maxwell pestering in the back, able to find a kill. Maxwell with two, both supports are down for the side of Ohio State. Guard Trump and the rest of the kills able to come in here. Oh, Maxwell getting in that back. This is finally going to do it. Esky trying to stall, maybe do anything, but it's too late. A minute 06. Remember, getting all the way with little time is better than nothing at all. Absolutely. And finishing with over a minute is absolutely a respectable time bank here for... Uh, for Converse, we are in a super winnable situation. Hey, man, how's it going? Uh, <laughs> a super winnable situation here for uh, for Converse, uh, but the defense is going to be crucial now for them. They've got to be able to uh, try and hold OSU back. They have uh, picked Rialto, I assume, off of comfort, and because they believe that their more pokey compositions will be able to outduel uh, Ohio State's double shield compositions. So we'll see where they decide to go with it. It is actually going to be still the double shield matchup coming in from both sides. Uh, but still, it's still a long range, sort of slower kind of matchup here uh, coming in. And uh, we'll see if Converse's bet is going to pay off. I will say I like the uh, going on that. I do, I do like the um, the camera work. I should say. Sorry, I was laughing. I was listening to that call there, but the the camera work. It's always funny. Everybody yeah. has such a good time here watching the bolt the bot do you think the bots get bored when nobody's on the map they just sit there all the time working? i mean i think that the bots just get a lot of enjoyment out of their work okay that's fair enough <laughs>
So, uh, key thing here, OSU are opting to go with the Ash, the Mercy boosted Ash right now. Performance has basically one shot potential with those headshots onto any of the supports right now. Uh, uh, Converse has got to be super careful hanging out on this high ground, making sure that performance just doesn't just take off their heads. So good aggression here. The, the big thing is getting that cart around the corner so you can push that high ground back. Quick's able to take down the immortality, able now to take down the turret. Now that's the, a DPS doing their job, that is for sure. Oh, running into some trouble. Look at the damage coming out from Converse, stopping Ohio State on their first push out the gate. Yeah, great stuff there from Converse, holding strong. Ohio State's composition is very dependent, I think, on performance, being able to get uh, those early kills. And that time, it just didn't quite happen, and Converse was able to uh, just sort of wrap around Ohio State as they tried to push forward. Uh, you see performance kind of stranded on this high ground here. Uh, their mercy has been taken out, so yeah. Uh, actually, that's a pretty solid stagger as well. It's going to delay the Ohio State push for a couple extra seconds as they wait for their Ash to come back. Now, when they do, though, they actually have some ultimates coming up. Grab is on the uh, Echo, which I like a lot uh, because Converse is running Hanzo Tracer. You have a projectile hero and a short-range hit scan hero. So Grab will have a lot of room to work in the sky. So at Amp Matrix, not able to find anybody. Ohio State playing very smart, moving off to the side here. Eski and Grab here trying to that Echo Mercy is such a deadly combo, but there's that Graphitic Flux trying to find some and so much damage being poured out. Oh my god, Eski! What a play by Garchub! And Quick's picking up the rest. Man, this is the Converse team that we were seeing in previous matches. They have finally found their footing and it's just making this so difficult for Ohio State. Yeah, and the longer they're able to hold at this first corner, the more desperate OSU are going to become to try and just get something, anything going, and they're going to start slipping more and more. with uh, Brigitte uh, kind of abandoning the uh, the Ash Mercy here, going with something a little more consistent performance, trying to uh, mirror Quicks on the uh, Hanzo, but Quicks already has the Dragon Strike. Can we talk about how Kiwi has had the Matrix like crazy? That's been a, such key in these last two fights. Kiwi has been able to build that so fast, and Quicks just, they are using so much being able to just do so much damage, the rally out and the dragon, so many halts being used, and just Converse is flooding over Ohio State, putting so much damage. Ohio State's really, they got about two pushes left in the tank here. Yeah, I mean, the silver lining here is that the point is so incredibly close to uh, <laughs> where they're at right now that they don't have to take a lot of time to get back into the fight. So probably, even though there's only a minute left, they have two really good chances to try and get an opening. And Converse is actually pretty barren on ultimates here. Hammer's very close to that supercharger, but if you can find it and take it out, Lava has a supercharger of their own, and Grab Performance are coming up on their DPS ults. Double supercharger, as you were saying, that both teams played it quick doing so much with the D-Mech and now all the other abilities being used. A Converse, look at that. Garchomp is going insane with the damage. Ohio State does not have an answer at all, but the worst part is they got one push left and they don't have many alts to work with. Yeah, they used the duplicate there. They used the... Uh the supercharger there. Lava supercharger almost immediately got found out, and I don't think hammers actually ended up breaking. That was, I think, the difference in that fight. Ten seconds left. Performance has the Dragon Strike to help give uh, OSU a little bit of extra space to get onto the point itself. Other than that, though, OSU has to try and hold out here. Uh, but, oh, Quix's Dragon Strike actually gets eaten. That's going to open things up here for OSU. And performance finding that kill with the Dragon Strike. And look at this, Ohio State finally able to close this. The whip shot by Eski. Really good. But here's the thing. You got to okay. stay on the cart. Yeah, Hopefully they you don't see a C9. I don't want to jinx it. It's a there is curse. If there's still like two or three fights that OSU have to win here in order to take point A if Converse are quick with their respawns right now. And OSU, now they have the amplification matrix available to them potentially, uh, but Maxwell has the pulse bomb. Uh, they are going to have to deal with the amp matrix trying to push forward here, uh, but wisely is going to be able to just sort of kite out of the way and they're going to wait it out before re-engaging. Look at the amount of damage being done. 
Oh, Converse doesn't have an answer, and Ohio State keeps rolling, lobbing, grab, joining on that kill feed. Ooh. And it's 6v4 here, hoping to close this out, but look out! Ooh. Oh, Parker with the boost, see you later, into the water, 228. Ohio State now is really acting like they want to take this. Remember, yeah. Converse only has 106, so if they're able to push to the end, that's not much of a time difference at all. Yeah, it absolutely isn't, but it would have to take a nearly perfect OSU uh, attack from this point on in order to match that uh, time bank. Uh, Converse getting it down to overtime is absolutely massive. Time, the clock is not OSU's friend for the rest of this. Two minutes left and their spawn is now only further away. Could mean two or three fights left to try and get through this. Of course, the Supercharger is really going to help them out, power them up, and Maxwell down early It's going to potentially keep this momentum going. And look at this grab, able to get that pulse bomb, but another whip shot by chance. Unbelievable with the flail, able to control this. And despite Ohio State getting some picks there, Converse was able to get just a little more. And Converse dropping down here, look out, this is not going to be good for Ohio State. But as I say that, Parker able to get the kills, now Hammer joining on this kill feed. 126 left, they're going to have to do this, but unfortunately they finally get stopped. So a minute yeah. 20 left for Ohio State. They're going to get stopped out here. And this is now really tough for Ohio State. Rialto gets stalled out on this point so, so, so often. It is so incredibly common to see attacks just stop here. Because look at this high ground that Converse has to take advantage of right now. They have such clear uh, sight lines onto OSU as they try and cross, like I've been saying all day, this Rialto bridge. And the Ant Matrix is actually going to force them to sit back and wait for it to go away. You know what that gives it? That means that this is probably the last good fight for OSU here. They're going to have both support ultimates to help get them into into uh, the point and try and get overtime going. Oh, you've lost Lava. You've lost your main tank. OSU's in a whole lot of trouble. A whole lot of trouble indeed. 30 seconds there in the stairwell just trying to stay alive. But as soon as they go down there, it's just going to be a last minute ditch effort just to try to touch. Performance though with the headshot, that's exactly what OSU needs to get back into this. And Lava swaps to Wrecking Ball, which means they're going to be back into the fight really quickly. All of a sudden, OSU has the man advantage. So there's that Flux early trying to get down performance. Oh, and able to find the kill with the Flux. And the rest of the kills coming in. Garchomp popping off again. And another flail there, this time by Maxwell. And this is all she wrote for Ohio State, unfortunately. It looks like we're going to be tied up one-to-one -one and going to a map three. Hey, that is what we like to see. Hey, we got a map three with us. That is <laughs> That's super hype for me. I hope you're getting hype as well because the top two teams have now uh, taken a map off of each other, which means neither team is keeping that undefeated streak alive, undefeated map streak at least. All of them have now, I believe, won seven, lost one uh, today. So a super close competitive game between these two bodes really well for the competition as we move towards the late, the later stages of this tournament, right? I'm actually super happy to see that uh, there isn't like one team that is just clearly the best and everyone knows that they're going to win going into it. Uh, Converse, OSU, I think even Grandview, uh, there are a couple other teams still fighting it out in the loser's bracket. Uh, this is absolutely a very uh competitive tournament and it still remains to be seen who's going to be coming out on top absolutely well said so going into this look i'm a little greedy okay a map three is fantastic but what about a map four i want I <laughs> it's want <a> possible four. <laughs> it's possible that would be the first one of the day right i think sam, uh, sam and, and blake they had a map three earlier we could one up them yeah, I think out of any teams, this, these would be the teams to be able to do mm -hmm. it and put it to a map for. I like it. I always love seeing this. But, hey, this is the first time I think we've been able to get to a three. Yeah, Every has. map and every time that we've cast it, it's been two to nothing every single time. Yep. Ooh, look at that. Look at the background change. Because we are traveling to the streets of London. It's going to be King's Row. It's a pick from OSU. That pick was almost instant, by the way. And that makes a lot of sense. When we think back to Oasis, the brawl composition was OSU's bread and butter. It seemed like they had the advantage on Converse when it came to that. 
Kings Row is the brawl map. It, I mentioned it on Rialto, but uh, tight corridors, 90 degree turns really lends itself to uh, those close range brawl compositions that all clump together in one big mass and just go forward uh, and try and run over the other team. Is Converse going to play into the Brawl Mirror, or are they going to try something funky to throw LSU off? I think that's my question, as we are going to get the first uh, comp, comp uh, picks in just a moment. But I will say, let's get fired up. Bat three of the semifinals, Ohio State versus Converse, Kings Row. Everybody, scrims is, row is what they like to call it out on it, the streets. It could not be as iconic as this, I will tell you that. And it's looking like... Uh, Converse, yeah, starting off on the defense, they are going to be opting into the brawl themselves. It is about as classic as it gets. You try and section off the members of OSU with the Maywall and then use the uh, Lucio speed boost to uh, just jump on top of them and melt them down before they can break it. So uh, makes a ton of sense what Converse is doing. We'll talk about OSU when they walk out of spawn because I don't really believe it yet. It looked like we were missing somebody on the webcam. We got all the players. Somebody just didn't want to be seen at all. Hopefully everything's working. But like I said, Ohio State on the attack first, using that sim, trying to do some teleport. Imagine getting up on the statue or that high ground. It seems like when teams control that high ground, they're able to do a lot of damage. Yeah, it looks like they're going to be trying to get up onto the high ground here, try and get to the back of Converse, and it does work out really well for them to start off. It looks like the Reinhardt of OSU Lava has been kind of sectioned off from the rest of the team. You see... Uh, was at the bottom, so they have to take a moment to get re uh, to get re established in the high ground. But OSU has successfully uh, rotated around here, and now when are they going to drop down and try and take this point? Here we go. So it's final. Ohio State coming in here, trying to find something. Performance gets the kill, but now Lava going down. That's going to be tough without the main tank. But look at Maxwell still doing the damage and delivering the deed. Ohio State's going to have to rethink this one. Just too much damage. Converse played a little split. They played collected, though, and using so much of the map to their advantage. Yeah, unfortunately, I think the OSU TP strat was really good, but it wasn't executed quite as well as they needed to. They needed to take a second to get reestablished on that high ground because a couple people fell off. And while that happened, Converse was able to sort of reestablish themselves and be ready for the drop. And look at the immortality and the high noon. Maxwell able to find the kill and able to get the dead eye kill as well. And the kills are coming in, but Lava with the charge, able to find it. This one is still anybody's fight just because Maxwell get the two. But let's see what's going. Lava able to get it, and now they're collapsing. But the sound barrier now from Converse staying into this fight, doing such a great job. And now the sound barrier for Ohio State. Ohio State staying, but look out for this self-destruct. Not much. Ooh, able to get that shield down just barely. But look at this. Ohio State finally getting some room onto this point. They are getting themselves some space, but Converse wants to get back into this one, freezing up the main tanks, and it seems like Ohio State have taken, taken a little bit off guard here. They have not quite gotten that second tick yet. Maxwell has a couple of skulls on the screen, but is not able to finish off any kills. The tanks of OSU are very low, but Nami is doing a fantastic job getting them back up to a fighting shape. And it's looking like Ohio State are going to be able to take point A. But it was a bit of a struggle for them, right, Ty Guy? They were held for a couple of minutes there. And I think that gives Converse a little bit of extra confidence, right? Because uh, you know now that you can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with OSU in this brawl mirror. Grab is also going to swap over onto the junk grab. This is very interesting to me that OSU, they haven't really opted into the May, right? You don't have the uh, the May walls. It's a really great utility that Converse has. Instead, you're just going full damage. <laughs> exactly as you said, that blocking the high noon there. Well said. Lava able to now get the kill, the immortality. So Ohio State keeping this momentum. I'm a junk rat. I love seeing the junk rat. It's so much damage pushing onto the team. So look at Maxwell still getting the picks. And as I say, that gets shut down. Ohio State with the slam there. And now the Ant Matrix and they're just overwhelming Converse. So Ohio State, despite having trouble on the first point, having no problem on the second point. 
no problem at all. They just continue to push forward. But Converse is going to have, I think, one more chance here to recontest on the second point if they want to. And I'm sure they will want to because it's a really good defensive position. Uh, Garchomp is going to be coming in with the Diva Bomb to help uh, zone Ohio State away a little bit. It's going to help Converse get back onto the point. I believe they're probably going to use it to engage. Uh, but once they do, Chance is also very close to that beat to help sustain the team. That Maywall was smart to deal a lot of damage. That was a smart play by Converse getting back into this. Guardchump able to find that kill, and now the sound barrier coming in, trying to keep everybody up, overwhelming Ohio State. Finally, some momentum, immortality, going to keep everybody up. So two minutes and 30, Ohio State's going to have to go back to the drawing board to figure this one up. Yeah, now Garchomp actually hangs on to the Diva Bomb there, which means now you have it still to use on one of these future fights. And this is one of the places where King's Row attacks can really stall out because the attacker spawn is all the way back at point A. They have to cross so much ground in order to get back into the fight that they only have maybe two or three attempts here. Things are going to get crazy. The Shatter, no go there. And the Amp Matrix out for Converse. Trying to find something. Here comes the ult. It's like crazy. Self-destruct going in. And the High Noon coming out. Trying to find anything. Look at that Blizzard. And it's resting up top. Looking for any kill. Oh, 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 oh. oh, unbelievable. Now Hammer cleaning up the rest of the fight. Look at Converse. Oh, unbelievable. A that triple self-destruct. There were so many ults going off there, but no one somehow saw the massive glowing Diva Bomb self-destructing from uh, from Garchomp there. I think it was actually sitting up on like one of the little grates on the high ground. Uh, so I think it just slipped by the OSU's radar. So Converse, they continue to hold a minute 15 left on the clock. This might be uh, OSU's last really good fight attempt here, but the Shatter to Rip Tire combo grab looking for a pick with it is able to take out the immortality field and then hammer goes down as well converse is now on the run without their reinhardt look at trying to get at that may wall doing so good at blocking a lot of damage and ohio state pushing converse out doing such a great job here and converse looks like they're not going to be able to touch maybe oh just in the nick of time able to do it that may wall coming out and look at the fights going on in the back all in the center here performance trying to find something break those shields down oh and he gets to kill on hammer but they're still contesting, and then a fan the hammer and a boot kill. So Ohio State is finally able to do it with 30 seconds, and now he's got about two minutes to finish this last point. Very doable, but Converse have a lot of opportunities here to continue to hold here, make sure that uh, OSU doesn't quite finish the map. Uh, hammer does have the shatter available. Uh, they're coming up onto the dead eye as well guard jump and quicks are pretty pretty close but not quite there yet for the moment osu has the ult advantage do indeed performs able to get the oh and a nasty pin there by lava that brutal and a fire strike lava popping off left and right guard jump goes down ohio state this is exactly what they need mm -hmm. and yeah, with this minute 17 here, they're going to have the self-destruct, not too many other alts, but Ooh. they have enough to their Maxwell, resources. I Maxwell on the Doomfist now. This is something we haven't seen yet, but a pretty good last-second stall character. If Converse can keep this going, they have the they have the bomb, they have the blizzard, and Garchomp pops off again, just lobs it into the back and gets two. That's going to let Converse restabilize here with 50 seconds left on the clock. Unbelievable. Another three kills the last two rounds. Garchomp has stepped up huge. The thing that's going to be tough here for Ohio State is that Converse has got the closer spawn. They're going to have mm -hmm. Blizzard to work with, but Ohio They've, State has a lot of alts coming up yeah. in this next fight. They have a lot of tools. Ohio State just has to be decisive with them. They have to figure out their point to attack and push forward with it, and it's looking like it's now as three ultimates get used all at once here from OSU. The Rip Tire is looking for people in the back. <laughs> Parker and Grab both get two. OSU are going to push forward now. Can they finish with time? Oh, that was brutal. Two doubles and a team kill the second time of this map. And I don't think anybody's going to be able to touch. As I say that, incredible work by Quicks. Able to touch. Hammer swinging around on the point. It's just a stall effort at this point. Two seconds left. We're going into overtime performance. Getting a three-piece. Can we see another one? Chance somehow gets the environmental there. And this is really going to do it. And Ohio State finally gets it there. But, man, it's, it's tough. It's yeah. uphill battle.
it's an uphill battle for sure. OSU will be able to finish the map, but that last little uh, recontest from uh, OSU, uh, sorry, from Converse ends up being really crucial there because it ends up getting the clock all the way down into overtime, right? Which means uh, if Converse is able to finish the map with more than a minute on the clock, OSU won't get an extra fight, right? Oh, they're going to... Oh, look, we get a little bit of a replay here. Oh, Look at this. This was just oh, madness. Oh, here's the there bomb right there. Yeah, it was on top. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What? That's such good placement. It is really... It's... It is easy to uh, look at a general spot on the map and say, I want my Diva Bomb to go around here. To look at that high ground, that little that little grate, and be like, I want my Diva Bomb to land on that. That is really difficult. That Shout out the guard chomp for that. <laughs> like I was saying, though, if, uh, if Converse is able to finish with more than a minute left on the clock, OSU won't get uh, extra rounds. They would just be playing for a draw, right? So uh, that is what Converse gets by getting us into overtime. But of course, they have to finish the map first, right? OSU could easily, at any point in this map, hold Converse, uh, keep them from finishing, and then OSU would be our winners, and they would move on to the grand finals. I had to say, Garchomp was looking like Poku, you know, from, <laughs> from Philadelphia Fusion back in the day, getting some crazy bombs. Yeah, he was always quite the legend, but yeah, Garchomp been such a big difference maker here for Converse. So let's see what Converse has got coming out the gate here. Yeah, Converse is going back with the traditional, but Maxwell is actually going to be sticking with the Doomfist this time around. This is a very high-risk, high-reward pick here for Converse because uh, there's some one-shot potential with the punches, but you could be caught out in the back if you don't. And look at the speed. Out of nowhere, Chance able to get the kill, and now Kiwi overwhelming Ohio State. The speed of Converse is insane. Kiwi finding the kill, Ohio State trying to come back, but the point is at two ticks already. Ohio State's just deciding to back off. It's not worth it. But look at the time difference. It took Ohio State like three minutes just to get that first point. Yeah, almost six minutes with the point unlocked is actually insane for Converse. They have so much time to work with here, and uh, they're trying to push forward with it, but with Maxwell going down, it seems like uh, OSU are going to be forcing Converse back. They would love to be able to, oh my gosh, just backing up the fadeaway fire strike through the amp matrix, taking out Parker. That was beautiful from Hammer, and it actually buys Converse some extra time and some extra space to get Maxwell back. So, beautiful stuff there. It's going to allow the cart to get through that archway, which is big. It's one of the big defensive hold spots on King's Row. But now you have to play into the Ant Matrix, the uh, the Rip Tire, and probably the Dead Eye coming up from performance. As we're saying, there comes that Rip Tire trying to just find a kill. Look at this, riding up the chimney, a Christmas present nice. delivered. Ohio State able to pick up the kills and stopping Converse. That's a, exactly what they needed. Grab popping off, incredible work. And so, really, they did that without using many alts at all. Yeah, not much. They just used the Rip Tire, and that was really all they needed. I think maybe the Ant Matrix as well. Uh, but that was really all they needed. A pretty cheap fight overall for Ohio State, and that is the name of the game. Uh, Converse, though, is looking good on their ultimates. In just a moment, they could easily have all six ultimates available to them, and they might need it, honestly, to punch their way through point B. We're looking to see. Oh, look at that. Maxwell going in, doing a big ground pound. And now the high noon coming out, not able to find anybody. But the blizzard overwhelming, doing that damage. Maxwell able to get the punch kill onto performance and guard trump. And Converse is still rolling, able to control this. And it's just cleaning up the rest of this fight. Uh, this is going to be tough for Ohio State right now. Yeah, Ohio State might be able to keep contesting if they want to. Uh, probably not. Like, I, I don't think they're going to have enough time to go for a full recontest before point B gets captured, uh, especially since Esky and Parker are still getting back from spawn here. If they want to, though, OSU will have both tank ultimates available to them, so the Shatter Bomb can really help uh, give them some extra room. But, yeah, they're going to back off. And oh wait, actually a little bit of a uh, little bit of a communication error there. Parker actually goes forward a little too far, and now they're stuck outside of uh, of the mech. 
that's an easy stagger, and OSU has to back up and give Converse space because they're not a full six. Yeah, that's not going to be good, and now Ohio State's going to play the back pedal for the rest of this, but shout out to Quicks getting that May wall up and stalling, and I think that's the big reason why there was that miscommunication, but as we see now, we got two May walls. Lava able to finally get some ground here, going to stop Converse, Ohio State taken down. That's really good. So coming up at the stacks, you know, Ohio State's going to have that shatter and uh, amp matrix. So they should be able to get a good solid hold here. Yeah, uh, they should be able to hold here for a little bit, especially, I mean, Performance has the Deadeye coming up at about 20%. Grab is pretty close to the Blizzard. Probably one more fight will get them there. But right now, it's the Amp Matrix. The, the Maywall comes up immediately to try and counter it out. But, I mean, the Doomfist is just... It's just booping lava around. It's really tough to be a main tank when you are uh, just getting booped around everywhere. And that is going to allow uh, Converse to overwhelm OSU and start making their way towards the end of the map here with 3 minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock. They have the Blizzard available. They have the Ant Matrix available. They're mi blizzarding the spawn right now. <laughs> OSU is going to... They actually froze lava. OSU has to scramble to get around to the other side and try and touch. They do able to touch Parker able to. That's just that's not right. So there's the high noon coming out here from the side of Ohio State, able to pick up the kill on Quicks, and still Kiwi able to get the other kill. Immortalities are out, staying down now. A sound barrier by Converse. Converse really trying to seal the deal. Ohio State giving everything. They got McGorch up with a double self destruct. Unbelievable! Somebody get this man a medal. This is insane. I want to say that seven self-destruct kills for, for Garchomp this map, that is actually insane. The fact that I, what Garchomp does really well with them, right, is that he does a really good job of waiting until we're kind of later on into the fight. Things have sort of dissolved into a bunch of skirmishes. Uh, there isn't really a plan anymore. People have used their their shields are down, their abilities are, are gone, and... Uh, that's when Garchomp throws the bomb over the top and there's just no way to do anything about it. So here is our situation here, Ty Guy. Converse has three minutes and 15 seconds to take one tick, 33.3333, repeating forever, a percent of point A. If they can do it, they will be the winners. They will move on to the grand finals. If OSU can hold for three minutes and 15 seconds, we will have the draw and go to that map four that you want so badly. Map four, please. It's doable. We almost saw it in the Kennesaw match. It was That was insane. And... It, it almost did get held, and it was it came down to really just the last fight. So anything's possible. You got to do some crazy comps. Just got to go for it and take your chances here. It's do or die at this point. Do or die indeed. Converse theoretically has enough time here to just build up six ultimates and use them all at once and take that point. Usually that's not what teams try and do, though. And look at that. The Maywalls doing some justice there, and this is not good for Ohio State. The aggression... By Converse, able to find the kills. Immortalities for both sides are down. And the fist going in there. Hammer finding the kill. Ohio State's got to touch that point, though. But the main wall blocking it. Oh, my goodness. This is getting really close now. Chance able to pick up the rest of the kills. Ohio State trying just hanging on by a thread. Oh, and the amplification doing the damage. Converse is going to clean this up and go to the grand final. What a game from Converse and OSU. A super, super close one, by the way. I think we could very easily be seeing this matchup again later tonight. Key thing there that I forgot to mention as we started, as the match started, uh, that was the first time we've actually seen OSU match Converse with the May. Uh, they had been running Symmetra, they had been running uh, Junkrat, they had been running all of these more damage-based uh, compositions. This time around, they match with the May, maybe not quite as much in their comfort zone because the Converse's May player, Quicks, got a really nice May wall that I think uh, put the team in some tough situations. Their tanks were very low. They were forced to use their immortality field early. Uh, they were in a tough spot. So uh, great stuff from uh, Converse moving on to the grand finals, but OSU made them sweat for it.
Absolutely. Did you see the camera there for a second? It was zooming in. I didn't know how far it was going to go. Hey, I thought we were going to go. I, I wasn't sure if they were zooming in on the UK logo or the or the peripherals. Yeah, that's a good question. They may have been doing it to the UK now that I think about it more. So, but yes, more Overwatch to come. Don't worry. We got plenty coming up yeah. here. The grand hey. finals and another round. But we will be on a... Real quick, real, yeah, it's not going to be the normal break, though. We're going to let the teams have themselves their dinner break, so we're going to be uh, going off, well, not offline, we're going to be going on break for an hour here, so we're going to take a break, we're going to get some water, we're going to eat some food. I encourage you all at home to do the same and check back here in one hour, because that is when we are going to be concluding this tournament. We're going to be streaming until we have a winner. Converse OSU, whoever is on also still fighting it out in the losers bracket uh they anyone who's still in it at this point has a legitimate shot so it's going to be a super exciting ending uh be back in an hour because that's when we're going to do it see you then there are moments when doors of opportunity open moments when barriers are broken moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need moments when you harness something deep inside Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students. So we wanna ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from 
college. So with First Generation Student Services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day. And I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful if you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy, right, in the classroom, and all of us have a common goal of winning football games. And so to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us. On the flip side, like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives. So they are also very uh, appreciative and understand. So I mean, all around, they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible, which uh, we're very thankful for. I think the most rewarding part is probably going to be at the end of this when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously, right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is going to help us when we don't have football anymore. How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It's really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington, and you don't know UK until you're here.
something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world, like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations the people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do.
Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students. So we wanna ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from college. So with first generation student services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, the, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day, and I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful if you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy, right, in the classroom, and all of us have a common goal of winning football games. And so, to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us. On the flip side, like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives. So they are also very uh, appreciative and understanding. So I mean, all around, they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible, which uh, we're very thankful for. I think the most rewarding part is probably gonna be at the end of this, when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is gonna help us when we don't have football anymore.
How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It's really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington, and you don't know UK until you're here. Something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it.
Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world. Like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations. The people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Averly Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students, so we want to ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from college. So with first generation student services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it and they've also offered advising and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer.
there's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, the, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are gonna help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day. And I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you wanna start, it'll help you become successful as you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes, you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy right in the classroom and all of us have a common goal of winning football games and so to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us on the flip side like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives so they are also very uh, appreciative and understand so i mean all around they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible which uh, we're very thankful for I think the most rewarding part is probably going to be at the end of this when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is going to help us when we don't have football anymore. How's it working out with Benny here at the Credit Union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington, and you don't know UK until you're here. Something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. 
As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities. It makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world. Like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations. The people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do.
Averly Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students, so we want to ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from college. So with First Generation Student Services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are gonna help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day. And I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you wanna start, it'll help you become successful as you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes, you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful, and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy right in the classroom and all of us have a common goal of winning football games and so to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us on the flip side like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives so they are also very uh, appreciative and understand so i mean all around they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible which uh, we're very thankful for I think the most rewarding part is probably going to be at the end of this when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is going to help us when we don't have football anymore.
How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington and you don't know UK until you're here. Something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area and it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a Tempur-Pedic mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it. 
Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world. Like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations. The people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Averly Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students, so we want to ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from 
college. So with First Generation Student Services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it. Why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day. And I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful as you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes, you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy right in the classroom and all of us have a common goal of winning football games and so to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us on the flip side like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives so they are also very uh, appreciative and understand so i mean all around they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible which uh, we're very thankful for I think the most rewarding part is probably going to be at the end of this when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is going to help us when we don't have football anymore. How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more.
Welcome back, everybody, to the University of Kentucky Cornerstone facility. We are back. We just had a little dinner break. Uh, it's been a long day. You know, we've been sweating out just like a lot of these players have in a lot of these games. Um, it's been a great day for us as we are heading into the finals of the losers bracket with Quick Shots. Dude, uh, he's unstoppable. He's just unstoppable. Like, what do you do when you have Quick Shots on the other team? Right? We got the semifinals of the losers first. Yep. Right, uh, obviously, um, Converse advanced to the winners' final, so they will not be playing until the losers' bracket is concluded. Um, that being said, what do you expect to see? I mean, there's still a lot of elite teams left. Unfortunately, we are not going to see Oklahoma play as they did get knocked out by, uh, I believe, uh, oh, that, no, no, no Grandview, I think. Grandview, yeah, Grandview. yeah. So I think we have Grandview versus Kennesaw State, which should also be a great game. If the yep. previous one was a great game, and then I believe we have. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I think we got that back. Can we get the bracket pulled up? Because I think I got that backwards. I think Kennesaw is playing Ohio State B team, and I think Grandview is is playing. Um... No, no, no. What I'm saying is I don't know if that series finished. If Oklahoma, if that, if Kennesaw is still, let, let's just take a look. Yeah, we didn't we, get the chance to check in. on like a lot of side. Okay, so we have Kennesaw versus Grandview. Okay, as I thought. And then the winner of that game plays Ohio State A team. Right. Okay. So this, the, these next the three games are going to be. Pretty crazy. Yeah, I, I, the, the, like this is like this is why you come to land tournament. We've we've entered the arena where we'll see if Kansas State can keep up, but like almost every team here now like can compete with each other and take. Yeah, wins. I, like I, I would not be surprised if any of these teams eventually mm -hmm. took the win. Yeah, and what's what's so funny is you know I, as long as Kesson can stay on the map for Kennesaw, I think that they oh got they got a chance. Uh, but you know that'll be the big question of the hour: can uh, can Kesson stay on the map? But you know he he played phenomenal. Well, he did. That game at Kennesaw. You know, if if you're Kennesaw, what are you looking to do here? Right? Because if you you probably saw the match earlier that uh, Grandview had, and they were really shaky with the ult initiations, and they struggled with that a lot. And I feel like with Kennesaw's play style, they were very aggressive. They were especially very aggressive. On the DPS that was front. that was one of the things we talked about. That was one of the reasons that they eventually pulled it out. Yeah. It wasn't that Oklahoma was not aggressive by any means. Both teams were pretty aggressive, but Kennesaw like really always took the tempo. That mm -hmm. was like one of their biggest things. I think that's what gave Converse, although very similar player levels, actually eventually gave Converse over the win over uh, Grandview. So I honestly think it's really. I mean, look, Grandview's had time to sit back, like think about it. They've eaten. They really yeah, had some pizza. I had some pizza from the, I had from pizza. in the facility too. So we were lucky enough. So I mean, for me personally, I mean, obviously Cornerstone facility here in Lexington is is we talked a lot of, about it a lot today. The bar is open. I got I got myself a little. I actually non alcoholic. Don't you worry, folks at home. I had a little smoothie, little strawberry kiwi. They actually do have some, like some it was, like it was slushy type good. stuff. It's really good. And then I had a Rolling Stone pizza. I think it was right. Is that what the place? Yeah, was? yeah it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Nice little yeah. margarita. Not, not margarita pizza. Margarita pizza for all you guys at home. Okay, especially under the age of twenty one. We don't need, need any of that happening here. But the bottom line is, we're here for some Overwatch, and so let's start talking about Overwatch again. So. I don't know, man. I, I still think I was really shocked to see Ohio State A lose. I honestly thought that they were going to be the best team here. I didn't. We and were sitting – We I thought that until I watched our Converse game. And I was sitting there with Andy, one of our players, mm -hmm. the people out there on the UKA team. Shout out, Andy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was sitting there, and he was like, who do you think wins this? I think I said, I really do think Converse is the better team here. And I actually I, – I didn't think it was like a, like a large margin, I mean, but I actually, very close game, I actually really it. thought they would win. And – he was like, really? I was like, yeah, no, the the way they're ulting, the way they're playing as a team, the way they're bringing back fights is one of the things we were talking about that recently in our scrims with our team is the ability to bring back fights where you shouldn't win. And it's not just on mechanical skill, but it's by correctly ulting and playing as a team and toe touching and like doing all the right it, things. It's like all they years been, of Overwatch at once. Where, like, they have been excelling. I mean, yeah. seriously excelling at it today. It may be their day. Like yeah, it actually no, it, may. It, like it, they it played be. fantastic in Ohio State also. And, and you see, you know, when it comes to, to teams like Converse and well, we've talked about this quite a bit, and for all you at home who don't really understand, when you know, obviously with with any craft or hobby or sport in the world that you have, when you have a group of veteran players who you know are still in their prime, who have got the years of experience, who are firing at all cylinders, who have that team synergy, right? Like, there's just a difference as to the longer the fights go on, these guys just have the ability to turn because they're well seasoned, like they know how to turn the fights, like they know, oh, like if X, Y, and Z happens, you know, this is what happens when you have hundreds and hundreds of hours of scrims at this level of play, you tend to learn exactly what you need to do to turn fights, and that's what separates the good from the best, and these guys are the best at this for a reason, because they've got the experience. Even 
some quick shots on the Hanzo. I never thought I'd see it. Yeah, but. that was an interesting strategy. It worked out. A hammer was also good on the tank because no, I think no, he played they, the Arista. They, the they're a very solid roster. You know, they came in confident. They were been talking about a trash and they were going to three zero everybody. And I think Ohio State gave them a run for their money. And I'm very excited to see that match if it happens again. Right, because the Ohio State's going to have to win here. But like, obviously, with, we're going to focus on what's in front of us here. I think uh, this this next game of Kennesaw and Grandview is going to be very, very interesting. And I'm not exactly sure on the exact SR differences because obviously, if Kennesaw is like out, that so. outmanned, then you know I don't think they are. We'll find. I don't think they are though. I, I agree with you. I, I don't really think they're that like get far gapped by this team. So mm -hmm. and with the way they played today, I thought they were playing spectacularly earlier. Things yeah. could have changed, obviously. But from their previous performance, I really think this could be one of these upsets that, like, you and I talk about, like, oh, man, like, a year or two from now. Like, dude, remember when we were first yeah. casting, like, the first Invitational? Yeah. And like, and that happened? Yeah, like, that I think the crazy. Oklahoma, yeah. I think the Oklahoma game is already locked in my mind. Oh, the like, Kennesaw the, the Oklahoma, Oklahoma game. That was, I that haven't was had crazy. that much fun casting in a really long time. I'm usually... showing that to the boys, by the way. Like, they're going to have oh, to watch yeah. that game. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. Yeah, they'll, they'll have to. And, and, and uh, looks like everyone is starting to get into the lobby here, folks. I mean... I think people are starting to head on stage post dinner, dinner break. And, you know, Blake and I played some quick play we in did. our downtime, met some of the people around the area, talked a little bit about Sojourn. Yes, we did. Uh, I hope I pronounced her name right. I think Sojourn. Sojourn. Yeah. Sojourn. So, uh, do, you remember, do you remember when Brigitte first, or Brigitte came from, People still don't know how to pronounce Brigitte. I don't know either. I mean, I don't even know. I, Brigitte I, I, or something Brig, like that. It's we'll like just call Brig. Brig. You know, it's, 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 it's easier like that. I, I feel like Sojourn's going to be the same boat because. I'm just terrible with pronunciations. I'm awful, but I, you know, we were talking about how exciting that character looks. You know, and, and Jeff Goodman doing a great job of being super transparent this year. Got to give. I, mean, I think Blizzard's done a, a really stand up job this year. It's actually nice to to really see them reach out to the community, give us a lot of hope for Overwatch Two with the beta, especially right around the corner. Especially with everything that's going on over at Activision Blizzard with like Microsoft transact the Microsoft buy. Like, it's yep. huge for the industry, and you know, I I just very excited to see Overwatch making its. Uh, what was, its path back to the main real quick screen. what was the one of the big things uh I mean, it's a rhetorical question i'm about to ask yeah. but what were the one of the big things that everyone was like i need this i need this i need this i need you to stop putting in simple heroes i want the hero to have skill to it so that i get rewarded for the skill yeah when you watch soldier the way her railgun works the way her abilities work mm -hmm. the slow brigade may be a little weird to play against yeah but it's definitely not gonna be about the immortality field and stuff like that so i think they have good men is heard the team is heard and they're like we really want to put like an actually skillful hero out there that like if you really can't aim, yeah, you're, you're not going to be doing too much. Yeah, you're not going to be doing too much. And yeah. it won't feel it won't feel bad when you get killed by that character. It'd be like, okay, I deserved it. Oh, you know no, what I mean? well, like, like okay, uh, that guy, uh, he's uh, just uh, better. A hundred percent. And I think that that's something that's something that you know, as a community, we we do lose sight of that quite a bit, and that's on us, right? We need to be a little bit more disciplined with our feedback and kind of reading the skill floors and ceilings of the game and. From what I've heard and, and seen from from Blizzard and their their announcements and stuff, you know, I, I'm very much so looking forward to a, a game where they found a great way to separate the learning curve from the skill floor to the skill ceiling because that really increases the longevity of the play and it really makes you appreciate the players that you have here, the people that put in the hours and scrims that you know, the, for in the students' case, you know, trying to balance school and work. You see a lot of former OWL players and a lot of former contenders players move, making the move to collegiate, which is very very good. I mean, you look at like Iced on Maryville, a lot of these other guys. You look look at these guys in front of us right here right mm -hmm. um ready to roll about to get it going now i will say you know i'm hoping that if okay i'm, I'm taking kennesaw on this one really i am i i think that kezin will stay on the map um i think that their tempo in this matchup if i had to guess the way that that kennesaw has played previously in this tournament is is a weak point for for uh, Grandview if they play the same way they played in their first match um, today. Absolutely, but like, and this is also a reminder too. Like, even to myself, that match was still down to the wire. Like oh yeah, that, that really felt. That. I think it was a two zero, but like it felt like close. Wasn't it a two zero? I believe it was two zero, but like it was still, it still felt close at a lot of points in the maps. Oh yes, with one hundred percent. That, that map verge. was down to the wire, and you can still have a bad like, and obviously you can still have bad maps, right? But I feel like. In a land environment, your play chains and either chains like chains upwards or chains it's downwards. downwards. Yeah. Like, and so like th when you are playing and you are on fire like that, like Kennesaw was, Kennesaw State has been. And anything, anything could happen. You know, to be fair, Converse when they played Grandview, like it really turned out that Converse was that good of a team. So maybe Grandview is just kind of got a little unlucky 
with getting Converse on the other side of their bracket. You know, mm-hmm. and, and in that case, that'd be a, you know a true tragedy for them. But they're gonna have to prove themselves here today. Either way, you know, we I, I I'm personally very thrilled to see like this much competition. Um, in the first real tournament, right? You know, obviously, we uh, as uh, the hosts are going to be looking back on a lot of things that we can do better. Uh, but I'll say, I'll say this: I think people overall are pretty satisfied with with how this has been going, and uh, you know, I am as well. But I, I mean, you know how we are here, Blake. We we constantly look to improve. We constantly look to get better. And ideally, if there's another one, which you know, obviously, looking for, let's assume that there is, just for the sake of the argument. Um, Ideally, we can ramp it up a little bit more for 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 you guys, and I think it'd be awesome personally to have you sort of open Overwatch Invitational here, not just collegiate. You know, if UK was, you know, willing to really expand on their potential and really try to pursue what it is that they truly are capable of here at Cornerstone, I think that we could dominate the entire Midwest if they actually are willing to do so. And yeah, I, I, and I, I, love I, I believe that. I believe in the team here. Like that's one of the things. Like after talking to people today, and we've talked to people in the past, and knowing people on Overwatch team that know. Some of the higher ups in those areas, like I truly believe in their leadership and their abilities, and I think that's one of the greatest polls to UK is like, have they built the facilities? Mm-hmm. They built the facilities. They put in the money to build it. Do they have the right partners? Do they have the right sponsorships? Check, mm-hmm. check, check. Do they have the leadership that's willing to now take the steps to do all the things that we're talking about? And mm-hmm. uh, honestly, after talking to them, I believe I, they I, do. I love to see it. UK is really on the up and up, and it's it's really cool as someone that I, as you did grow up in Lexington yeah. to see that type of like forward thinking from this university. Uh, we'd love to see it. Hey, listen, I, I could cast on this table for fifty years. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> I could cast on this table for 50 years. <laughs> With Nothing white beats beards. I was, yeah, I got to be looking like Gandalf by the time we're done. And, you know, Overwatch maybe, the uh, 45. O- Overwatch, Overwatch 6. 1v1. All right, there we go. <laughs> just, oh, no, no, no. By then, it would be open beta. The game hasn't come out yet. Oh, okay. Well, no, okay. Come, <laughs> come, out. Come, out. come out yet. He made the joke, not yeah. me, folks. You heard it first. So, yeah, I think we're, we're starting to get everyone into the lobby here. Um, I've got to say... So I'm reading, I'm reading, but they're, we're, we're spying on their messages right now. Little do they know. We see you guys on screen. Blue Sandwich is, is a Bastion OTP this season with 33 minutes on Bastion. Just for anyone who is curious out there, congratulations, Mr. Bastion Main. Really? Um, but yeah, yeah. Did you not see that? <laughs> no. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. So, yeah, we're getting everybody on stage here. But, uh, you know, in terms of uh, – in terms of compositions that are going to be running, I mean, we'll probably see a decent amount of double shield again, right? Like you yep. think after all the teams were, were, were kind of matching on that. They I mean, were, but in, actually I didn't even think – well, I did think about this, but I didn't like really – I forgot to put in words because we mm-hmm. changed talking about UK a lot was – Yeah. Kennesaw won a lot on dive. They actually did. They did like, run a lot, lot of most dive. Most of yeah. dive, but most of grand views and converses and stuff they like that has been, has been double shield. So playing the dive and a double shield is really going to be – It wasn't even ball dive. They're running like they're Winston dive, yeah. Yeah, they're running Winston dive. Oh, and look so at like that. I'm, I'm interested. Love to see it. We love to see it. We love you guys too. Is that is that Eric up there? Ah, it is Eric up there. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Okay, there we go. That man has some great beer suggestions for us. I won't lie. Yeah, mm-hmm. last last night, you know, at the bar. I mean, name an e- esports facility that has a bar at the back. Whoa, 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 whoa! Not a bar, a brewery. A brewery. A brewery. I apologize. I brewery. Apologize. It's a whole nother level. That's a whole nother level of class. And everything. <laughs> Ethereal, by the way, shout out to them. Yeah, Local big company. Shout out to Ethereal, actually. Yeah. Awesome. Been going there for years. Yeah, yeah. No, dude, some of the some of the stuff they do. Listen, guys, we're we're in Kentucky, right? We we love our bourbon here. We love our bourbon here. Okay, so if we start getting sidetracked and talking about all the different breweries and stuff like that, you know, we got we got bourbon, basketball, horses, and now Overwatch. We're yeah, making Overwatch. We're, we're at the fourth wonder of the world here. The in fourth Lexington. wonder of the world. Fourth, really? fourth wonder of Lexington. I was about to say, what? like, there's I mean, more listen, than four Lexington, wonders I mean, in the I world did, already. The like... things I've seen here, we might be up there. Okay. okay. I mean, well. yeah, you can't tell me I'm wrong here. There's like we, we're like the Florida of Kentucky. I'm going to need you to expand on that a little because bit. Because <laughs> all the crazy stuff always happens in Florida. You can't tell me all the crazy stuff doesn't all. Well, actually, never mind. I take that back. I, I, I <laughs> There has been some very weird things that happen here in Kentucky, but we love them all anyway because that's what makes us Kentucky. All right. right? Oh, do we have everybody in round? Looks like we do have everybody here. We'll just see if there are in a second. I think we're going through some maps and, and rule sets and – I'm excited for this one. You know, one one go. sleeper player that I think that didn't get talked about too much on um, on Kennesaw. Obviously, the DPS on Kennesaw were playing really Can well. Can we decide on this guy's name? 
Is this Goodwin well, Woods? It's, 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 it's Wads. Wads? Wads. Yeah. It's Wads. Okay. Wads, yeah. Wads. It's Wads. Uh, I, I think Nitro Galaxy on Winston, as we are headed into the game here. I thought he played good. I thought he played very well. He, he saw, There were a couple times where like I think the ults popped a little early, but like he was in, in terms of his spacing, it, it was great. It was more so the timing of their dives that the, they were struggling with a little bit as we are headed to Li Zhang for map one today. Um, here we go, folks. Semi-finals of the loser's bracket from here on out. It is game time. Blake, I am ready to go. Ready to rumble as I'm very curious what they're going to come out on. So we saw Kennesaw come out on Rush on this map last time I played against Oklahoma's ball, uh, ball, ball. Lucio Mercy die where Oklahoma kind of overextended and died in that little corridor. They fought a little too early. Their tempo was off. They didn't force to find the point properly and it really got them punished for it. So we see Ryan Sig, J Sill on Kennesaw and... Oh, they got, they've got the names flipped on screen. I was really curious. I was like, wait a minute. So we got uh, production. We got Kennesaw and Grandview flipped on the on the display. Uh, but yeah, so we see Kennesaw coming out on May Sim because it might sw swap to the cast. And then we have Noah as on the J Sill on the other team, the good old junk rat, right? J Silly, as we like to call them. As they are, both teams are on the point here. They're going to try to spray them out. They're both Ryan's charge each other. Drone gets forced early as Kennesaw. Gonna get the entry kill here onto uh, Grandview and clean this fight up beautifully. That was fast, especially for a fight with double shield in the bath. Can they break the TP? Yep, great May wall coming out from Wads to really just get them that guaranteed fight win and not enough damage on Grandview, even with the J Silly, the Junkrat spamming the choke. They have not capped, again, this is what we're talking about Nitro. He's forcing this fight way too early. You have not capped the point as the freeze does come out. It's big, but. Wads is going to go down because of it. This is exactly what we talked about. Like, they took that fight too early and lost for it. Again, that's just greed. You get too greedy and you get punished. They're not aware of where the objective is. And that will be Kennesaw's fatal flaw. It was, and it wasn't the series beforehand. Like, but you have, like, the good with the bad. They're a highly aggressive team, so they're going to have moments where they do that, right? And as we've talked about, I would rather be on the highly aggressive side and have those errors than on be the passive side. Yep, as we see a teleporter come through, window gets used early. Big Another wall comes out, wall. and the aggression is trying to get punished here. But nice May wall. Nitro going to get a nice cleanup. Sim wall comes out, and they're crushing them here. Another quick fight win. Both teams getting a little too greedy and not quite understanding where the best place is for them to hold. The one thing I don't like about holding forward on Koth is that... It takes less percentage for the team fights to happen. So if you hold point, it takes more time off the clock. So you actually save yourself a team fight. And it's also very comp dependent. Like, yeah. like Grandview is not playing with a May. Like May comps can hold choke because there's only one of two ways to walk in. Yeah, and, and so you can actually hit them. Here you comes tire, the tire. Here. Tire coming across the rib looking for something. Not going to get it. But there, there goes two down. Chaos guy and Nitro dead again. Kesin trying to turn the fight with Max Beam. Not going to really see it happen as... The big sim wall clears the point. A nice engage on top of the tire with for their team. And again, good space in there, though, for Brand New to really engage with their tire, take space with the tire, which people don't ever really think to do. We've had some pretty funny first fights. Oh, like, yeah. This like, is like, we each, fought like four All the fights times. have been blowouts. Yeah. Like, all the fights have been insta-kill blowouts. Uh, Shatter comes other. out, by the way, from Max. Wall again! Wall again. Great wall from Waz. They're going to force all their cooldowns very early. TP in the back line with the bomb. What a play as Ashton is going to go down. Flux gets popped. Kezin really far forward gets slammed down. Loses the beat. Goes down quick. Window gets popped. Fire Strike drops Max. They're going to try to take the point here. Kennesaw trying to close it out. Can they actually get a May getting a big freeze onto the Sig? But they have no sim, so they're lacking damage. Window gets popped. They got to run in front of it. They do. Blizzard gets popped as well. Big freeze coming up. No, the drone. The drone saves the J-Sills on the point. They need to flip the point here, though. They got to fight on the point. The Rhine is back. Counterpin comes out onto Max. Nitro trying to clean this up. And Kennesaw going to turn this 68%, though, ready for Grandview. Probably need two big fight wins. And if they lose, they have one extended fight left in this round. I really want to point out the uh, the the man that is currently on the screen, Wads. His Maywalls have seriously won them three fights already. All three of the fights that Kennesaw State has won, it has been off of his Maywall, bringing out massive cooldowns from Grandview. So let's see if he can do it one more time. Yeah, I think they're kind of back to point. I kind of like this kite as the tire initiation comes out from Noah. He's going to be looking for somebody here. And again, they need to walk this tire as Kazan going to go down, but they trade Sims. Nitro with a big fight turn. Huge pick from him. They don't have any too many ults. They use the windows way too far forward. They aren't going to be able to use it that well as Blue Sandwich is coming up on his and big ults come up for Grandview. They're going to have to engage now, especially if they want to win this fight quickly as the Flux gets popped. Maywall comes out. Sick. On their back line, May Cryo gets forced. Ryan on the right side, Simwell gets popped for 
Kennesaw, they're trying to clean this one up as Kezin trying to build his beam, ramp up his damage as fast as he can. They're going to have to kite this out because they're down players. The Sim going to be putting in that damage, though, as Ashton has his own wall to try to clean this one up. But here's the good news for Kennesaw. They did not let them flip the point. They stalled it out all the way to 99. And they uh, have beat. They do have beat, but the Sim wall, the Shatter, the real key here is going to be Max. Can he land the Shatter to just get one kill and help save the ult economy because the Blizzard bomb and and beat are ready for Kennesaw. They TP behind they him. Past him! They TP behind That's why you can't hold that forward against Sim. Shadow gets bombed. Lucio goes down. Right charges in. Drone gets forced. Blizzard's in there. Ash is going to kill Kezin. Prototype are going to kill Ashton as well. Both Sims down. Kennesaw trying to clean this fight up. It's going to be big down to the wire. They need to finish this now. Before they get back to the point, the beat gets bombed. Shatter on the beaten Lucio. Just the Sig left on the point. Going to be frozen. The JSO's coming back in server. He has tire. He rips the tire. It's not going to get anything, and that's going to do it. What a round. Sort of Down to the wire for Kennesaw. Oh, and then the rest of the team just yeah. jumps yeah. on top of them. The, and it's doing the small things right in playing with aggression. Kennesaw, multiple fights won. Not because of an insane mechanical skill. They walled correctly. Brought out the immortality fields. Three fights. They brought up the immortality fields before the fight had even started. You have just simple plays. The TP passed them, making sure you don't have to use any of your major cooldowns to get past them. It was a perfect TP. They got onto the point, went, made walled them off again, forced out another aggro, like forced out another drone while they already had beat themselves and they could beat aggro. There was no way they're going to lose yeah, that fight. I mean, after it, it's after just simple they're, they're, stuff right for that. Their long. initiations were really good, and it's their DPS players that are lining this up, and that's going to be the big difference here. Like Wads and Kezin are having themselves great games as we do see the. Ball comp finally come out here. Little on the on the on the mini script we got here checking out these players' faces. Look at those beautiful sons of guns, right? As Ashing gonna be swapping over to the tracer as they are gonna TP straight to point with Rush. Now this will be interesting. Echo Tracer. And they understand that hold too. They understand that hold to hold. You can yeah, hold they back do. I don't know if I like them playing on that outside part though, because you can get booped off the map by the ball. You're just gonna give them all those spam angles. I like the stuff that their back line should be run over right now. They're waiting too long as the ball gets frozen. Max gets caught out, but the drone gets forced. The points open and the D net comes out. I think they have to close too much space with that teleporter, but the SIG gonna be frozen. They're trading out for the baby diva. They're on the point. Noah gonna kill the sim. Nitro doing God's work in their back line, finally trading out. And it looks like Kennesaw is gonna be the winners there because they're actually able to cap that point now. That is risky going back that far. It is risky holding back that far. It to me, a lot of the like I actually took some time watching this point. Most really, really, really good teams on Sim will actually hold this far back versus the ball comps, <laughs> unless they're playing fair or like an extra conk character. So saves uh, the poke, but the puts angle. pressure on the diva as they're going to be engaging on this side. The boop comes out Another onto Max. On the ball. The Lucio play has been pretty good on this map today too. Divinity very. also made some very good plays on his own there as they're going to be able to hold the point. I think we got a reset coming out from Grandview, and the pressure is definitely on them now. They're in an old economy deficit. Kennesaw's up 1-0 with 30% already. This is a fight you need to really win, or else you're going to be in trouble as the huge coordinated dive comes out as the Zen. They will with run no with the trance. The they're running with the trance. Pop the trick. Big Shatter comes out from the copy. Beat gets popped as well. Post comes out onto the right. No, with another Shatter. Shatter's air gets boomed. He gets boomed. Noah's off the map, but it looks like Grandview might still be able to turn it as the BAP has stayed alive in the back line on the Cassidy as well, who is Discord. The ball is trying to clean up the BAP. Just cast left on the point as the Diva is going to get break bash stunned. Straight out with the Zen, though. I think this is done, if I had to guess. And what a crazy fight. What a boot from ISO. He's having himself a game. He is. And we have entered the danger zone for Kennesaw State right now. We already saw it. When Brig Zen, it looks like a squishy comp, but when they have their support ults up, they will brawl with it. We saw how far forward their Zen was standing and instantly tranked to the back line. Look to see the same for the Brig on this rally. Well, as they rally in here, very aggressive positioning. The high noon on the drone gets popped. Gonna get the Diva, but only forces the bomb. Blizzard as well on the baby. Gonna try to get the final blow on her, but they flip the point. They flip the point. How they flip the do point. This? They flip the point. They gave them too much space as the sh What? The Shatter, gonna get matched, but he's not even close to it. I don't know what that was. They Maybe. bent space and time with that Shatter. Yeah, yeah, that was, a, that was some space-time sure continuum was, right there. He's playing hopscotch there. with the Wrecking Ball <laughs> as they're chasing them all the way home. This is bad. If they lose them here, but they might have overextended a little bit. I don't know. They had no resource. They lost their Maywall prototype or does have the bomb. But other than that, for Grandview, they need to build their copy quick, and we're going to have to have Ash and get value with this Pulse Bomb because the Trank is not going to be enough to sustain both the, the window and the bomb if they layer the ults properly. So finally starting to roll up on the point here. They engage inside. Window gets popped. Trank gets used early. Again. Big freeze comes out. Ashton, big kill onto ISO, who's been huge for Kennesaw. As the shield's going to be low. Ryan goes down. Ashton trying to turn this fight by himself. He's in there big against three. 
three for Ashton in this last fight, being the hero that he needs to be for Grandview, who's playing very well, very good discipline, but they just need to get those final blows, as Ashton gonna get them what they need, but they're only at 20%, and what did it cost? It cost them Copy, it cost them Trank, they do have Minefield and Rally, but you're going up against a High Noon, you're going up against the Beat. Their big issue is they're giving Kennesaw too much space. The only two fights the Grandview has won on this point was with their aggro trance. They have to show another way to do it, and to me, it has to be their tanks not failing to get the back cap off. This ball needs to not die first. Both here we go. The ball needs long. to get a big boop here, but he's late. Gonna get frozen. He's frozen the again. The gets popped. Ryan misses the charge though. Ball is trying to stall it out. He's gonna go down. They got the rally up. This is winnable because they have Demac Diva as Kezin is gonna trade for Noah, but Prototype's also gonna go down for the sandwich. It's a kill onto the May. The Shatter coming up for Nitro. He's gonna have to get it soon if he wants to win that. Gets the fire strike, but I think this is done as Ashen and Blue Sandwich and the core have survived long enough to clean up this fight and they do not want to stagger. Just reset now, guys. They're not gonna be able to win this fight as Lucio is gonna get out. Close call. Grandview cut it real close here. No beat, though, for Kennesaw State. I thought that was a fight they really had to win there. We could be looking at a Grandview uh, win now. They've won, as I said, every fight they've had trance. They've won. Their Zen gets to go into That's extremely aggressive positions. Track. They have Pulse Bomb. But there is a lot for Kennesaw State. They really have to make these zoning alts work. Yes, here they come at the engage. Ball PD. I like it. I like it. Oh, <laughs> oh no. Oh, now the ball's gonna die. Blizzard gets eight. Opia eats the Blizzard. Trent comes out. Bomb comes out too. They're trying to take the tempo here. Opia being the hero that they need. They're trying to rotate to the point. They're forcing the point now. Diva's on the point. Their team is split. They're 50 to rally. The longer this fight goes on, the better it is for Grandview. They have to survive. Oh, Diva. Great oh, Diva. Oh, Diva. Wads, again, huge for his team. They gotta survive the break. Who does have the Inspire up? 60% to rally and counting. Copy gets popped. Diva gets duped. On the back. He's back there trading out. Going one for one the best they can as Max Max gets two. Three actually with that kill. Prototype, trying to stall this out. Not going to be able to get it. Noah has Bob on the point. Just one left. Look at that stall. Look at that movement. Sheesh. Look at him go. Oh, oh. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Hate no, to see no. It. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> oh, we saw that one coming. So hey, trying to turn this fight by himself. Program. He's in there no, making it three. Three for Ashton in this last fight. fight being the hero that he needs to be for forth. Grandview. He's playing one very one well, very Brigolds. good discipline. But they just need it. Makes a sit back, uh, more pokey type of comp turn into a brawl comp whenever they want to do it. Oh, yeah. And let's talk about how good the support play was for Grandview there. It, it was it was absolutely. They never died first. The brig was route and fire up as the whole game. Blue sandwich had great tranks. Great, great, great teamwork on making sure they were all shooting the Discord target. That was one thing I was really watching is where was the Discord placed and how well were they doing it. And both these teams are playing incredibly well. Now here's the battle of the comps, right? Now Grandview has swapped to rush, and Kennesaw is on dot. Wow, what a switch! I don't know. We're just we're just reverse carding each other today. Never thought I'd see this one coming as the ball is going to get forced out really early. I don't know. As Patience gonna... is the name of the game yeah, for Kennesaw. you got 10 seconds on the clock. That's a lot of time, guys. I don't even force accept they're gonna cap stupid. It. I wouldn't even accept Granby's going to cap it first, but you just need to make sure you charge the ults correctly and you find you know, the openings where I they are. I can't say I like this come from Kennesaw as Ashton going to find a big entry pick too. He gets two. How as did he get the Zen? I don't know. I mean, it's just Ashton. I don't, I don't know what to that's, tell you. That's it's fair. Just, it's just Ashton off, doing though. Ashton things. He's been watching. doing God's work. It's the late swap to Rush. You hate to see it. If I'm Kennesaw, I'm definitely kicking myself a little bit right now. Because I think you know, they were trying to counter comp. Yeah, I think they were trying to counter comp. I think they thought they were going to run the ball brawl they ran, or the ball they ran yeah, last yeah, round. They were, they were trying, trying to counter it with their yeah. own uh, Sombra. But I thought they did a great job on the rush, but we'll see as Wads with the May has been so good with the instant kill from No, They're going to have to kite this out. They can still turn this, but they don't have really any big ults to do it as the Ashen is going to be looking to clean this fight up. No drone available. Oh, man, what do you think about this ult economy, though? We're kind of saw is in, in deep trouble. We pointed out in previous games, sometimes in these scenarios, you just need, hey, Wads, we need you to hit a big wall. Like, yeah. kids, we need you to get a stun kill. Yeah, like, because just, you need to find it because you are down the You almost have to fake engage it because yes. they have window and you have nothing. You almost need to bait their window, see if you can force it early. As they as they try a fake, but you can't you can't have fake like that because now you wasted eight percent. You're digging your grave even deeper. So you know they're gonna look to window up front here. How do you answer it, right? Get in there. There's the window. Kite it. 
Tied it. There we go. A nice bait, but again, and now they have their it's, own it's window. very now they have late. Their own window. It's very late because now you're going into the window against Simwall, High Noon, Shatter. What, and what else do you have? They have to explode out here. There they, is no option. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There is no good option oh, you can't here. They have to explode First of all, break that wall. That wall is really easy to break, and they can't actually use it, so that's good. They're going to use the High Noon here as the Diva does get D-Mech from the High Noon. Fire Strike comes out. Nitro, what do you have for us, brother? It's on you, man. If you want to turn it for Kennesaw, you got to do it right now, brother. He's coming up on the Shatter. The big wall comes out. He goes down instantly to Noah as oh Cam Sky gotta get Max. What do you have? You got High Noon. You got his oh no oh no oh, oh, dude, oh what noon. is going oh, on? My God. What is going on? As Kezin kills four with the Noon because the Demo dropped a bomb in his whole team as Kennesaw flips the point as the Blizzard gets popped. A rookie oh mistake my by the Demon. They bought she bombed oh into a High Noon. God. What the a ultimate play. no no. You cannot bomb into the High Noon, and that's what I'm talking about. What did I say? Kez, Woods, someone's got to yeah, make a play. Kez, the someone's got to make Kenesaw a play. Have been doing it. Kez has had himself a field day out here. Put this guy on a laptop that's not cut in half, which is what he used to play on. It's a tip TP to point. They get in. Big wall comes down. Everyone, shatter comes down. Huge shatter for Grandview as they're trying to clean it up. Windows ready for Blue Seven. He's gonna pop it. Look for the duel. It's, the windows are just both on point. The beat gets popped. Lion, 98% on the beat, but Kez has cleaned this fight up. Big freeze comes out from Watts as they clean it up. Like, what are we watching that today? That was incredible. You saw the Ant Mistresses crossed over into an X. You saw the BAP go down for Kennesaw, but they had the beat, and so they were able to overcome it. But here we go. Grandview, now it's their turn to have beat. What is the uh, what is the option here? Hopefully, Prototyper on Kennesaw does not make the same mistake versus Noah's High Noon by bombing into it. Yeah, you can't. You got to be very careful with the bombs. I think he got D neck last time, though, which makes it even harder. As the Ultra Combi is definitely favored. Grab the ball. The big ball comes out. They force the back. They won't be able to walk this High Noon. Wads saving this. The bomb engage comes in. Sim TP in the back line. Sun comes out. Drone gets forced. There's Kaz with another High Noon on the point. Sim wall gets popped. Max Max goes down. This is definitely winnable for Kennesaw, but he's taking the duel on the same with the wall. Diva gets frozen. Lucio on the point. Nice. Sun comes out. Can't quite get the finish though. The Babs on the point trying to finish it off. Watch the stun. No one's gonna kill Kezin. So Winnable Wads is the freeze on the team. I'm trying to clean this one up. Just the cast on the point. Trying to finish him off. Blue Sandwich, another window ready. No one kills two. Ashley gets another. They might be able to win this as both windows on the point. And Grandview is gonna barely win this fight by the skin of their teeth. Wow. Oh my goodness. Is there even a touch possible here? Let's no. go. What wow. a round. Let's go! What a game! You can't ask for anything better than that if you're a fan of Overwatch. Oh my god, that was crazy! That was that was absolutely insane. I cannot wait to see this play of the game. It has to be the 4K. Kez, what it a has play to be from both 4K. teams. An absolute slugfest. Absolute slugfest. Look at this fight. Look at this fight. Like, I know you can relate to that Reinhardt instant dying. Both of those Reinhardts oh, instant dying, Oh, why you gotta do me like that? <laughs> yeah. Come on, man. Oh, what a play. This is just... This is just... Oh, look at the... The May blocked the bomb for their team. That like that is just the, the those are the small things. I'm so glad we got to say that Maze, you can actually block the ball. You can block team. Diva Bomb, and if you didn't know this too, one of my favorite things is you know I'm gonna I, he might have made Overwatch League, but I'm gonna rag on him a little bit. Back when I played on Triumph with Hydran, there's a clip of this man cryo for me in between me and the MO field, and I died to a dragon because he blocked the LOS, and I oh didn't know that God. you could do that. I didn't know that So either. May actually, May Ice Block is considered an LOS block, a line of sight block for those of you who don't know. And you can actually like completely block not only ultimates, but allied, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Assets? Uh, yes. Like, abilities? Like, yes. It's a, it's the ultimate LOS blocker. I'm sweating right now. I'm, I am, this is the game that, that I was, wanted. I, we were talking about, we were like, want. I don't know which way it's going to go. I this don't know. I, want. I don't even know what to cast. I feel like I'm watching goats. <laughs> Everything's you know, everywhere. I, I, and I have a feeling that plays a lot like Overwatch 2 in some regard because, you know, like, look at this. This is like, this is just an absolute death machine I'm watching in front of me. And there's pop-off moments from everyone everywhere. Definitely going to be one I'm going to have to watch back. Like, man, there was just so much I must have missed because of how many great plays that it happened. But this is... Exactly what I wanted. Kennesaw looks to be up to the task. Yeah, they look to, to be up to the that task. That was one fight, and they were they, that I that was that was I love Cass and Kennesaw. I do. Uh, that, I, that was they I mean, they are do they do so many of the little so things right. What's your takeaway from that game? It looks like we're heading over to Watchpoint Gibraltar for this next map. What is, like what? I don't even know what to say because every single player it seems like is having their pop off moment. Waz's walls have been great. Kezin's had his big moments too. DPS on both teams popping. Blue sandwich and and uh and the the bat for um 
for Kennesaw. Kennesaw, Cam Sky are window for window. I, at I neck honestly, and neck let me, every let me, fight. Let me give why I think Kennesaw still got the advantage. Why? I a couple down times one. we couple times we believe we wa I watched Max Grandview's tank. I believe feed on ball a little bit. At the beginning of fights, we were talking about that on second point. Kept dying first couple times. But I think one of the biggest things that I think ended up losing Kennesaw, because you think it was basically 99 99. Kennesaw attempted to counter comp them. Yeah. And so ended up throwing away a full fight because they were trying to run a Sombra dive with ball, oh, trying to right. counter their ball. You're right. Oh, you and so it's like, to be by even, but remember how down they were in the old cycle to pull it to 99? Right. That probably tells me something. Wait, if we had started on Brawl, uh, no, it's just, of course, shoulda, right. coulda, woulda. But if you're already that close and you are horribly down in ults and percentage, and you found a way to make the map that close, yeah. Like, I. That could have really been it. I mean, you're not really kicking yourself. The, 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 honestly, the, I, I mean, you put yourself there. at a default disadvantage, and that's why comp selection and comp identification are so important in Overwatch, especially on Koth. Absolutely. I but feel like maybe you're right. I think Kennesaw was actually winning a lot more of the neutral fights, and in these map formats and game formats, you see much more neutral fights as we see Kennesaw come out on their dive yet again. This was their best comp. Yeah. This was their best comp. If Grandview starts to like manhandle them on this comp, then it's probably over, because I believe this was their best comp. Now, here's Rhodes the thing. We're seeing the Mercy play, and I don't think any team has really seen the success on Mercy today. Over Vergita. They all end up swapping because their team doesn't play discipline enough. When someone dies, you don't kite back for the res properly. Like, you have to play much slower with the Mercy compared to uh, the Brig. But the double bubble comes out. I don't think we've seen much double bubble today either coming out from Grandu. Zarya already max charged. They are charging her up and she is going to be put in damage. He's already a third to his grab in the first 30 seconds of the round. He'll be burning this. Honors are neck and neck right now. Yeah, we'll awesome. see. The Honors are neck and neck. Is Ashton going to get the better of Kezid in the Tracer duel here? But to be honest, that's not really that valuable considering that they are on defense and they would be able to force the entire hold back if they were on offense, but they cannot do that here as Cam Sky, 90% to Nano, but Blue Sandwich already has as they almost want to give to the Zarya because the Zarya's got grab or 80 to grab to 50 to bomb. And again, I feel like Kennesaw doesn't really know where they're forcing the fight because that is just not what you want to be doing right there as Kezin is going to win the duel, but now they have the free grab. But Nitro going to get the kill on the Blue Sandwich very early and they're going to survive the Nano wins it because the sleep comes out. What a sleep dart from Camp Sky to save his team, especially when they're running Mercy over Brig and the single target healing is and all look at they that. have. That's the proficiency we were talking about. That is, the, that is the proficiency in dive that we were talking about, doing all the little things right. And also, although Kezin lost the first duel on card, oh, won the, the second one. Here's the grab. Anti on the Winston. Primal gets popped. Pulse comes out from Kezin. Good look from him as Wads. Gonna be cleaning up the fight on the Zarya. See, I feel like if Grandview just went first again, like if they went first against the Mercy, they're still holding because they already have grab. And this is where Kennesaw can shine and get the advantage. Absolutely. And, and what's even more to that point is the Zarya version of the comp needs to be the more aggressive version of it. The Zarya, like the, the Diva comp can't afford to be more sitting back. As Granvy, you need to be taking the aggression with the Zarya to get her in range, to get grab faster. Yeah, 100% as the great bomb sleep. is ready. The rally gets popped as Nitro. Gonna get burned. Oh, oh! No way, they made it out! You gotta finish him off there. Oh, no, oh, they got him. No, okay. They do get him Ashen again, be, doing Ashen things, cleaning him up. As he's gonna get two kills there for his team. Is wait a minute, wait a minute, Max gonna go down. Rez is available and an option here for ISO, but it looks like they're just kind of backing off here. They're sticking with the double bubble, and they've got to know where to fight with the Zarya. Because I will say, Opia has done a great job of getting charged up and actually building that grab quickly. But they just gotta actually capitalize. And look, they got. They already got top by them losing their monkey yeah, before the fight. They have now gained the top. The yeah. hardest part of this map is walking through those four choke points. As well, a nice little dive comes out here from Max to force them very early. He's got the primal looking for his dive as Kezin's dueling on the point. One HP to Ashton, who does get the better of Nitro, is going to trade out with Blue Sandwich. Get that nice kill onto him. Max has the primal. Chasing down the Echo. Going for the Ana. Nade onto him. Looks for the primal kill. Going to get it, but gets slept. Chases the Echo next. Forcing the fight back on the point. Zarya's on the point. Max charge with grab this fight. Now, I really want to see Opia get aggressive with this grab. They have to take it to them. Well, now they do switch off to the Mercy, or off Mercy to the break, so maybe they can slow down, but what do you want to see here from these ults, Blake? 
from Kenosaw, I really want to see what they've shown the entire time, which is this their complete uh, willingness to go aggressive. I think by putting the brig is camps, as we saw at the beginning of the last fight, was really getting dove almost instantly. So I want to see aggressive, aggressive. Oh, here, here, here's your dive right there. It's nice. You're going to go down to one HP just from jumping up there as the copy, copy. gets popped too. They're going to have to grab this copy, is my guess, is the primal. Double gets primal? Popped. Yeah, a double primal coming out here as Wads. going to be forcing the space. Zarya gets booped down. Nice boop from him. Still has Brad though. Like, I, I really want to see them get aggressive. The guy that finally does get popped. Gets the copy and that oh gets eaten! Prototyper eats the grab! Oh no! But the backlines are trading, but can Kennesaw actually force this point as Prototyper is gonna get the kill onto Lion, but they're forcing the point! Oh no, don't do it! Don't do it to me! As Ashton is killing everything, but they might see nine! The bomb is on the point! That was one HP! Can they close it out? Kesson and Ashton dueling on the point! Ashton trying to the house to gets eaten! Kesson's post bomb's on the point! Kesson has to probably. finally win this 1v1, but the rallying! Oh, the rallying break is gonna save it. What an absolute slugfest. And this is kind of what I talked about. I feel like these teams have such good players, but they just don't quite know where to fight to help them get the advantage. As again, the break rally gonna save them, but honestly, that favored Kennesaw because they pushed the cart so far back that now they have the advantage getting in here, and they have Nano and Rally ahead of Grandview. So the Nano initiation should get them a lot of space here. I know Cam Sky's gotta be looking for it early as Kezin tries to force the point, making the tracer get off the back line as a Nano Monkey comes in, trying to get the kills, gets Blue Sandwich. Now all you have to do is force the point, and you end up winning this one, guys, as now, Again, great discipline from Nitro, but Diva gets DMAX. Primal gets popped. They're on no on the side. Lion gonna be able to kill the Here's Rally. Diva. How can he win this? Rally gets popped. Ashton goes down. Gotta get in aggressive with that Rally before Blue Sandwich gets Nano boost at 80%. Ashton won the point. And that is the power of forcing Rally to fight before right there. Absolutely. And that's that's the power of playing with the aggression because by knowing like, hey, wait, we're kind of losing this fight. A couple fights ago, they said, kind of saw, I was like, we're losing this fight. What if we pushed it closer? And they mm -hmm. did, and they forced out a, b a bunch of ults because of it, too, by just doing the simple things right. I love to see it from Kennesaw. They're playing an amazing dive right now. Oh, they're doing a great job as Wads is going to have the copy available. They have Nano, Winston, and Bob. We're going to have to see this copy get a lot of values. Opia does swap over to the D.Va, or had swapped over to the D.Va in the previous fight. Sorry, we missed that. The Nano, Winston comes out. The copy, Winston, comes out as well. And they're trying to force their back line here. Gets the Primal immediately, looking for a kill onto the Ash. He can be forced to Bob, maybe get a boop off the map. He's looking for as Nitro is going to get the kill on the Blue Sandwich, forcing him out. The Ash gets booped into spawn as Wads is going to be displacing their team a lot. And look, again, guess who's pushing the cart? Because of that space. Kennesaw rounding around the corner. Bomb engage comes in, looking for the brig on a Cam Sky hides, but Nitro is gonna go down in their own backline. Kezin gonna be able to stabilize. Bomb is available. They're 80 to Nano and 60 to Rally. Brig is dead with our team. His prototyper, he's burning, he's burning, but he gets the bomb off. And again, look at Kennesaw getting the space during the fight. There's not enough contest on the cart as the counter dive comes in for Grandview. Primal gets popped. Ashton looking for the backline. Pulse bomb gets eaten by prototyper. Gonna go down the wads. Gonna try to force the fight back in. They're all pulling back with Reinhardt. Oh, they swapped out Reinhardt. Nitro comes back on Ryan. They probably transitioned into Rush on point three. As the Ryan pick comes to point, try to clean it up. Rally gets popped. They can really stuff them here. Diva gonna be getting low on the point. Echo Beam trying to finish him. Not gonna be able to get him. Blue Sandwich goes down to the Rally break who just takes the duel on his own. Wad cleans up Noah, and it looks like Kennesaw. Again, you're right, Blake. It seems like in the neutral, they're able to win this. No! No, Max gets the kill onto the brick. Oh my god. Can they turn this? I really don't think they can. It's just a break left on the point. 60 Good to anti. rally. Big nade comes out for Blue Sandwich, but the pulse comes out too. And Kennesaw gonna be able to clean this one up. What did you see there that they did differently to really get them that round? I think it wasn't actually that much different. And it's kind of what we talked about. Yeah. That they actually didn't like lose that ending Li Zhang because they weren't winning. They were winning the neutral fights. And once again, they are winning neutral fights. Now, I do want to give a lot of credit to one really specific player on Grandview, Ashton. We yeah. saw him destroying Kennesaw on the yeah. second point. He has been doing his absolute best to take as little resources as possible and get the maximum amount of damage done. I really want to give credit to that Grandview still has a lot left in them. But 52 seconds time bank, they could absolutely match them there. So, but here's the deal, right? Grandview is a more defensive team and they just play defense. Let's see now what, how it flips. Kennesaw on offensive team playing defense. Mm -hmm. Grandview defense team playing offense right now. Will Grandview actually put the pedal to the metal here? They need to. They cannot let them to be dictated to by Kennesaw. As we saw, they did to Oklahoma. Yeah, it's 100% right. And I think the big thing is, like, Ashton's playing great. I think it's the pacing and where the rest of Grandview is fighting. Because these fights are even. But Kennesaw is taking the fight on the objective much better than Grandview is. And, like, it's almost like they're fighting properly. 
but like just no, it is like they are fighting properly just in the wrong places and they're not understanding when they need to fight they're fighting in the right spots and they're getting the value but the timing is off because they're able to get the payload because Ashton is doing fine in the back line by himself as we see both teams come back out on the echo tracer dive wow what a ult charge for wants 25 percent in 10 seconds on copy are you kidding wow. me big spam comes out uh, Opie has really got to be looking to eat that as Nitro going to be trying to build up that primal 30% for him as well. Kenesaw doing a great job in the ult economy already, which is something that we talked about. They were doing very well compared to Grandview. And here we go. They're soft diving the high ground as the payload is getting forced. Kazan's a little bit low. 1 HP gets healed up. Nitro as well. Half health looking to get the final kill as Max is going to get the kill of the Nitro who lost a little bit. Oh, oh Noah! Nice cleanup from Noah and a great angle. He needs to look to do that echo that's beaming his diva though. Oh, a nice little uh, sticky's coming out from him. And what do you see about that setup? Who do you think's got the advantage now? Does that really ring true to what we were saying at the start? Uh, I think it's pretty even right now coming on the second point. Kez and so on the on the first point, just for people that don't know, the two tracers that they're dueling each other are never near the team fight. They're always sitting on cart trying to duel each other on cart. They should get a second contest here though, because neither tracer actually won the duel. Yeah, as they are going to be able to try to contest this fight. 78 to Nano for Camp Sky, but Nano's ready for Blue Sandwiches. It does get popped. The Brick dies. Oh, the Brick goes down, and they should be able to clean this one up as Ashton cleans up Kezin. Finally, we see Grandview start to ult first, but wait a minute. Wait a minute here. The Nano is committed, but Nitro's no, going to make Ashton. a smart play. Ashton's just too and, good. And probably reset here as Noah has forced the Primal This Ashton. man had killed like five that Ashton fight. Ashton is definitely trying to pull out the deadlift here, and a really great first point for Grandview, which is what they needed. A five-minute time bank coming into second, especially you got to push it all the way. They got a minute on the clock. You know, that's that, that match could go really either way, and I know that the nerves can really start to hit these players because it's do or die. It's win or go home. Everything's on the line as Max has the primal. Rally gets popped early, which is really good for Grandview. They forced ISO early, which is not great for Kennesaw because they want to wait until you get to the point with that ultimate as the primal gets popped. Supports are out of the fight altogether. Ashton taking the again. Look at how far up uh, Kezin's fighting. He does get a nice trade onto the brig, which is actually worth it. But look at how far back his team is. That awareness to fight with your team is one of the hardest things to get in Overwatch, especially in a land environment where you don't have your normal setups. You can't hear your teammates as they're trying to take the fight on the car. Ashton looking for a big pulse bomb here. Can he actually land it? Nitro gonna be pretty low, but no support all. It's ready for Kennesaw. The only thing that's really up is this pulse bomb. If he gets a big one, it could really turn this fight as they're denying the cart, forcing them back. Who do you think they could build the nano in time to engage with? Absolutely, I think. But I think both teams is looking for that right now. They need to do as fast as possible trying to build this nano. I will say, Grandview, as we said, they're leveling up before our very eyes. That level of aggression they've showed the entire time. Oh, big nade comes out. I saw anti heal, but a nade counter nade comes back out from Cam Sky, who has the nade already. Now, what a huge nade from him. He's got to use it though, as they, they use it to barely save Nitro, who's one HP, eighty percent to primal, ninety to the primal. Gets the primal off. Big for him. Anti on the break. Copy gets forced, beamed out of his copy. Can they kill the baby? He's gonna rematch. Oh no, here's the fight on the card. Opia gonna get the kill on it. Kaz and Nitro kills two. Both supports kill for Nitro. What a big save down to the wire from Cam Sky and Nitro on Kennesaw. But Noah gonna get the kill on the wads. Ashton, the discipline on the pulse bomb. I feel like I'm watching Shadow Burn, but on Tracer as Kazan gonna get the kill onto Noah. A good look from him. And Ashton has the discipline to not use the pulse bomb and back out. Gotta give it to Cam Sky and Nitro. What a turn from them. What a, what an absolute turn. And we, we were talking about this previously when we were eating. Uh, earlier nitro is like the silent like he just does so much for this team and you don't we don't talk about it enough yeah he that is. was another great primal his primals almost always get at least one kill yeah oh, yeah eat. nice eat for prototyper as the copy winston comes out and the rally they're blowing them hard kennesaw taking it to him as they should they got to be aware of the cart another pulse bomb gets eaten both divas looking to, to be very hungry man just like me they're hungry they want those pulse bombs prototyper <laughs> eats the pulse kills two nice cleanup from him coming out here as they're fighting on the payload has the bomb available man Kennesaw really taking it to him and that's what you want to do because that five minute time bank is now down to two absolutely can they just keep them choked in there now they can walk out can they force out rally early in this fight or will be in the mid fight of this fight that's the biggest thing as for Wads with a nice initiation into Noah should shut them down but they do have nano if I'm them I might want to commit with this because look at all the ults you have right like you don't want Kennesaw to actually get back into this as Kesson Gonna go down to Ashton, who's doing God's work for his team. Nano gets popped for both teams. Ashton again! Ashton doing God's work. He has the pulse! 
Looking for the pulse kill. Is he gonna get it? The wins is still. Look at the discipline on Ashen to not use that pulse when he knows he doesn't need to. A lot of tracers would just pop that because they could, but he's that confident. He's like a he's cold, but he's like Joe Burr out there, cold as ice. Oh my goodness. Ice in his veins as he deadlifts right now. Well, honestly, that was a team effort, but Ashton's been very impressive on this race. Both tracers have been very impressive. His cousin is on the card, just needs to die. All right, the gate's still open, and you guys got to reset the primal. Was forced from Nitro. They forced the primal out. Grandview has a chance to really turn this. It was looking so bad for them for a little bit there, but Ashton did God's work for him. And then a, one mistake from Kennesaw really swings this game. Absolutely, and that was what I said on the second point. If Grandview was able to use their rally, not in the beginning, but the mid-fight, they would win the fight, and they did. They got all the way out of their choke point and used on the low ground and pushed the point in. Also because, of course, Ashen is carrying, like always. Yeah, Ashen has the pulse bomb ready. Might be able to look for something. Both teams have the pulse. Here's Kezin in their back line, trying to get out. And again, nice discipline from Kezin to back out. Max does go down. Can Ashen actually turn this fight with his pulse bomb? Rally gets popped from Lion. They're trying to commit to this. Uh, copy is out for Kennesaw. Is they're really trying to do it. Nano gets popped. Pulse comes out. Nothing there. Ashen gets his pulse eaten by Prototype. All these guys are having phenomenal games as the Echo Duel is going to be one for Kennesaw. Every single player in this lobby is making incredible plays every team fight. This is the Overwatch I love to see. Absolutely. As this, this is the Overwatch we wanted to see towards the end of the uh, towards the end of the tournament that we've had, and we are gonna have even more of these games. It's shocking to think yeah, about. Yeah, this is this, this is, looks like a grand finals this, level this performance. Is, this is this is incredible. This is this is the semifinals of the losers bracket, folks. We're in for a treat tonight as Bomb is ready for Opia. Nice nano build coming out for Grandview. They're gonna get there first at the bubble whisper. He's gonna bomb. He can absolutely bomb their backline. They have nothing there to stop us. Opia does toss the bomb and can't he get anything? Not gonna get anything. Kevin Great pulse. gets the pulse on the line, but no one trades out with himself and. The odd is gonna go down to one as Nitro gets the kill and no supports available for Look Grandview. at the aggression. Look how far forward yeah, this defense is compared to Grandview. Explain defense. why that's important. Because you are forcing out ults. So they have to use so many ults just to get to the card. And these ultimate abilities are the best thing to turn fights for those of you who don't know Overwatch. They're forcing an ultimate Zarya. early, right? As we do see the double bubble comp come out from Grandview. The forcing ultimate abilities early makes it so much harder to win. As the pulse comes out, gets slept, gets the kill anyway. Ashton, an absolute menace. In the back line. He's looking oh, like Lee. Oh my goodness gracious. As Nitro going to have to kite out here. As Ashton is, is just these big fights. Where they've needed someone to do something to win. Ashton has been that guy. If I'm prototype or I'm marking him. Like a like a highlighter at the elementary school. Like a little store. Wherever you can buy those things. <laughs> I'm telling you. I used you to buy those about? all the time. I used to buy those all the time. They're very good. Scented highlighters. The fight is going on here. <laughs> Alright. The break gets slow. The drone gets forced early. We see a bat break. So as Noah is going to get the kill onto Wads. Rallying Brig comes out, walking forward, Ashton gets another kill, and it looks like as time is running out, can they add, they have two breaks, yeah, surely they win this with two breaks, right, it should be impossible, no, 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 oh, Doom this swap, do Doom this swap, here comes Doom, gets passed by a rallying Echo Brig, charge comes out from the Rhine, very close, Kezin on the bash, and emergency bash, and ends up instant dying, drone gets popped, Looks like this is going to be a nice little cleanup for Grandview, but they 52 took second time make advantage. And you know what? This is about the advantage that we expect from these two teams that are not on cough. Kennesaw with just like a two, literally, barely, two fight advantage. That's how close these guys are. This is a to the razor wire. Like, I would, I would be heartbroken if this series ends up in a 2-0 because it's anyone that has watched the series have seen how close this has been might, the entire we, time. We might be in best of five right now. Are we in best of five right now? I think so, Eric. I, I love that. I love that wave. Love that wave. Look at we're him not. Go. We're not. We're not. Okay, we are in best of two. Look at him go. There we go. So yeah, I mean, listen. Like it's just been. It's just been an incredible map. Like these guys. Most importantly, these upcoming good players. Man, they they deserve every second on stage they can get. Because I I remember back when I was a youngin and I and I was competing and I was doing all this stuff. Like the the feeling you get being on stage and 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 playing and the emotions the sweat the nerves the heartbeat the moments you make plays it just it's like there's not a better feeling in the world as we see the overwatch flag flying over watch point gibraltar you know i will say i'm pretty excited to see the overwatch story develop you know as this was the headquarters where sojourn and everyone was meeting for the overwatch 2 broadcast with like echo and winston because the world needs more heroes and i can tell you right 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 now like ashton being a hero for Grandview. Kennesaw, Prototyper, had himself a round. Cam Sky and Nitro also having rounds. ISO, the break play is not really being talked about because these the rallies from both teams have clutched up points individually on their own. Like every player in this lobby has carried. Absolutely. 
And it's just, it's incredible to see the TP comes out nice, Nate comes out from Camp Sky, getting him a nice little 11% on his nano, Look and every duel. percent Look matters. At the duel. Down, you can see it. The two tracers are dueling right next to the cart. Now, Keza not giving him any room. Really smart. It looks like they want to take an early fight here to the time, but he's got to be careful. His team needs to go help him, though. They don't. He he's going to die. He did not he get the pack. pack. Oh, he did get the pack, but he's going to get chased out. He's gonna get chased out most likely. So are you fighting here or are you not? I really like the aggression for Grandview, but they got two on the cart now. What's the plan? Is that no no? Oh nice bash in the brick. They might be able to Oh, oh no! no! What an angle! What an angle from Noah! And oh Kazan. Oh Kazan. Oh Kazan. He's gonna be low as Opia gonna get the kill of the auto as Noah opens the door to a big fight with his wands. Gonna try to get out, but he can't Opia! What great play from Opia and Noah, and again. This is what we're talking about. Every player in this lobby is making something happen. And it's, uh, folks, I want you to understand how rare it is to see two full teams of playmakers. Usually you don't see that, but right now, we're seeing it. And it's everybody, very awesome. Everybody is making a large difference for each other. We'll see. Grandview has the advantage. They have Nano as Kezin looking for the kill so close. Oh, look at him. He wanted it he so knew. bad. He wanted it so bad. Kezin, you got this, buddy. Keep grinding, my friend. Keep grinding as they're in there. Looking for the kill. You can see the emotion on the players' faces. The echo is going to be flying up. Looking for more. They have rally, They've though. got rally coming up. The rally gets popped. But generally, you want to rally second because Lions is going to last a little bit longer as Ashton and Opia have bomb and pulse. And they won't even need them as the rally is going to help them clean up the fight. And Kennesaw, oh my gosh, it is down to the absolute wire here. And Grandview, copy. Bond, Pulse, Kennesaw, oh no, oh no, Kennesaw has Bomb, Copy, Pulse, Ra oh Cam Sky, the stagger, the stagger. The stagger in overtime, so I really want to draw this attention to it, this could turn into a almost full cap, when overtime spawns are, are up, when overtime timer is up, the spawns are so, 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 so much longer for the team, if Kennesaw loses this next fight, they will straight up cap the entirety of second point and get decently into the third one into the third one yeah we'll see as they're getting hard stuffed here like very early you gotta maybe primal just to get the room here you want to take the tempo but they're gonna be stuffing you too hard now it's gonna be too difficult as the copy comes out looking for a big play here probably not gonna be able to get prototyper kills lion how does lion die first prototyper being the hero that they need as the cop oh no oh the nated on a break heal that's like a 150 health a second something crazy got the nitro gotta get the kill on a pulse comes no out. healers left no, but they do have a copy. They do have a copy ready. So, oh, no, they do not. Actually, that's Wads the copy. Nano gets popped, and this is going to be where it goes. I'm not going to lie to you. That's a very good push for Grandview. That is absolutely the amount that they needed. And this was the great thing, too. Obviously, Ashton has carried them through a lot of this, right? And that's going to happen. You have a great player. You enable them. They do well, right? But Kezin did a great job on point one of just saying he took the fight all the way up in near that mega. Yeah. He said, I'm not even going to let you get the card underneath. I'm going to take you out of the fight for as long as possible so that my team can win. And the bet didn't work. Grandview actually ended up winning that team fight. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking New about. Sandwich like, with the Nate. So, it was big. So, like, you're going to have – so for Grandview, obviously had those moments where Ashton has played fantastically. But when he's taken out of the equation, right. what are you going to do? And they stepped up to the plate multiple fights in a row. And made sure they were the ones to carry. Yeah, it's been incredible. I mean, if I'm Kennesaw, like, I, I feel bad for Kennesaw because they've been doing a lot of this stuff, right? Like, Kezin, maybe one or two bullets away from the final blow. Honestly, I don't think it would have made that much of a difference because I think the support alls are what won them that fight regardless. So having one less player, like, that really would not have changed the win con too much. I mean, it, what, what it really was was losing that first fight in the manner that they did where Nitro goes down because now Cam Sky is going to be late to get his Nano. Because the Ana builds the Nano Boost Ultimate off of the Winston being alive. And if your Winston dies early, you don't have the ability to build that too fast. So really, it was just a big nade from Blue Sandwich that turned that fight around and allowed them to win that as the Echo is going to be coming Starting out. on Zarya again. Yeah, they're starting on Zarya. Very interesting. It really didn't work too well last time for them because they're going to be able to get a lot of charge. But really, they just got to force the card and see how much free payload they can get. This like, is Rhodes' early. game. They are betting that Rhodes does not hit multiple large sticky bombs yep. over the time bank they have. Yep, we'll see because the big win con is the Echo building that copy quickly as he's pretty even right now. But he's done a great job of doing that even against a D.Va. So this is going to be very tough as he's looking for the Echo duel here. Not quite going to get the Tracer dueling on card. If I'm Kennesaw, you need to force the payload. Again, nice nade comes out. Nice nade comes out though. Can they actually get anything? As Cam Sky's got nano, you gotta go first. You gotta go with it now. This is your chance to kill Max. He's one HP. You gotta give us the auto. It's gonna go down. Cam Sky 
pops the nano. Can they clean up this fight? You gotta kill the Zarya quickly. Not sure who we got the nano off on though. I can't even see who has it as the Zarya. Nice bubble usage coming out. Wait a minute. Max trades out on us, but I think that Kennesaw should be able to get a push the payload. But Blake, you gotta, he uses the grab, but you gotta push the payload. Zarya's one HP. Payload. Gotta push the payload. They are starting to push the payload as Ashton trying to do God's work out here again. Goes down to one HP. Will they get Wait back a minute. Though. They, I think they might have just lost it, folks. We might be down to the absolute wire here. This is gonna be close. They need three point. I don't even think. Oh no, he's gonna stagger. Oh, Noah gets a kill on the Watts. Oh, no. Noah gets a kill on the Watts. Rally gets popped. They're gonna try to turn this one. Pat comes on to the Echo. What do you have with your Kennesaw? You have nothing. All you have is coffee. You need to survive as long as you can. You're 85% to rally. Can you live? They get forced out. I like the play though. I like the play though. They had no time left. They had already lost their honor before the fight started. Just pull out. Like they're gonna have at least now they're not gonna have a stagger contest. They will have a one real legit contest from this. So here's the thing. You need to win this with limited ultimates at their Kennesaw. Because there's gonna be another fight after this. Right? What do you use? The copy gets popped in them. Winston goes down to 1 HP. Nitro goes down to Ashton. Their tracer's not in the fight. The rally gets popped. Ashton is 1 HP. We need this Diva Bob to be huge from Watts. Can he get anything with it? Nothing, but Iso gets a kill in the lion. That's a We're huge kill. Shot. That's a huge kill as two Divas are on the point. Can he build another bomb? I don't think he can. As the rallying copy comes out, though, from Noah, he's going to be strong this out as long as he can. Max is killed on Here's the bomb on point. It's got to be big. There's one. He gets Noah. The rematch call on the Winston. Can they turn this fight? Because it's 1 HP. Watts gets another kill. It's all out for all the brick dies. No heals ready. Put a timer on the point. They've got to kill the brick. They've got to kill the brick fast. They have no chance. But they don't even see her. They're not even looking at her. The bomb is on point. Just the brick there. Big kill from Obia. That's and the it's game. Over. It's over. Red Red wins. Wins. Makes the hold. What a close game. What an amazing play. Honestly, I, I want another map. I, but I, what I, a feel, I feel so good about that about that game both teams i can honestly can say we played our absolute best match we, we like everyone on every team and for as much as i have my comments about max on the first point stuff like that the last two fights he found the ana and took out the ana during the fight and mm -hmm. that really could have been the full difference in the series but man what an incredible series. I'm so glad once again we've gotten to cast some great know, games today, I know. Sam. Listen, if you're Kennesaw, you got to go home with your head held high. Oh, what absolutely. A, what a series, man. What a series. Like, that was one or two fights away in both maps. And we could be looking at a 2-0 from Kennesaw. We absolutely could. Like, like, that's how close I felt like those teams were. This is why the final group of teams that we have left are just so stacked. I cannot wait for the finals of the loser's bracket and then the grand finals, which we'll be casting a little bit later. Oh, yeah, dude. I, I, yeah, oh, yeah. Listen, there's a reason we're on top, baby, because we're going to be running the Midwest and the collegiate esports e here soon. Uh, well, dude, I, Blake, uh, I've watched a lot of Overwatch, but Blake and I, Blake and I are the kind of, oh, excuse me, Blake and I are the kind of guys who, like, if everyone's going out somewhere, we will be in a corner watching Overwatch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And absolutely no regret with doing that either, because who wants to talk to people when you can watch Overwatch League? I chose to watch Overwatch League, and I don't regret the decision. Um, that, the matches today have been some of the better matches I've seen, like, you know, in a long time. Th th these 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 have been amazing, right? All around the board, and we're we're incredibly lucky to be hosting these games here. Absolutely, and as you said, you said earlier uh, in the map, and I really appreciate it. It's all six versus all six. Yeah, all six versus all six, and obviously we've seen some absolute pops off as Ashton, as we said, mm -hmm. Kez, like Woes and stuff like that, or Wads. Like we've seen pop up zones from all, and I'm obviously leaving out a lot of the other pop up zones from everybody else. There's going to be great clips for anyone that wants to clip that. There's going to be mm -hmm. great clips for literally yeah. any player there. So. Uh, what do you think, though, was the Razor difference, let's say at least on Gibraltar, because you could maybe say, well, they came out, they tried to counter comp, they were wrong, which eventually made, eventually made them lose on Li Zhang. But what do you think eventually made Grandview win over Kennesaw? Oh, man. I mean, it's tough. We do have Ohio State versus Grandview coming up next. But uh, I, I think it was just Ashton. Like, I, I think where the fights were happening, Ashton did a great job of actually capitalizing. Like, I don't think anyone played poorly. I really I don't. don't think I, I, I think everyone no. made incredible plays. I'd have to honestly, for the first time in a long time, I can't look at one thing of that game and be like, "This is why you lost." Absolutely, and that's what you love. Like it, it's it's kind of sad when it's too simple, or it's just amazing where you're like, "Wow, Fleta killed eighty percent of the people." Mm, it's yeah. like so, but a lot of times, like, well, yeah, that was the reason, you yeah. know. But like, 
I truly feel like that. I feel like I would need the, the codes mm. and to look at them in a true VOD format I, I, to I tell you what were the actual reasons, the minute reasons. It was fight the tempo. Have taken the victory. I think it was fight tempo. I think where I think Kennesaw was taking the fights very well at the start, and then I think Grandview really figured out on their on their last like that. They were one second away from losing that map. Yeah, they barely capped. So yeah, I think we are probably headed to break here though uh, to get dividing everybody else back in here to cast the next game. Absolutely. And then Blake and I will be back for the grand finals. So what what a match! I, I need some water. I need to decompress after that. I'm sweating. I'm I'm hyped. I'm I'm amped up for this this the the uh, losers bracket finals. And then the grand finals. If these are the games that we've seen, we're in for a treat. So we're gonna yeah. head to break. Thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for some of the best Overwatch that you'll be able to see leading up to Overwatch League. See you guys. There are moments wow, when doors of opportunity Boy, open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do.
Averly Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from, both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students. So we wanna ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from college. So with First Generation Student Services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it. Why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day. And I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful if you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes, you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy right in the classroom and all of us have a common goal of winning football games and so to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us on the flip side like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives so they are also very uh, appreciative and understand so i mean all around they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible which uh, we're very thankful for I think the most rewarding part is probably going to be at the end of this when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is going to help us when we don't have football anymore.
How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It's really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington, and you don't know UK until you're here. Something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it. 
Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world. Like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations. The people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. We Moments are back. Oh my goodness, I am so excited. We are down to our final two matches dividing. I, like I said, I'm so excited. I can't wait. So this is going to decide who goes on to the finals and who is going to get the bronze medal. We got Grandview and Ohio State playing and this should be pretty tight. It's going to be an incredibly tight game between these two all-star squads. They have been rolling their way through the winner's bracket until, of course, they met up with one Converse Esports. Uh, both of these teams ended up following them at some point in their winner's bracket run, but have made their way back over to the loser's finals, and the only thing stopping them from a chance at revenge is each other exactly and like we said earlier where losers become winners just because you went down to that losers bracket doesn't mean that you're out and like I said we're at the final point here so like both these teams lost to Converse but both these teams have looked so good Grandview yeah. it was starting to be a nail biter with Kennesaw I didn't know how that one was going to go playing with the emotions but the diva bomb self-destruct by Grandview so, so good. cheeky able to stall so, mm -hmm. but yeah. They are such a good overall team. Uh, of course, got to give a shout out to Ashton, their tracer player, their hit scan player. It has been super, super good. And hey, uh, speaking of what's on our screen right now, uh, by, of course, making it to uh, this point, these teams have given themselves third place. At the very least, they'll be uh, giving themselves, uh, I believe that's six of the HyperX mice. Uh, for the third place winner, but both these teams are going to be looking to upgrade to those headsets that were also up there. Uh, that's going to be the second place prize. And then, of course, the ultimate prize, the $900 pool that's going to the first place winner. Uh, both these teams are going to have to go through Converse to get their hands on that. But, of course, first they've got to uh, look at the present and the game that they're going through right now. i got to ask you, Dividing, where can we get that $900? <laughs> Where's that at? Is there another separate, you know? Maybe well, in the corner you know, maybe if we maybe if we begged enough companies for enough time, they would give us some money. Can we get sponsored by HyperX also? Like, like as a like as a person yes, sponsored exactly. by HyperX? Just, yeah. Uh, I think if we stream a bunch, maybe. <laughs> okay, I like it. I like it. If we street, you can get sponsored that way. Uh, I would, I would like it if uh, companies would sponsor me just for existing. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't think I'm quite that interesting. Okay, as you smile now into the camera, sponsor us. <laughs> so sponsor, be... sponsor us indeed. <laughs> so just like the format has been the whole entire tournament, two out of three. And then when we get to the finals next round, whoever makes it best three out of five, finally the change. But as always, we are starting on the control point. I love control maps. They are oh, yeah. so good. You get a lot of action, a lot of this and that. Li Zhong, environmental kills, I should say. Quite mm -hmm. your favorite. And I love uh, control maps to start off the series because I think 
the Overwatch team does a really good job at varying the map types, uh, the sub-maps of Control. Uh, it allows you to uh, get a large uh, range of different comps that can work. You get a nice feeling of the kinds of compositions that both teams like to run. Of course, when we watched this Ohio State team before, they seem to favor the close-range brawly compositions. They seem to like that a lot. Uh, Grand View, I feel, is a little more well-rounded. I didn't seem like, like when we watched them versus Kennesaw, we were in the arena watching them uh there wasn't there didn't seem to be like a single composition that was like this was the one that they like above all else um i think i mean they they did some divey compositions a lot but i think i saw them uh be pretty well rounded yeah and like we said uh with ohio state they seem to struggle uh you know, they have to be in control. Both teams have to be in control. As soon as they don't, they start to struggle. But I saw Ohio State was, you know, when they were trying to mirror match some comps that they're not comfortable. The biggest thing is you got to – sometimes you have to be comfortable. You yeah. Know, sacrifice, like, you know, mirror matching for comfortability. you got to be comfortable in what you're doing, confident. Because at this point – you know, like we say, in the 2-3, you're down 0-1. Mm -hmm. Then you're already on the chopping block. And uh -huh. this is the biggest pressure right here. No pressure, players. But, you know, <laughs> just uh, this decides bronze and silver and or the silver and gold. So it's, yeah. it's a big deal. It's a very big deal. I'm a, I'm a very big proponent of play what you're good at, even if it's not necessarily the meta. I've said it a billion times before, and I will say it again. Uh, you could win by playing off-meta things. Uh Unless you're playing in the Overwatch League, uh, <laughs> you can you can make it work if you're good enough at it and you are confident enough in the heroes that you're playing and how they work together. So uh, I'll be really interested to see if both teams decide to bring out some crazy pocket strategies. Based on what I've seen so far today, feels unlikely. They seem to stay pretty traditional in the types of compositions that they play, uh, but... When we're in a uh, three, when we're in a losers final situation, uh, and things are getting really, really intense, might be time to pull out all the stops. Exactly. I hope to pirate ship. Look, I just like pirate <laughs> ship. Okay. Why? It was working. It's, it's the one it's, time we saw it. it the, the whole team gets on the cart and they stand still until they're <laughs> until they're forced off. I get that it's funny. But I don't know if I'd want to get it every game. Yeah, that's true. I understand. <laughs> it's just something when you're, like, pinned against the wall, you just pull out of your back pocket. Hey, look, pirate ship. Yeah. <laughs> so. No, I think if you're going to go pirate ship, you got to go all in on it, right? Because you got you got to set up the Torb Yorn turret as well, uh, figure out how to completely encase the Bastion in the shields. Uh, whether that's, like, you got, like, an Orisa put one in the front, and then you got uh, the Rhine shield in the back, right? It makes, like, a turtle shell for the Bastion. <laughs> uh, that is my favorite kind of pirate ship because it's just so crazy and over the top. Remember when Bastion used to have a shield? Oh my gosh, do not <laughs> Does anybody remember me. that? Type that in chat right now if you remember <gasps> the uh, Bastion with the shield. That's some Overwatch beta stuff right there. Oh man, that is that takes me all the way back to 2016. Crazy that Overwatch has been out that long, by the way. Six years coming up. That's insane. Because we are about at the anniversary right now. Um, so six years. That's a long time. We are uh, about to, and it's crazy because we're about to get into beta mode again. It's super, super crazy how the, the cycle continues, I guess. And now uh, we, we're getting pretty close on uh, getting our hands on a uh, what they're promising is, well, not an entirely new game, right? But a redesigned game. Exactly. The 5v5 will be interesting. And then I hear Doomfist being a tank question mark. Yeah, I've heard that as well. I'm not, uh, I'm pretty sure that's right. I think. I yeah. Think so they're reworking they're it. Rework, they're right? reworking it. So, yeah. So, uh, DPS are going to have Sojourn to play with. Tanks will be able to play and figure out Doomfist and supports. We'll keep doing support things. So, as I'm looking over, I'm hoping Li Zhong Tower. One yeah. Of my personal it's favorite. looking like. It's a Lucio safe haven, booping people left and right <laughs> off the bridges and off the side of Night Market. That's always awesome to see. Li, Li Zhong is like, 
I will almost want to say the default control map. It seems like the control map that the most teams seem the most comfortable with, and therefore we see it the most often. And for good reason. I think Li Zhang is a really nice balanced control map where uh, there isn't anything super crazy with the map geometry that uh, really forces things uh, into uh, either short range or long range. And uh, no matter what... Uh, kind of comp you're most comfortable with one of these you can you can probably win with it right because uh gardens opens itself up more to dive and poke comps uh control center opens itself more to brawl and rush comps and then night market you could go in between you could pretty much run whatever exactly that sim strat up on top of the window jumping in that's always awesome that was the worst of playing comp. You, ever, <laughs> you just you're sitting there playing quick play, trying to have a good time, and then mm -hmm. somebody jumps a sim wall. You know, or they they sim teleport up top at the window, and then you just get rolled over if you're not ready for it. But of course, these teams are ready for something like that. These are super talented teams. I feel like we gotta be laying that up at this point. These are both teams that I think could very easily have been. I know Grandview made it to top 16 in the Overwatch Collegiate Cup. I don't think Ohio State quite made it. I think they had a particularly difficult group to try and get out of to make it to those playoffs. So I think they just ended up missing out. But uh, this team absolutely has the potential and has the uh, uh, ability to be at that level and here we go ladies and gentlemen losers finals best of three winner moves on to face converse in a grand finals best of five matchup we're gonna start things off on lijong tower night market Night Market, one of the favorite maps, like you said, a very versatile map, you know, it's uh, one of those you can play a lot of hybrid comps, and um, it's just one of those that's just, uh, it's there, everybody likes it, <laughs> yeah, what we saw actually on this map was yeah. that triple boop off to the side, and then we saw some really big plays happening earlier in the tournament, so a lot of good yeah. stuff coming out of this map. I mean, instantly you start to see kind of the difference in uh, composition mindset coming out from both of these teams. Ohio State is probably going to end up going, probably going to uh, settle on to a Reinhardt-based composition, uh, play that brawl, and Grandview is going to be going for a Wrecking Ball-based composition, sort of a long-range poke disruption-based comp with Max going in, getting those uh, roll-throughs and, and and uh, pile drives, and uh, we end up getting paused as soon as the doors are open. So, uh, we got a little bit more time to talk <laughs> about it. But, I think this is a really good, this is going to be a really good matchup to start off, to see how, what I think is going to be OSU's stronger comps, and uh, Grandview's stronger comps, how they uh, sort of interact with each other, and how they'll initially stack up. Well, exactly, like we've been saying, I mean, these teams have lost one time, that is it. And they get all the way to this point, so you know they're going to be... It's either you're undefeated or you only lost one time so <laughs> far that everybody that's left. So really good stuff. Um, we are down to the top three. The top three. So sorry about the pause. Hopefully you like us. I, you know, I think we're still styling. We got, you know, we're still the, styling. The Hawaiian shirts, I think they're pretty good. I still like them. So yeah, what do you uh, what do you expect to see coming out? Because you said the hybrid comps. What, what would you expect to see coming out the gate here? on this one well i think i'd expect to see the comps that we're currently seeing out the <laughs> gates yeah, that's, that's fair <laughs> okay uh we got a bit of a uh bit of an audio issue coming out from one of the players they're gonna go ahead and restart to make sure that everything is all set up and ready to go uh we're gonna uh, get that person back in and then restart the game shortly but we know the problem should be an easy fix we'll be getting into it soon but I will say, going back, uh, I do want to thank everybody that's made everything possible. HyperX for sponsoring everybody at the University of Kentucky, the technical team, all the teams coming out here. I wish everybody the best of luck, safe travels, and I appreciate everything they've done. So yeah. this is a crazy it's... experience. I'm glad that I got another Ohio guy with me. Heck yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, ton, it's a ton of fun to be in a LAN environment. I've been I've been casting for, I want to say, a little over a year now. This is only my second time doing a LAN, and I love it every single time. Uh, LANs, can't, you cannot replicate the energy that you get when you are in the building with all the teams. All the teams are together. Everyone's talking and interacting and, and, and making friends, and it's... Just so, so cool to be in an environment like this. Exactly. And one of my favorites is going to OhioCon, one of the conventions that they have in Columbus. And I love playing to that, the land, everybody getting excited. It's just <laughs> it's just great. Like like we talked about with yeah. 
COVID, it hasn't been a possibility, but now we've been able to get back in person, do things, and uh, yeah, just feel feel normal. But mm-hmm. here we go, finally, going back to Lijong. Now I think we're starting. I think we're going to be getting into it here. Uh, I think this time around, we're actually, so they restarted the map. This time, we're actually going to be starting out on Control Center. So I wouldn't be surprised to see both teams in this case decide to go for the Reinhardt-based composition. Uh, I'm sure that's what Ohio State's going to do. We'll see what Grandview uh, decides here. Uh, But if they opt into the mirror instantly, I'm thinking uh, that... Uh, Ohio State has the advantage because that seems to be their bread and butter and what they really, really love to play. Uh, that being said, a slight little uh, misdirect here. Opia is going to be going on to the Sigma instead of the Rein- instead of the Diva on the other side from Parker. So uh, you have kind of a second shield that you could maybe set up on a bit of an off angle. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked to see Opia and Noah go a little bit uh, apart from the rest of the team and just try and lob in those grenades from the side. So there we go, the sim turd, both teams already going up to the central part of the map, trying to find this early fight, looking for something, a grab with a sticky bomb, able to find that kill already, opening up the fight for Ohio State, and that's already going to create problems for Grandview. Yeah, Grandview is in trouble instantly. It seems like maybe the more consistent front range ability of the D.Va might be uh, giving Ohio State a bit more of an advantage here, especially with Max going down. After you lose your Reinhardt, your main shield, the fight is basically over. OSU is going to take first point control and start moving forward, try to take some of that extra space that they're going to be able to get. Oh, but Eski going down means you don't have the speed boost. You actually can't push up anymore. Look at this dangerous amplification Matrix got for Ohio State and the Junkrat. That's a dangerous combo. Look at all the damage. Immortality able to keep them up. Both MOs down. And now Ohio State on the move. But look at this graphitic flux by Opia trying to find the kills. Able to get one. And this is opening it up for Grandview. And now Noah jumping on that kill feed. They're going to be able to flip this and clean the fight. Nicely done for Grandview. Very clean engagements, and that's what this uh, mirror is all about. It's all about getting in quickly, using your ultimates to engage before the other team does. The team that generally sets the tempo is the one that wins these close-range engagements. And now Grandview, look at them push forward right up into Ohio State's base right now. They have so many ultimates to work with. And look at that teleporter being destroyed instantly. There's a shatter coming in from the side of Grandview, able to pick up some kills, cleaning this fight. And this is not looking good, but Lava all of a sudden getting a three-man, and now Parker joining on the play. Ohio State able actually to flip this. It's looking like Ohio State, well, oh, it's still kind of a bit of a grind on the point right now. Grandview are going to be able to keep on to it at the moment. Noah trying to get into the back with that rip tire. The rip tires actually collide with each other. That's kind of crazy. I don't know if I've seen that one before, uh, but Parker over the top is going to take Noah out. That's going to instantly give Ohio State a really big advantage when it comes to the damage, but Ashen is really charged up and ready to go melting down those tanks and grand view they hold on to the point throughout that entire fight tie guy ohio state used so many ultimates to try and get into that one and it ends up failing grand view now at 70 percent and counting this could be ohio state's last really good chance at a fight yeah, and I mean, Ohio State's only got really about shatter right now. They don't have many other options. But look at Ohio State, the aggression here. Grab, able to get the kill. Now Parker, Ashton with that Symmetra turret, able to find the kills. But right now, Ohio State keeping this aggression, keeping everything in momentum. And like we said, that is so key. But look at this, as we're saying that Opie and Ashton picking up more kills and Noah finishing off. So just when I thought Ohio State had it, Grandview stays in control. And at this point, I don't know if Ohio State's even going to get another chance. 96% and counting. They're trying to get a touch, but no one's going to make it. And Grand View, what an opening from them. Taking it to Ohio State on the composition that I thought was their strongest composition and beating them at it pretty handedly. Yeah, definitely shocking. When Ohio State came out, they got that early pick, the Junkrat pick, and then I thought, you know, hey, 
they seemed to just be rolling with it. But then after that, Grandview took in control, and they just held it and just stuck with it the whole way. But here's your favorite map coming up here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I, I love gardens. It's super, super, it's super pretty, first of all. Also really, really open, really. Uh, you get to see a ton of different kinds, kinds of compositions onto this one, whether it's the poke, whether it's the dive, whether it's, like Grandview's doing right now, the brawl, just uh, using the Symmetra Teleporter to get straight to point. So, again, here's what we're going to see here. Grandview's going to use the Symmetra Teleporter. They're on point now. Ohio State, it's on them to try to figure out when and how to engage onto Grandview. Who can they ca try and separate from the rest of their team, potentially with Grab getting a, a hack, and then engage on them? And we see that Ohio State had great patience earlier, but they're going to have to really bring that patience. Oh. Vanilla with the fist onto performance. Oh, Grandview already starting clean into this fight. And Ohio State's really going to have to back up here. Don't have a choice. And Grandview's going to be able to get that point, stay in control. That Symmetra is working quite well for him right now. Yeah, just being able to take first control of the point. And Noah is, well... Uh, well, I was going to sing Noah's praises there because was doing a fantastic job uh, being accurate with those punches and getting those one shots. But now, without your Doom Fist in the fight, uh, you're kind of in a situation. Uh, Grandview's kind of awkward right now. It's going to take Noah a little while to get back. So you're potentially fighting a 5v6. And Immortality comes out from the side of Grandview trying to keep up Max. But Noah once again with the fist getting another. And Max pushing off a Hesky there. It's usually the opposite, <laughs> but look at Grandview cleaning this fight up. 35% already. Doomfist is such a high-risk, high-reward character. You either get uh, a one one-shot pick with Doomfist, or you jump in, use all your abilities, get nothing, and then you're just a sitting duck. Noah has <laughs> been using this character to its fullest right now, helping Grandview get the opening picks. And now they're going to have just about every ultimate except for Amplification Matrix coming up in this next fight. So look at this. Got to watch out for Noah in the white room here. They're sneaking. But Lava with the two and actually three with the fire strike. Lava with the four. The charge. Unbelievable. Look at Lava go. Oh five, my man. gosh. Can we get the Let him get it. Let him get it. Itself? Let him get it. Yeah! <laughs> I can't believe that that actually happened. Lava with the team kill. Grandview. <laughs> Man. Oh, 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 I should say Ohio State. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I got so excited. I mean, it was a great <laughs> early EMP from Grab to open things up for OSU. They were able to use that really quickly. And now Lava is able to show what they earned because of that team kill. Gets a shatter, knocks a few on their backs, and followed up with the death blossom from Performance Ohio State. They're going to keep on hanging on to this one. Uh, really efficient fight there. Team kill for them. And they're still going to have Diva Bomb beat probably Cole essence as well it's a very high charging ultimate by the way lava halfway up to another uh shatter uh <laughs> as absolutely farming them right now grand view are kind of uh stuck here looking for what to do and look at that self-destruct coming out and the pin trying to get that combo not able to find it a beautiful block there now esky getting the boot kill onto ashton and ohio state staying strong and in charge and nami accidentally just slips on a banana peel goes off the ledge opia getting the kill now there's a beautiful shatter but it's not able to connect too much but finally Grandview able to get back control at this point just got to clean it up I just feel like maybe Lava got a little bit too overconfident there the just jumping in to the entire team pretty much by yourself and pinning if you've gotten a kill off of that great but the problem is if you don't get a kill then now you're 600 health worth of ult charge of the other team so uh, ohio state end up losing out on this one and now they are in dire straits one more fight could give grandview the lijong win but they do have the coalescence they have the shatter but they lose grab early grab was going to get the emp oh that is quite unfortunate that coalescence still coming from the side of Ohio State, looking to do a lot of damage. Noah still keeping him up onto performance. Now Ashton, d and Parker, Ashton, the Symmetra's too much. And just when I thought Ohio State was going to be able to do this, Grandview staying in charge, and they are going to take map one. Losing grab early in that last fight was absolutely brutal for OSU. Grab was... 
I think 85% of the way the EMP was surely going to get it in that fight. That was their main initiator, their main way to shut down the Ohio State, uh, sorry, yeah, their main way to shut down the Grandview defense and make it so that they could safely get the space to get onto the point. Win. <laughs> Grab got taken out early. Oh my goodness. I mean, I think Grandview pretty much won the fight right then and there. So, all of a sudden, uh, Ohio State was the team that we saw take a map off of Converse, take it to map three. But Grandview seems to be the team that really wants to get that revenge match with Converse coming up. And sometimes at the end of the day, it's whoever wants it more. And we saw that between Kennesaw and Grandview. Grandview wanted it just a little bit more and pushed even hard. Even though Kennesaw put up a good fight, Grandview just wanted it a little bit more. But we are on to the second map. On Gibraltar. to Watch Point Gibraltar. This is actually a really interesting pick for me. I believe this is the uh, Ohio State pick. Uh, and that tells me that they're actually going to be kind of getting off of the brawl this time around. And I don't blame them. I think that uh, Grandview kind of played the brawl into Ohio State on those first two, uh, first two Lijong matches. And they it went back and forth, but they ended up coming out on top. I guess in my time watching Ohio State today, it feels like Brawl has been kind of their bread and butter. So now that they're trying to go back onto maybe the double shield or maybe a dive, can they run it at the same level of proficiency? That is, or, well, you know what? They don't need to necessarily run at the same level of proficiency. They just need to run it better than Grandview, right? <laughs> so uh, that is, uh, so that's kind of what Ohio State is betting on right now. So, yeah, and like I said, I think, do you think this is kind of more like the uh, last-ditch effort? You know, they feel like they have to be the back against the wall, so they got to eh. try something new, or? Do I don't think? think so. I mean, I think uh, we've been seeing teams go to Gibraltar all day, uh, so this could very well just be a comfort team. That, that, you know, you've played Gibraltar a lot today. You uh, want to just keep on the same maps and make sure that you are uh, still, uh, still, you know, just staying comfortable and staying in the zone. Uh, that being said, we did just see Grandview get an insane Gibraltar win over Kennesaw in the game before this one, uh, where they had a crazy good uh, overtime push with a minute left on the clock. Do you really want to take Grandview University back to the map where that just happened? I don't know. Uh, OSU better have something crazy up their sleeves for this map, because as it is, uh, Grandview is looking like the Gibraltar Kings right now. Yeah, I mean, they really did the impossible. It was a push in overtime, just getting the first point, and then they took it almost all the way down to that second point and did such a good job. I mean, that's tough, especially in a tournament. Imagine yeah. that. It's easy doing it in quick play or comp game, but in a LAN, that is insane. So I expect this to be real close, and I expect, once again, whoever controls that, that mm -hmm. uh, sky, I should say, as you see Granville going with that Echo yeah, pick. interestingly, so uh, Ohio State's going to be moving with the uh, ash based composition. So you've got Grab on the Tracer trying to make things difficult for the people on the ground, and uh, Grandview are going to be going a little bit more in the air. Uh, dub also double bubble uh, from OPL going with Azaria instead of Parker on the uh, Diva for Ohio State. So I think Ohio State is going for an overall uh, quicker uh, composition, uh, while Grandview are going with something that that's a little bit more, a little bit uh, slower overall, but uh, they have a ton of damage if you let it build up, especially with Noah winning the duel with performance. That's a great way to open it up. That's exactly what they need. But look at Grandview using the utility, spreading them out thin, and they're now demecking Parker. And this is looking good to good, but look at Noah, the headshot up to grab. Noah is in charge of this right now. The cart keeps moving, 313 on the clock, and Grandview entering with a grand you know, performance in this second round. Oh man, Noah is just doing so much spam damage here in this teeny little uh, side room right now. And Grandview is just going to push through to the end of point A with no resistance whatsoever. Ohio State, they've got to figure something out quick. But 
we've got the staggers. A couple of people got the bad spawn, and so Esk is going to get taken out first, and Ohio State's going to have to fall back really, really fast in order to try and regroup here. You lose Nami as well. Every stagger <laughs> that Grandview gets here is just delaying the amount of time that Ohio State can put together an actual six-man fight. By the time they get everyone up, yeah, they have all six ultimates, but you have already let Grandview get halfway to point B. Yeah, and as you're saying that, they just kept staggering and staggering and staggering. So we see this. Look at Grandview controlling the door, the Nano coming out here, looking to do a lot of damage. And so far, they're just pushing them out. Ohio State not able to enter back in there, looking for a big ult, self-destruct out, trying to find it, and just really canceling the copycat here. So not really much going on, but the good thing is that cart keeps moving. Yeah, it is moving the entire time. Ohio State just has not been able to touch it, and Grandview are dumping everything they have into this one. They want to secure point B right here, right now, and I don't see why they're not just going to be able to do it. Grandview has been moving through Gibraltar at a blazing fast speed. They have 5 minutes and 40 seconds to complete the map. That is almost unheard of. 5.30, I don't think I've ever seen that. But look, they're still doing it. The bad spawns catching Lava and Parker and Performance there. This is not good. Ohio State has no time to set up, and the old economy is not rich at look all at, in their favor. Look at Noah just trying to get hot shots onto Ohio State from spawn. Lava's looking around going, where the heck are they? Oh, are you behind this pirate, this, this, this uh, pirate ship, this spaceship? Nope, nope, not there. Uh, and it just wastes Ohio State's time. They're already crossing the final quarter. This is insane. Five minutes in that coalescence. Or not coalescence. <laughs> My bad. That was off. But performance getting the headshot there. Now Ashton equaling his fight. Rallies out. Nano's out. A lot of hooks being used right now. And it looks like Grandview's just trying to keep pushing. And they are doing such a good job. But grab with the post bomb onto Lion. Ohio State still trying to stay into this. And so far they're doing a good job. Grandview still in it despite Ohio State's efforts and it looks like Primal's getting ready to come out here for Max as they oh, push it back no. but there's a pulse bomb for Grandview alone and now Bob is out this is insane and the kills are coming for Grandview there's the Primal three kills they're up in this fight but it is the question is, can Ohio State stall this? Ohio State used all of their ultimates so early on in that fight, and Grandview have been staggering them out, and that allows them to push through to the end. Grandview have just finished Gibraltar with four minutes and nine seconds. That is nuts. I I'm stunned. I know you can't see my face right now. I'm absolutely shocked. I, I cannot <laughs> believe what I'm seeing right now. This is not what we were expecting. No. This is not an easy ask. It is possible. Anything's possible. You never know okay. what you're going to get in Overwatch. At this, point, at this point, if I'm OSU, I'm just thinking, okay, let's just finish the map and get it to extra rounds, right? Don't, don't even worry about the time bank. You got to get to the end of the map in order to extend the game a little bit further. And even if it's one minute to five minutes... If you have a shot, who knows how far you're going to be able to take it. OSU cannot get discouraged here. They have to stay focused in order to get themselves all the way to the end. Because if Grandview is able to stop OSU from finishing the map, that's it. We're done here. It's going to be Grandview versus Converse in the Grand Finals. Yeah, exactly. And then sadly, we'll be done. I, look, I like the third map. Can we please get a fourth map? We need Ohio State to step up here. Uh, we always like bonus Overwatch, as I always say. So 15 seconds before we go here. But we do know that Gibraltar mm -hmm. is the straight of Gibraltar. We do know that now. So I'm, yeah. I'm proud to say that. We, do. we learned today, <laughs> chat. We got, we got some geography lessons. You know, I appreciate everyone at the very beginning of the day who let me know where Gibraltar is. Uh, thank you for teaching me. I appreciate it. As I appreciate, I always appreciate the camera work also by bringing it out there. So Noah, look at this already. Grandview jumping on top, causing Ohio State just to rethink about this push. And Noah getting the kill on the lava as well. So, I mean, despite Ohio State getting a kill, it just seems like Grandview has their number across the board. Yeah, it is going to be really tough here for OSU. You've got to get a lot more out of your DPS right now. Performance and Grab have been trying their best, but uh, you've got to be able to put these DPS in the position to succeed. Try to uh, counter Noah a little bit in the air because he's been running amok throughout this map so far. 
So Ohio State just trying to keep him off the high ground, doing a good job. Look at that anti. Beautiful. Beautiful anti. Love of finding the kill. And look at that, sending him flying. Max went oh my flying gosh. across the screen. That was insane. Lava finding the kills. And when Lava's in charge, the three man. Is there anything this man cannot do? Well, uh, one of those things that Lava can do is get a Primal Rage. Uh, already 95% is going to be able to get it right here. He's actually going to let it go in this little room. Try and confirm the kills onto the Brigitte and the Zarya. And they are going to get it. With those staggers, there's almost no way that Grandview are going to try and contest this. Uh, Ohio State are going to be able to roll to the end of point A basically as fast as Grandview did on their attack. What a beautiful start for Ohio State to try and get some momentum back onto their side. That being said, actually, I think Grandview are going to try and contest this for as long as they can. They're using the duplicate. They're using the uh, pro they're using the nano boost. They're using the rally. Grandview, while Dow members are putting in absolutely everything to try and win this. Might as well, and the kills are coming in. Ashton getting a kill, but the kills are coming in for Ohio State. But as I said, there's the pulse bomb and a few more. Everybody's oh. up in this kill feed, and Grandview is still stalling this cart. Ohio State trying to look for answers at all. And it doesn't look like Ohio State's going to be able to get this now. We're trying to find the uh, <laughs> the fight on the cart here. We're just doing a little bit of a dance in the server room here. That cart ain't moving. It's still 0 0.57. It's so close, wow. but yet so far. And as I say, at 0 0.01. Actually crazy. I mean, you just got to get a grand view to step off the point for just the teeniest, tiniest little bit of a second. And you'll get that time extension. But... I mean, Ohio State, they just can't quite deal with the stragglers. They've been up in members for most of this fight, but Grandview have just been sticking in it. They've used all six of their ultimates, and even though they've been down members this whole time and used every ultimate in their time bank, I don't hate this move from Grandview. They're going to lose this one eventually, but look at how much time they took off of Ohio State's clock. Almost a full minute and a half was taken off just by them staggering onto the point for as long as they possibly could and that is what you want if you're Grandview you want to drain the clock for Ohio State but put, start putting more and more pressure on them trying to put them uh, under very uh, significant time constraints that is going to put so much pressure on Ohio State like I say for four minutes you got nothing to lose and Esky getting the kill already this is good Ohio State trying to keep this momentum now Lava jumping in controlling that high ground and they are cleaning house Parker picking up the rest of the kills a three man and 258 so Ohio State keeping that momentum we have ourselves a match right now yeah, they're keeping it up. Actually, Ohio State uh, are going, are poised to get to the end of point B here with very little resistance right now. Once again, Grand View are going to be trying to play a bit of a stall game here. But now I'm not quite as sure about it right now because it feels like Grand View hasn't really had a full fight against Ohio State in a little bit. It feels like it's just been... Uh, these stagger fights is trying to drain time off of the clock. And while it works, they're going to take this point, but they're guaranteed to have a lesser time bank than Grandview if they end up finishing the map. It just feels like at some point, when are you going to just take a second, uh, back up for a bit, and go in as a full six? And I think it definitely crossed the line. And we said Ohio State, you know, just... Uh like Ohio State being patient, you know, Grandview, they also got to be patient as well because at the end of the day, you know, you can't be being way too over aggressive. Otherwise, you're just going to feed and mm -hmm. give it up. So, uh, OSU, they have many ultimates actually to work with here. Everything except for the Primal Rage should be available for them. So, the Bob coming in there looking for that dynamite. Look out, the Primal now coming in for Grandview. Oh, and the kills are coming in left and right. The grab was used by Ohio State. And now the Pulse Bomb able uh, to get the kill by Crab. But Ooh. as I say, that the double Pulse Bomb by Ashton. Now Max joining it and Noah joining in that kill feed. Grandview still in control of this match right now. Ashton is so incredibly clutch. He's been doing it all day for Grandview. When they need someone to get a clutch pickoff, make a key play in a in a key situation it seems like it's almost always ashton that steps up for this team they needed that too ohio state was winning that fight and they very easily could have snowballed that to the end of the map and here we go the nanoed winston going in lava doing damage so much looking for the two trying to find the three esky joining on that kill feed the cart's going to keep moving stalled for a little bit but lava 
keeping that aggression. Now, they are at 220. Yeah. I mean, they're still going to have time, but it's going to be a lot less than what Grandview did. Grandview just can't get desperate here. You have a lot of tools here. You have the grab available from Opia. You're almost up on both of your support ults. You can get back into this one and sustain as long as you don't get staggered and just go in one at a time. Now look at that anti. Antis have been a thing all of the, the whole entire tournament and now the primal coming out but ashton the kills are coming in for grandview as i say that now parker able to shut down max and the grab is out looking to clean up the rest of this fight and grandview little alts being used still have a few in the tank well executed yeah and now at this point uh grandview has at the very least done the job which is to make sure that ohio state has a significantly smaller time bank if and when they complete the map. Uh, they are going to, even if they end up losing this fight and uh, Ohio State finish the map, they're going to have a crazy big advantage in the extra rounds. But Ohio State, they've got to just focus on getting it at all. And they're going to use the nano boost on Lava to try and get them in. But Ashton again with a clutch put stick onto the pulse bomb. But Grav on the other side, both tracers doing whatever they can. This is insane, just a massive tracer duel, and Opia picking up the kill now, so Grandview is still going to hold this. This is leaving Ohio State only to about maybe two fights, but also oh, maybe one no. at this point. Opia. <laughs> oh, man, this is a te teeny tiny bit of BM, of course. Uh, these teams have been playing each other all day long, and this is when it all comes down to it. Ohio State, 40 seconds left on the clock. They have the rally. They've taken out Noah. They have the Bob from performance. This might be the end the opportunity they need. Max running into trouble, going down, and now they're picking up the rest of the kills on Opie and Lion go down. 28 seconds, that card is moving. Ohio State has to make it all the way, or it is game. Can anybody touch for Grandview? Somebody looking, three meters, two. Somebody gets onto that point, stalling it. They're just trying to clean up these kills. Lava finding the kill into Ashton, now Noah. And despite all this effort, Grandview is still there, though. Eight seconds left on the clock. Will Ohio State finish with any time at all? It's looking like, yeah, well, I actually don't know if they have time on the clock or not. They end up with a minute, and my goodness. Uh, so, <laughs> here's the situation that we're in, ladies and gentlemen. We are in extra rounds now. Ohio State, because they had less time, are going to attack first. They're going to have one minute on the clock to get the point as far as they can. Grandview will then have five minutes and six seconds to beat them. If Ohio State can get, uh, can get it further in one minute than Grandview can do in five, then Ohio State will get us to a map three. Otherwise, Grandview will be taking it and going on to the grand finals. One, five minutes to one, I cannot understate how massive of an advantage <laughs> that is. That being said, there is a chance. Five to one, you never know. Look, as long as you're on the card in overtime and you get the kills and push it all the way, it's happened. We've seen it. We literally saw Grandview do it, albeit to a lesser extent, uh, in the game before this one. So uh, we could easily see a very similar situation here. All you've got to do is just get on a little bit of a roll. Just focus on winning two fights in a row. And then once you've run two fights in a row, then win three fights in a row. You know, just try and win as many as you can. It is just pure survival mode right now for Ohio State. Their tournament lives are on the line, and this attack is going to very much determine whether they move on or go home. Yeah, because they really, they lose this fight here, and then they have one other chance, really. That's all they got, and this is so crucial. Trying to find that kill, performance under a lot of pressure. Getting a lot of picks here, looking for it, I should say. Trying to find those picks. 40 seconds on that clock. The clock's ticking, the cart's moving, and they're just, uh, just kind of stalling it out here, really. Yeah, I mean, the more time that Grandview can get off onto the clock before Ohio State really makes any meaningful progress, the better it is for them. Already half of their time bank is gone, but Ohio State is getting a lot of ult charge. Eski and Lava and Performance all getting pretty close to those ultimates. They've got to move up, but Eski goes down. That is one of your main healers. That's so much pressure on Nami. And look at Ashton doing the work, now killing Parker. Ten seconds left. This is do or die for Ohio State. They've really got to come up with something. You got Primal. They do have Primal trying to stall this. The sleep there, beautifully executed. 
And oh, they're in the server room. This could be it. Lava could really zone them out right now, but the rest of Ohio State, you're going to have to start getting kills because eventually, and there's the Nano coming in, as I'm saying that, trying to get there. A nice anti, not able to find the kills, and, uh, and the quite opposite, Ashton now finding the kills for Grandview. So Ashton on to performance there, and Ohio State's got to find something here. The DMAC, oh, this the is grab. not good. The grab oh. from Opia all but ends it. Grandview stop it before they even make it to the end of point A. So this isn't even just a full hold right now. This is like an even better than full hold that Ohio State has to do because they didn't quite make it to the end of point A. And Grandview has more time on the clock than you uh, get by default at the start of the map. They had five minutes. You start the map with four minutes. So uh, this is going to be, I, I don't want to sugarcoat it here. This would be a Herculean a defensive effort from Ohio State if they were to take this map. This would be the greatest defensive effort I have ever seen in a game of Overwatch. <laughs> there, there's nothing that would be better than this. This would be the greatest. Yeah. Nobody could ever beat that ever. So That being said, until we see the game over graphic, there is still a chance. Ohio State are not out of this yet. Uh, they still have to... Uh, Grandview still has to win... I would say probably two fights, right? You have to win one fight at that first corner where uh, the rest of the team is going to be hanging out on those high grounds, uh, trying to poke away at Grandview as they try and sort of uh, get the cart underneath the car wash. And then once you get under the car wash, then you've got to win a battle at that second corner. And once you've rounded that second corner, that's when you have basically won if you're Grandview. So those are kind of the two mini checkpoints that we have going on right now. Grandview coming out the gate using that Symmetra teleporting up top just trying to push and push and take space and that's exactly what they're doing right now a good dynamite there but a good bubble from Max blocking all of that damage still looking for that early pick into this fight yeah Ohio State are playing so conservatively right now playing behind cover trying to force Grandview to come into them but, I mean, Grandview are totally fine with just poking on the outside and look at all the cart progress that's going on right now. They've gotten it underneath the, they've gotten underneath the car wash. And I mean, they win this, this is it. Noah able to get the kill onto performance and now they're running down to their last wire. Nami falls, Parker falls, Lava falls. Somebody's gonna have to touch, but I don't know if it's possible. Grandview, Oh, as I say that, oh, I say incredible. <laughs> oh. oh, and can anybody touch? They can't. Grandview is going to the finals to verse Converse University. And Ohio State A-team will be in third place. Wow. What a match. What a match. I'll be honest, going into this one, uh, all we really had to base these teams off of was their respective matches against Converse, right? Grandview lost 0-2 to Converse, and Ohio State lost 2-1. So my thought was, well, uh, Grandview is probably going to be going out third, right? But they came out and showed that they have the spirit. They want it so incredibly bad. And I think uh, being able to come right off of a win against uh, Kennesaw really helped them. I think they're, they're on the stage. They're really feeling it right now. They have all sorts of momentum, and it really showed in that game. It did. I, I, I really wanted the map three. I thought Ohio State would be a strong, but like you said, momentum, when you're hot, you stay hot, and you just perform. And I mean, mm -hmm. that was one of the best pushes I've ever seen on yeah. Gibraltar. Yeah, I mean, Ashton has gotten a lot of credit as kind of the main clutch pop-off DPS player, but I cannot say enough how this has been a big team effort from Grandview. Every single member of this roster has put together this loser's bracket run, and now they have the opportunity for revenge, being able to play against Converse, who knocked them down to the loser's bracket in the first place with $900 on the line. I mean, what an incredible storyline that is. But really, it's just, you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates, you know? You, just, <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. We thought Grandview and Converse would be closer, then it wasn't. We thought this match would be closer, then it wasn't. And then it's just... You know, maybe the finals could be something different. We don't know what's going to happen. But no matter what, it will be very exciting. You yeah. Know, we're going to have Blake and Sam back in here casting for the finals. So I will say this is the, the last time I'll be casting with you for today, unfortunately. Oh, no. But, uh, 
but yeah, it's it's been fun. Like I said, I got to thank the whole Lexington, you know, the UK campus and the editing and the the software and the tech team yeah. and HyperX and everything. And I got to say, you did you did pretty good today. I really I I think I think we got stronger as we went on, Ty guy. I think this was a super 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 fun event. I think. The, ga the games have been incredible. The production has been incredible. The teams have been incredible. It's been awesome to just walk around and meet everyone throughout the day. And uh, as we've been casting more, I think our chemistry has gotten a lot better. So, uh, so over the course of the day, I think we have gotten only stronger and stronger, which has been a ton of fun, much like potentially Grandview. Exactly. I, like, I see what you did there. I like that. So, like I said, so stay tuned. Do not go anywhere. In just a little bit, we will bring you the finals of Converse University versus Grandview University. We'll see you soon. Woo! There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first-generation students, so we wanna ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from 
college. So with First Generation Student Services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day. And I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful if you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy, right, in the classroom, and all of us have a common goal of winning football games. And so to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us. On the flip side, like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives. So they are also very uh, appreciative and understand. So I mean, all around, they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible, which uh, we're very thankful for. I think the most rewarding part is probably going to be at the end of this when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously, right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is going to help us when we don't have football anymore. How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It's really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington, and you don't know UK until you're here.
something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world, like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations the people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do.
Jane, though, has a four-length lead, a deep stretch to win the Indian Summer. Averly Jane, a two-year-old filly bred in Kentucky by the University of Kentucky. The best days teaching. That is the most fun professionally that I've ever had. Here, we get such a great mix of students. Um, the kids who are coming from both from rural Kentucky, but then also from the more urban areas in Kentucky. They help me learn. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing conversation. They help me to think about both the law and the world in ways that I might not. But to have an organization or a student or whatever to actually recognize the contribution is, is just amazing. The heart of an educational organization is teaching. I mean, that's, that's our goal. This is kind of the validation of all of the work that I put in, and it tells me that to have a great future in teaching is that I need to keep doing it. A quarter to a third um, of our incoming classes are first generation students. So we wanna ensure that we have uh, services that are available to them. There are, I would say there are different obstacles that first generation students do face with the pressure that we put upon ourselves to exceed and be the first in our family to graduate from college. So with first generation student services, we're here to help promote that retention and graduation rates of first generation students at UK. They've offered tutoring when I've needed it, and they've also offered advising, and they were very inviting. It can be like a home away from home so that you don't feel so homesick and you also still have that motivation that your family would give you closer. There's always pressure involved with playing football and there's always pressure involved with going to graduate school. Thankfully, we're, we've done a good job so far of handling it and hopefully it continues that way. It's kind of just like undergrad, you know, going to school and playing football. Obviously, grad school is a little bit, uh, you got to do a little bit more work, but uh, the program here at UK is great and they work with us really well. I like seeing the, the look on people's faces because obviously there's the, the stereotype of, oh, you're just a football player. We really want to take advantage of every opportunity that, that, the, that UK gives us. And I think just being a part of this program is, is just one of the, another one of those opportunities. It's difficult to be pursuing degrees like this at a high level while playing football at a high level. I think it's good for someone to see like, hey, like they can do it, why can't I do it as well, if not better? The UK has been a huge help for us with our football schedule. You know, the MBA people and the people in the business college have been super great. You know, when I got the extra year because of COVID, I thought it'd be a great idea and it's all worked out really well. So far in the MBA, I think these leadership skills and management skills that I learned in that class are going to help me no matter if I'm in a management role or I'm working towards getting to that management role. Ultimately, I'd love to be my own boss one day, and I think it gives you the, the groundwork and whatever you need uh, or whatever business you want to start, it'll help you become successful if you understand the, the key groundwork to becoming your own business. The most challenging part is definitely trying to balance when to focus on football, when to focus on school. It takes you feel like you're getting pulled in all angles at some times, but all of the classmates in, in the program are really helpful and really supportive. And you know, whenever I do, when I do struggle, they're willing to pick me up and help me out. And the same comes with football. We have a support system, you know, both in the classroom and on the field. And we realize that all of us are, are busy, right, in the classroom, and all of us have a common goal of winning football games. And so, to be able to lean on each other when you know things get a little tougher is is really big for us. On the flip side, like the teachers understand just as much how much time we're putting into our football lives. So they are also very uh, appreciative and understand. So I mean, all around, they, they're very supportive and try to do anything that they can to make our lives as easy as possible, which uh, we're very thankful for. I think the most rewarding part is probably gonna be at the end of this, when you get to tack on the three letters to your name on your resume. Obviously right now it's a lot of work and everything, but football doesn't last forever. And so I, I think school is really important and getting this graduate degree is gonna help us when we don't have football anymore.
How's it working out with Benny here at the credit union? Yeah. I'll be right with you, man. My bad. Benny's better at football. We're better at banking. He's working out, in a sense. UK Federal Credit Union. It's banking, only better. My name is Kaylee Bolton, and I won the 2021 Astronaut Scholarship. It was so exciting. Um, it's really for undergraduates and research in the STEM fields. I got to present my own research that I've been doing. I specifically have mostly worked in cancer and brain cancer and um, Ewing sarcoma. It's really rewarding to work in, in the cancer field. It really helped me develop in every sense imaginable. Definitely the mentorship and undergraduate research to me has been one of the most important parts because Doing the research is important, but you also need somebody to guide you. I love learning, and I feel like this university has only made me love it more. You don't know Lexington, and you don't know UK until you're here. Something that's so special about UK is that we give students the opportunities to really thrive. It's so exciting just to be on campus and just be surrounded by all of the good vibes, the insane energy. I think it's just my like home away from home. It's more than just like a college or an institution. Like the people are so amazing. Um, your opportunities are literally endless. I came here my freshman year from almost a thousand miles away and I just felt like I was in a small community and had so many people that I knew. As soon as you step on campus, I really think you get to feel that small school interaction. It's nice that our average class size is 25, but with UK, I found kind of that sense of community and that small school feel. Everywhere that I walk on campus, I see a familiar face or, or people I've had class with or people I've been in the dorms with. The community, one big wildcat family, literally. <laughs> Being downtown, it doesn't feel like you're downtown because um, once you set foot onto campus, you can tell the atmosphere is so different than anything else. I know for some colleges it's kind of spread out, but UK it's all in one area. And it just makes it so enjoyable just to go to class and be able to access all those facilities and makes learning so easy. The residence halls are amazing. No other residence halls on college campuses do you get a tempur mattress, your own room, your bathroom that you share with one other person. You know, a lot of the stuff you kind of see every day when you're driving through campus, you take for granted. There's a lot of really good facilities here, some great people. When you take a step back and look at it, compared to other schools especially, um, it really is pretty unique and pretty special stuff. We have amazing professors all across campus in all different backgrounds, and they push students so hard to reach that potential that they know is achievable because they did it. The reason that the faculty is so important is because at the end of the day you're here to get your degree. So them being there and being supportive and having experience and like maybe doing research at the time, that can only lead to more opportunities for yourself. Each like staff member and like each student, you kind of gain a personal connection with them. Like the connections I've gained with my professors has been awesome. It's really helped me get through classes. You can really tell that they care for you and want you to succeed. There are people I know I can go to uh, with pretty much any problem and they'll help me sort through it. Um, so being able to know you have people here that care about you truly um, is a really, really special thing. Getting involved is probably one of the easiest things that you can do here on UK's campus. Whether you want to get involved like majorly specific or intramural sports, there are just endless, endless things. There's football games, basketball games, going to Keeneland, going to concerts, Campus Ruckus, K-Week. When you're at Rupp Arena in the eruption zone and they roll the tarp out, I don't, I don't think there's a better feeling um, as far as being a part of something. Like you feel like you're a part of something so much bigger. It's, it's amazing. I love it.
Coming to UK was absolutely the right choice and it's really just an amazing place to start your life as an adult and find a place that makes you feel at home. It's just the best experience in the world. Like it's not even just the place, it's the people, it's everyone you meet, everything you go through, everything you encounter. I think it's just the best place ever. This campus has exceeded my expectations. The people that I've met, the friends that I've made, and I think at UK that's something that we shoot for that wildly possible. We're really trying to make your dreams come true every single day. There are moments when doors of opportunity open. Moments when barriers are broken. Moments when you're called to provide hope for someone in need. Moments when you harness something deep inside. Moments when you're drawn to a cause greater than yourself. Moments when champions are born. At the University of Kentucky, this is who we are. This is what we do. Sky, gotta get Max. What do you have? You got High Noon. You got his. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh, dude, high noon. What is going oh on? my god. What is going on? As Kezin kills four with the Noon because the Demo dropped a bomb in his whole team. As Kennesaw flips the point. As the Blizzard gets popped. A rookie oh mistake by the Demo. They bought. She bought oh into High Noon. What is going on, everybody? We are back and ready. For the grand finals. Now, let me tell you, guys, what a freaking day of games we have had. What a, what a day. This has been an amazing event. It's the first Overwatch large event that we've had at the University of Kentucky, and it could not have gone better. I've gotten just amazing feedback from all the teams that we hope to have and amazing events going forward in the future. Man, this has been awesome. Seriously, just been amazing. You, you can't ask for better games than what we've seen today. True. Absolutely. And listen, I, I've seen a lot of Overwatch, as have you, as probably as many people in the audience have seen. It doesn't get much better than this, much more thrilling. This is why we all play the game, right? Because this truly is the upper echelon of how to play Overwatch, how to watch Overwatch, how to enjoy Overwatch. And I'm telling you, like, this is just truly a blessing to have this in my hometown. Like, I know you can appreciate it too. We grew up up the street playing Call of Duty Zombies together, mm -hmm. dreaming big about one day UK maybe doing something like this. And it makes me really happy to see kids from all across the country come here, compete, put their heart and soul on the line, do the best they can. They're out there screaming. I wish you all could hear it from the booth how loud everyone was getting Absolutely. out there. Like the six kids come out the shoes. Like, you know, I, I couldn't help myself. You have to do couldn't it, right? So. so, Blake, what are you looking forward to in this grand finals? Honestly, I just want the level, the same level of competition that honestly every match that we have streamed. Mm -hmm. It's just been elite teams at their very best. And these teams at this point, obviously, they have scrimmed each other. They have played against each other. They have played and ranked against each other. They know each other to the T. I cannot wait for what this Grand Finals has in store. Obviously, this is a rematch from earlier when Grandview played Converse. It was, great. it was a great game back then, and I'm expecting nothing less right now, especially because of how much I feel Grandview has leveled up. Like, I really, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I feel like they've oh, leveled yeah. up through the tournament, gotten better, been more aggressive. And of course, Ashton. Ashton Who could forget this well. man? Absolutely annihilating every team he's played against. He can't be stopped. I wonder if Converse has an answer. I, I, I think it'll be really interesting. I think that it's safe to say Grandview really got into their comfort zone in the past couple of games. Maybe they started off not too comfortable, but as mm -hmm. they got on the stage and they got into their element, you know, I will say they're playing without, one of them is playing without shoes on, walking around with socks. Oh, yeah. yeah I like, saw that. Shoes yeah. on on stage, and I've never seen it. I said, nice socks. He said, gotta let the puppies breathe. <laughs> that was the that's answer? That was that actually was the, the, okay. That was the answer. So listen, we've got a sockless oh, team on stage. We've got quick shots on the other side. This is going to be one heck of a game. 
Absolutely. Right, this is going to be one heck of a game. But again, before we get into it, I just want to say thank you. A huge thank you to every yes. team that showed up. Listen, like we're, we're really happy to put this on for you guys. But most importantly, people are thanking us. We want to thank you. We, we really do. You guys have shown up. You guys have been phenomenal guests. We're so happy and lucky to have you guys. And hopefully next time we'll get to uh, – we'll actually get to – you know, see you again. So we'll see. But going next, right? I think we're going to do some player introductions, walkout style, here in a minute. And listen, I've been hearing big talk about quick shots walkout. I'm not sure what it's going oh, okay. to be, but it better be spectacular. It better be spectacular. It better be spectacular. After the one v one too, better be spectacular. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. We're ready to roll, I believe. So let's uh, cue it to player introductions. Oh, Cam's guy. Gotta get Max. What do you have? You got High Noon. You got his. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh huge High Noon. What is going on? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the UKFCU Esports Theater at the University of Kentucky for UK Esports. Spring 22 Overwatch Community Invitational, sponsored by Gen G. Let's introduce our grand finalists coming from the upper bracket, Converse University. First on the list, Adam L. Gamal, other known as Garchomp from Cairo, Egypt, major writing. Next on the list, Chance Spacuza, otherwise known as Chance from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, major elementary education. Let's go. Third on the list, Trevor Groeschel, otherwise known as Quicks, Falls City, Washington, major business. It's hard to top that one up. Coming in at four, Stephen Galatic, otherwise known as Maxwell, from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania as well, major business. <laughs> Number five, William Lopez, known as Still Kiwi, from Irving, Texas, business major, or major computer science. Sixth on the list, Caleb Chang, otherwise known as Hammer, from Alathe, Kansas. Major is math. And then finally, number seven, David Wadalove is the coach, otherwise known as Wadi, from Marietta, Georgia, major international affairs. Hey, those guys are pretty cool, but how about our lower bracket representatives, the Grandview Vikings? Let's bring them out for you guys. Up first from New York, New York, majoring in biology, it's Maximilian Rodriguez C2, a.k.a. Max. <laughs> up next from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Majoring in business analytics, it is Brady Johnson, a.k.a. Lion8769. <laughs> From Omaha, Nebraska, majoring in marketing, it is Mickey Tvardik, a.k.a. Opia. <laughs> and next up, from St. Cloud, Minnesota, majoring in business management, it is Noah H., a.k.a. Noah. Yeah. F 
from Lawrence, Kansas, majoring in psychology. Welcome to the stage, Drew Rainey, AKA Blue Sandwich. And finally, our last player on the starting rosters, coming in from Alatha, Kansas, it is Ashton Copeland, AKA Ashton, majoring in computer science. Everyone give it up one more time for your grand finals teams, Converse and Grandview. These teams have been fighting all day to get to this point and they're ready to bring you guys a fantastic grand finals match. I cannot wait to watch it along with all of you and to bring us all of the action, please welcome back your casters, Samito and the Grand Central. Well, guys, I mean, you can't ask for anything more than that when it comes to uh, to walkouts. I mean, I, quick shots, literally about to bust out his jacket. That man is, <laughs> yeah. you know, he, he's he's all the way up, you know, just like the montage. I wish we could play the quick shots montage. Oh, that stream, would be so funny, there's dude. There's copyrighted music on that. It's a true masterpiece. So, yeah, listen, I'm ready for some games. I'm I'm listen. This has been. A long day in the making with a ton of insane matches that I have been so blessed to be able to have casted. So to all the viewers out there, thank you all so much for sticking with us all day. This is something that's very new to Kentucky, but we're going to make it last in the long term. So Blake, predictions. What do you think? Honestly, I called it. I was talking to Andy earlier when they were playing Ohio State, and a lot of people thought Ohio Should be the favorites here i honestly do but i will say i believe grandview has leveled up over the tournament i would not be surprised at all if they won in a strong fashion hey real quick look at this man's socks on screen right now hey put some shoes on homie <laughs> <laughs> look at him he's weak back there <laughs> someone stop him someone <laughs> stop him oh my god oh my god but no listen they've been putting on a show i love the energy from grandview and listen I, I never thought I'd bet against quick shots, but Ashton has been having a field day. He has, man. OPR he has. Mazzaria has also been pretty sleeper. I think Grandview has really leveled up. I mean, listen, maybe maybe there's some kind of secret strategy to the no shoes. Oh, you know, maybe so. maybe it's like their their land curse. And I will say, Converse, they're gonna have to warm up a little bit because they've been they haven't played three maps, and Grandview has been in the zone, in the zone, in the zone. So I think, listen, if you're Grandview, you want to close this out soon because if you let those these guys get warmed back up, that might be a problem. You might start to get tired. You know, are are you season one Spitfire that can play like well, how many maps in a row did Spitfire? Uh, could really, they uh, played play so all many all day. Do you have what it takes? And that is why these lands are so much fun. You got to push yourself. You got to prove yourself. And you really feel like you're limit testing as a player. It was a great atmosphere. It's a packed house all freaking day. It's been awesome, man. And I'm just, I, I'm, I'm stoked. And Eric's back. Look at him go. Uh, put the Among Us screen away. Not again. I saw y'all doing that. No, 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 no. Oh, I like the little heart. Hey, listen, we love you guys, too. We love you guys, too. And those Shout out to those Oklahoma guys for actually, man, we still, I need to tell this story real quick. They got here. Their flight was delayed and, like, canceled from Oklahoma to Dallas. So they drove three hours to Dallas I, one of their parents was heckling or like arguing with the flight attendant or the people at the flight booth to get their ticket to actually get in. Oh, look at that handsome man right there. Sheesh! Look at him go. But And so they made their flight by 10 minutes, barely got here, and came and played their hearts out all day. Mad respect to the Oklahoma eSports program. Hey, University of Oklahoma, those kids are warriors. Y'all better hook them up. Seriously. Wake up a little bit. So... Yeah, big shout out to them, and I'm just, man, I'm ready for this game. I, I, I'm still, I can't believe that man has no shoes on on stage. Yeah, absolutely, dude. This is, this is, this is everything I've been waiting for. Honestly, this is everything I've been waiting for. We're going to leave Zhang, and just so the people at home know, every other series between this has been best two out of three. It is now the normal best what you're used five. to, best three out of five. So we I got mean, some games. And that's by the way, three out of five wanted. series can technically go seven. So oh, if you get ties on the right thing, you can go Boston. the distance. Don't remind me of out. Easily the most cursed series <laughs> of Overwatch so League history. Cursed. That was, was so the cursed. most. It was at a homestand. <laughs> it went seven maps. These kids, they, they couldn't win a cough. It but, was I mean, so listen, sad. Oh my gosh. I mean, I, it was, it was something else. But man, I'll tell you what. I'm a, 
I, I've been sweating all day. I've been casting my heart out. And let's just say, listen, I, I know the players are leaving it out on the field. We're going to leave it all out on the field, too. This is what oh, we've been absolutely. waiting for, baby. Listen, I tell you, we're bringing 150%. For these games, I'm I'm cast until my voice cracks and I can't talk no more. Already so, has. Listen, audience, I hope you guys are ready. There's been a lot of banter all day. I've seen a lot of confidence from Converse, so they better walk the walk and make it happen. If that's what they've been saying all day, hey, we're gonna 3-0 everybody. We're gonna get this done. We're gonna do this. All right, boys, big talk. Here's the grand final. Step up and get it done, or go home. Yep. It's that simple. Absolutely. And, and the best part is, this the, they're gonna use the money if they win. To pay for a land to go to in Atlanta. Absolutely. So y'all want to go to the next one? You better earn it. Right? And that's what we're about here. We're about that competitiveness. We want to be the best of what we do. And mad respect to both these teams for grinding it out, making it happen. We'll see. We've had some crazy games on Lee Zhang today. Let's talk that last, that last, oh my, the Kennesaw game? That Are was you kidding me? That incredible. was crazy. I couldn't even talk. They're, they're, I can, I really, really hope in the future, I don't know if I'll ever be able to, but co like cast over Kennesaw again. Oh, like, awesome, like their man. matches, the way they play as a totality of a team. Don't get me wrong, they have pop off players and pop off moments, but they truly feel like a total six man roster. They, they were really special to watch. And speaking of the Oklahoma guys, one of the best matches, if not the best match of the day, in my personal opinion, oh, was yeah. watching them versus Kennesaw. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. So I think we're probably about ready to. Why are the guys talking about Garchomp, can you stop talking about how you love Fortnite and game chat, please? <laughs> like, listen, man, we know you like no build. It's been mad respect to them. It'd be really cool, you know, if another game company we know would do something, remove something from the game that people don't like, you know, hypothetically speaking. Oh, right? my <laughs> God. Um, but, um, yeah, no, we'll see. Uh, he, goes, he goes, sorry, he's got the ski mask back on. <laughs> 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 oh my god yo Garchomp give me a little flex real quick he's Gary. not gonna do it he's just beating his belly like a drum let him do it I suppose I don't know oh yeah <laughs> Oh Man, my god. There is nothing like a land hey, now listen I'm assuming you right now like for anyone who says gamers aren't athletes Look at that man. Yeah, what, what are you talking? Look at this you, specimen. Look at, looking at the same. All story. five yeah. three one seventy five himself. <laughs> are you talking about me? Are you talking about me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> just messing what? With you. Just messing with I'm you. I'm gonna take him to the blue courts, Cats fans. Oh my god! Come on now. Oh yeah, my god. He's goodness. just mad. We grew up in the same neighborhood. Everyone knows they didn't want me in twenty one tips. They didn't. They didn't want me in twenty one tips. No. Regardless. Oh tips, man. Oh, twenty one tips back in the day. You know how it is. Listen, how about the game? What a great game. Basketball court in here too. I'm about to cross these kids up. But no. So we're. I think we got a little bit of technical issues. Um, going on with Converse right now. I think we're waiting on one more. But uh, let's talk a little bit about like what do we expect to see. I think Ashton's been on fire all day. Yes. When, uh, Ashton, like, when, when they've needed he's Ashton, he, he has stepped up to the plate. There right. will be moments that Grandview will have the series on the line. That if Ashton takes it in his hands, he will win. They remind me a lot, uh, not exactly play style wise, but in the way they have an MVP, possibly the MVP of the entire tournament on their team. He got remind me a lot of leave. The pop up on Gibraltar with his, specifically his tracer play, it's been out, absolutely outstanding. Honestly, if we gave out an MVP, would you have another person in mind? Mine, I think, would be Ashton. Up if to this they point, win, Ashton, if yeah. they were, if they won, up As to this point, I think it'd be Ashton. Up here. He's just, I mean, every match they play, you've seen him consistently. Three, four, five K in fights, right? And I, I granted, I mean, the whole lobby's popping off usually, but you know, can, like, I, it's been a long time since you've seen a player like really consistently every single game, and that's the most important thing. That's what people forget. They're like, oh, well, I had these pop off moments, yeah, but I'd rather take the guy that's getting two kills every fight than the guy who gets a six K every three. Exactly. Because, like, again, it's just the consistency is the most important part about Overwatch. And, you know, as, as long as you have that kind of level of consistency, you're going to be able to do well. And, see, I'm worried because they – because Converse had, the, had the, the quick shot strat where, you know, like they have him on Hanzo. Like they can do a little bit of role swapping. Like can quick shots compete with Ashton who's been having a field day with pretty much every team that he's played, you know, all day. And – I think, you know, the, the big issues that Grandview had earlier in the day with, were kind of they, – they let Converse – because this is a rematch from earlier, if I'm not mistaken. It is. It, it is. is. It, and, you know, they let Converse really take the old economy from them. And are they going to let that happen again? And that's going to be the big deciding factor because, you know, I think that – Grandview has done a great job in the past two games of just not letting any other team get that kind of tempo. And they, how they they played Ohio State better right than now, uh, Ohio State better than Converse did. And I thought Ohio State was going to win this whole thing. 
I, I, so, I, they are obviously a very stacked team. Yeah, no, like uh, like one hundred percent. And like this is the this is the kind of moments you live for. Like it makes me want to play again. You know, I can't wait to improve our stage too as time goes on. I just keep making upgrades to this place to keep letting more and more players come and let people play. Keep keep just on their grind. Just get Absolutely. after it day in day out. You know these guys have been grinding in their scrims. You know maybe NA scrim times. You know they always show up a little twenty no. minutes late. You know the usual with uh, NA players. Luckily for mm -hmm. me, I had an EU team when I played in Contenders, so I was like, that's facts actually. So, Sorry about that. Yeah, I mean because listen, they wanted to go to sleep, so the earlier they showed up, the faster they could go to bed. Mm. So maybe we should just start scrimming EU or like Asia times. That's that, yeah, that would really work. Yeah. Right, listen, hey, Bug Boys in the Philippines have to have all, all last week, so maybe that fits his schedule. We play around Bug Boy. I think that was the same sleep schedule that you know made him show up round one. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no no! Oh, man, don't worry about it. <laughs> regardless, right? We're starting Li Zhang. That old economy is very different than any hybrid escort map that we're gonna see. Right? Absolutely. Who, which one of these teams does that favor? I, I think it favors uh, Converse based on how I saw them playing all day. I mean, Converse does a great job of layering I'm really thinking about right? this. They knew exactly which damage boost ultimate to stack and to just cycle them every fight. And Grandview last time didn't do a great job of disrupting that momentum and really cutting them off or engaging first. Like I think I agree with you here. Yeah. I think I agree with you. That's why like you asked me and I stopped and normally like cast are supposed to just continue and say what they think. It's like I really – I don't want to give – a weird answer to you guys that's not correct. I really wanted to think about this. I think in Li Zhang, Converse will have the better like ult cycling and stuff like that. But I really think in the law in the bigger maps, yeah, I think Grandview will actually have it, the same if not better ult ult management. I just think the problem with Li Zhang is it's more rush centric. Yeah, and I do think Converse has a decided advantage in the comp in the rush centric. We talked about it. Kennesaw we thought was uh, at the same tier as as Grandview in the rush mirror on Li Zhang specifically. And they gave up a pretty large ult lead because they baited them into thinking they were gonna play ball in the last play. Yeah. So, and that's actually another interesting point. What will they play? Cause we've seen them play almost all ball, almost all rush. And in almost like not seeming to have a specific reason for it. So, I mean, what, what do you think you'll see relative to Converse for Grandview? Um, it's gonna be hard to take Ashton off Tracer. I won't lie to you. I guard chop that big bomb there too. It like I, I don't know. I will. I will say this. Like I, I Ashton's had a field day on Tracer. He's, his Ash is also good, but I feel like they've won their games in more dominant fashion when they played dive. Yes. But that also might be the opponents they're playing rather than Converse because Converse's back line is super, super solid. Yep. Your front line is also super, super solid. Garchomp does a great job of knowing what angles to tank when and when he needs to do it and why he needs to do it. Like especially with the double shield. Every time he flux, you'd see him about like a 45 degree off angle and peppering that side while they had their one of their DPS either flank with him or take another angle. And all of a sudden you have three angles spraying people from every side and you're just the fight's over before it's even started because the people don't even realize they've been checkmated until it's too late. Right? Do you, were they the team just be really – I want to be making sure I said this before I make my point. Were they the team that played Lucio Mercy? No, it was Oklahoma. Oklahoma the, played Lucio Mercy. Was, okay, it was Oklahoma. Never mind. Never mind. Okay. All right. Yeah, that that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, uh, going forward, a, pr a production. What's our uh, ETA? Or do we do we fix any of the issues? Or is Garchomp still talking about Fortnite? I think Garchomp still is talking about Fortnite. Still in a ski about mask. Fortnite. I think he's about to start default dancing on stage here in a second. Oh my god, um, dude! I hope to God he does not do that. I think that would, be, you know, we'll we'll see. Yeah, land ruined. Land ruined. That's oh, it. Look at him. Look at him. I, I, I th there's no way that kid knows how to do any Fortnite dance. Surely, right? <laughs> All right. All right. Um, well, we'll. Uh, I think we're. Oh, oh. <laughs> he takes the mask off. What a shame. Look at him. Size, shake his head. Glasses on. Zoned in. He's smiling. He knows we're talking about him. Are, Look you, at him. Play <laughs> by, are you doing a play-by-play -play on his actions? <laughs> hey, listen. He always asks me to go to Six Flags. I got to commentate this guy every time I get the chance. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> we'll see. I'm, I'm not quite sure what we're waiting on here, folks. But um, go ahead. Go ahead. I think. A oh, broken mic. There we Mike. go. Okay. Broken, broken microphone. That is a tragic, tragic, tragic event. Maybe we can run and grab him an event or a. Um... Oh yeah, I was yeah I was gonna say we could run to the uh, to the lounge and grab them an extra mic. It should be any minute now though, because luckily that is a pretty easy thing to fix. But yeah, I mean back to um, back to comps. I mean, <sighs> like let's move map by map maps we've seen. Well, we're probably gonna see. I would guess we're probably gonna see Kings Row. 
what do we think about King Joe? We've also seen Gibraltar a lot. Mm-hmm. So maybe Gibraltar first. We've seen Gibraltar a lot. It seems like teams are willing to I mean, I don't it. think do they play Gibraltar? too much double shield unless we go Rialto. Like, I don't... Right. I, like, I, I, the, both of these teams have great ball players, right? I, and either way, the dive enables Ashton. So if you're Grandview, you're okay with playing that. And certain maps, too, depending on the map you pick, you can put Opie on the Zarya, which is pretty good pretty much all day. Yeah. Right? And if you're playing dive on Converse, you have quick shots on ball. So, if that's all you really need to say. Off the map, what? right? Well, unless unless Quick Shots is playing DPS, which we don't even know. Maxwell Tracer has been pretty good all day too. So, like yeah. you know, in, it, in, the, in the mirror, in the, remember that in the uh, Rialto game, they switched um, Hammer and Quick Shots, and Quick Shots played Hanzo, yeah. and Hammer played Tank, and so I think that even worked well for them. It, they're so these teams at depth. this point in time. In 6v6 Overwatch, we have reached the end, right? Yeah. These teams, these players can play basically anything. If you ask them to run comp, they hadn't run. If you ask them to run GOATs right now, they wouldn't be lost. They know what they're doing. Like, they, these are well, like, well put together teams, very sound players individually. So I really think, I, I, as we've seen, it's really map dependent. Like, yeah. they're, they're not like, oh man, we have to force dive on every point. We yeah. have to force double shield. We have to do this. It's like, no, they're flexible enough to truly play everything at a great level while also empowering certain players. So when they were playing double shield, they almost always had Ashton on Tracer still. Yeah. It's like, we're not going to give up something that has gotten us this far though. Yeah. So we'll, we'll make the comp work around this, but we're still going to enable this player in the best way possible. And I think that's actually an important thing that's sometimes lost on some teams. They just feel like they have to meta slave it in and not give their own spin on it. Oh, which could make the difference. Play your strengths. Play your strengths. Co- cooperate Vendetta. Clockwork Vendetta. Uh, I, think, I think that was a very. I'm just saying. Listen, if we played Clockwork back in the day, we would have whooped them. Why? Why you just gotta hey, make strong we, statements like that? No, that it's are just pride. factually it's incorrect. Just pride. We were just better. I don't know about that. They're a legendary meme team. Hey, they, a, no, legendary they are a legendary meme team. team. No disrespect to Clockwork Vendetta, but bigger listen, meme team. I, goats I'm, I'm or taking Clockwork Song Shaker any day of the week. That's my man. Clo- better, bigger meme team. Goats or Clockwork Vendetta. Bigger meme team. I mean, like, Goats, like five Goats, years down the line. But Goats was a way better team. Are you kidding me? No there meme. meme team? No, no, no. Better meme. Oh, the Clockwork was a better meme. Goats. The Goats team, like all, all of those guys, went to Al basically. Besides Wavy. Yeah. I mean, you have you have Rainer on Glads now. Gator. Yeah. Kaluge on Shock. Right. Yeah. Like that team. That team was just filled with incredibly good players, like all around the board, and right. that's that's why they were as good as they are. And then they made it. They found the most broken comp in Overwatch history, I'd say. Yeah, like they, they found like a, a way to make an entire role obsolete for a year, for a, maybe even more so than that. Um, yeah, and listen, it put me in brick jail. So, yeah, that was great. Really no, trying I to could, convince them, Sam. <laughs> I was like, for the people that don't know, like we, Sam and I have been friends for years. Out, like we, were, I was talking like, Sam, you're really, really good. All right, sounds like uh, we're getting I, stuff fixed. I think we're good to go. Yep, we're good to go then. Game time. Less oh, story dude, time, more so game ready. time. Long story short, I never would have so played ready. Contenders without Blake harassing me to do it. So, oh, Sam, you're so good at Hanzo. You should do it. I'm watching against these NYXL three stacks. You're so good. I got you to do this. And your role got deleted. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm like, well, I guess that's it. Hey, my break was clean, though. I will say. I, I will say. My break it was, was clean. You fed for a while. but then I, you were I good. fed for like three weeks straight. It was brutal. It was brutal. Okay, apparently we're not ready yet. Oh, not are? Okay, I've changed my mind. Um, well, I shortened my story for no reason. Mm, sad. I mean, it, it was a boring conversation. Y'all didn't care anyway. I was just, you know. Throw me under the bus. All right. I'm doing my best to riff here. I mean, what, what do you want to talk about? Airline food? <laughs> airline food? I mean, airline food's not that bad. I mean, depends on the airline. Put me on Delta, I'm good to go. Uh, yeah. No, oh, I agree with that. Say Delta's I agree with that. Bad. Are you kidding me? Are I'm a little mad they have pay for the Wi-Fi on Delta, though. All right. Well, looks like we're ready to roll. You don't have to hear us talk about airline food. Thank <laughs> God for that because I, you don't want to hear me ramble, folks. You don't mm-hmm. want to hear me ramble. All righty. So grand finals, uh, a lot on the line here, a lot of pride on the line. You know, I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, the Grandview players will have to put their shoes back on after the match. But you know what? Maybe, just maybe, if they win this game, they, they can keep their, their up, shoes off the rest of the day. Yeah, they, they can yeah. carry them out. They can carry them out. Never can touch the ground again. Uh, and the they have again. some So here we go. Up, Grand Finals. Converse University yeah, versus Grandview University. Everyone in the Cornerstone facility, let me hear you get rowdy for this game because I am ready to roll. Blake, I'm not sure if you're as hype as I am, but I'm about to put 150%. I, I am so ready. I have been waiting all day. Baby. Hunter, all I, day. Listen, listen, I'm, getting ca- I'm, I'm casting quick shots. You can't ask for a better Saturday night, folks. So, 
Here we go. Li Zhang Tower. Whoever wins first fight going to have a big advantage because these teams are so good at cycling these ultimates. You really want to make sure that you win this first one as we see Noah come out on the Doom Fist, right? We see they had a lot Doom of success Fist on cheese. that. The Doom Cheese, baby. The Doom Cheese, right? So... As, you know, as somebody who's a, a bit of a Doom connoisseur, I would say, I, I love to see a little bit of Doom Fist in this mm -hmm. tournament, right? You know, even though the, the hero's in an interesting spot right now, we'll see. When Tank Fist comes out, I think that should be uh, pretty interesting based on a lot of the reports that we've seen. So, five, four, actually three, that? two, one. Welcome to the Grand Finals, folks. As we see... Grandview come out on the Doom Sim Rush Comp and Converse come out on the six man Sombra Reaper, right? Honestly, I like Converse's comp a little less than Grandview's, but we'll see if they can survive. They have to bait the Winston jump in and force his bubble early, but the great off angle from the Reaper here, gonna pressure this right back, and now the Winston's able to walk up without jumping. They need to force the bubble early, or they're gonna be in trouble as Quicks. Finally, it's the bubble force. He's gonna have to jump out. That's a big advantage for Grandview. They're gonna be able to force him out as Garchomp is gonna break the drone. Doomfist is in. He just needs a backup play point. You've got everything that you need to... Oh, he kind of wasted the punch away back. Window popped already! Looking for more. The Moira is forced out. They get the cap, and that is so important because now they saw that Doomfist is in though. Very deep by himself. Quick shots with the primal. Stays on the map. Out of kid. Loving to see that as the Reinhardt is crit. They're coming up on the beat. Look at how fast these ults are building, being built as the Sim wall is ready. This is still winnable. Beat is cast. Wall pop. Sim getting primal across the map. Quick shots is in there. Someone stop this man as the EMP comes out as well. Big four man EMP. But Grandview. Oh wait a minute. Chance. Chance gets two. Quick shots gets four. Sim TP still up though. Doing this on the point. Trying to get more. As it looks like Converse with a big flip on the point. Noah getting the DMAP with that EMP really doing it to seal the deal. I absolutely believe Converse chose this comp specifically to shut down Grandview and what they show, uh, showed last game. Grandview's best comp on this map was their Doomfist comp. And they hacked him and that's... Oh! Like Teleporter. Reaper is gonna die, Max, with the big slam we didn't expect, forcing the coal early from Kiwi, trying to get that value here as Lion does have the beat ready. Window is popped again. Blue Sandwich been playing it out of his mind. d on the Diva Ashton, dude. Ashton, I want to see his damage stats for this tournament. He's got to have the highest. Dude, they said, they said, wait, you don't think we ulted fast enough? How about we ult literally exactly after we get out yeah, of the dude, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I literally on didn't even have time to react to what they did before the fight was won. And that's the power of Symmetra right there, baby. As quickly as Converse gets 30%, they're already back on the point. And uh, Grandview making it happen in here they've got the sim wall ready the beat ready the bomb ready and all you've got is bomb primal uh blossom you can't initiate with blossom or bomb really into that compass quick shots is all the way up in there bubble gets popped middle of point bomb comes out defensively for the blossom gonna trade out for the reaper that's why you gotta be careful with the blossom initiation and the sim wall is up quick shots gets a big kill on a blue sandwich quick shots gets two with the primal look at him go beat gets popped like we're trying to turn this fight here big ults coming up but they're only close to the shatter the best they can do is hope for a stall and a tp back onto the point but big ults coming up from converse can they force more they do force the beat that's very good for uh grandview university is hammer back in the point cleaning up the diva the sim tp should be back any second as the drone gets popped there's a tp they're ready for it though as nice read coming up from converse being ready to adapt to that very quickly absolutely and forcing out the beat was a big was a big deal what are grandview going to do about this emp what are they going to do about this emp and and if quick shot uh, excuse me if Converse uses it, how much of their ults can they build up around yeah. this EMP? They, they have to force this EMP early. You can't afford to play passive against it. Even taking the fight loss, if you absolutely have to. But you cannot play slow because then they'll just get it for last fight either way. As here it comes. They're probably just dead here. I won't lie to you. Guys. There's a big EMP coming out with the Diva Bomb. But the drone is going to save him at EMP score, but not the Baptiste who has his window. He might get a window here. He does. It's going to force the back. Quick shots is down. They lose quicks as the uh, fire the strike kills the Barra. Sim Tart's in there. What a nice read from Blue Sandwich to react to that EMP, exist as Baptiste, and use Immortality Field. What a smart read and bait from Grandview to kind of hit them with that reverse card as they do flip the point. His chance is going to stagger. Oh, no. As they're going to push their spawn. What a read from them as well. This is very risky, but if it pays off, oh, no. Oh, no, it does not. Oh, so close. Steadfast. You'd love to see it for all you rhyme. Oh, no, they're going to get him anyway. They're going to get him anyway. It's not done yet. Opiate does have the bomb. Noah going down to 1 HP. Quick shots. Making hero plays. Quick shots. Makes a hero play. Gets the Baptiste. Bomb comes in on the point. They can't get a good read on it. Doom ult comes in. Here comes the wall. Opia gets two. Two with the bomb. Garchomp kills the Sim. Doomfist on point. Looking for the Moira. Tries to get the E onto him. He's going to fade away. Doomfist is going to die right back on the point. Halfway to the shatter. 
Blossom ready for hammer. He looks for it. Here it comes. That should be a big one. Beat gets pumped though. Ron gonna go down as well as the immortality field. 99%. They get the flip, but you cannot stagger if you're grand you. This fight is going a lot of different ways at once. Quick shots making the hero play and their aggression getting punished there towards the end. So tough. There was only two people left and they beat it. Grandview. I'm not exactly sure how they're gonna win this the next fight without that. That was so, so, so tough. But I will be say oh, they got Quick touch. Shots is pulling a fearless right now with the amount of primal rage kills. Oh, TP out of the point. Here comes the bubble on the point as well. The bat probably is gonna die. The drone is forced early to EMP and 10%. The bat. Oh my goodness, EMP and 10. Shatter comes out. There's EMP. It's gonna get four players. They have oh, they could not use the window. And it looks like the aggression from Grandview is gonna be their own kryptonite as they overextended. And this is something that we really struggled with on Triumph for a long time in contenders. We learned it's better to just play the point. Don't o get overzealous and get over aggressive. The only team I've ever seen that can really pull that off is Atlanta Academy because they were smurfing in contenders. Like, <laughs> you know, you, you, it's just, it's not worth it, right? Just play point. You can really take, you know, you know you're going to be taking a six on five on the point. Just play slow. Take it out of your own rate, especially against the Winston when you have Sim because you just play slow, bait the bubble, break, let your Sim charge on his bubble, break the bubble, crush him especially if you're up a player. So not necessarily a bad look, but again, it's that land environment. The blood gets pumping. You get excited. It gets going. It's, it's the, grand the grand finals. finals. You gotta be careful. Definitely, Grand, you're gonna be kicking themselves after that one, but we see a Sig Ball Brig Zen Echo Tracer from Grandview and Mercy Zen Tracer Echo Diva Ball. Quick shots on the ball, making moves. Looks like Max in the back line. The Zen is going to be pretty low. If I'm them, I'm trying to bait that Zen out, maybe force point, because he's way back there. So the Mercy is going to go low. Maxwell going to get the better of Noah in the Echo Duel as Quick Shots also going to kill the ball. If, I feel like their brand view is just kind of forcing these fights a little too far forward at where. You know, you could just wait and play slow and bait them out and do a little bit better. But Ashton, gonna get two. It's not done yet. The hero that they need, literally the Dark Knight of Grandview, already has the pulse pump. But they got again, they're not fighting the point because Ashton is fragging out in their in their back line. But right, they need someone on the point to make it happen. As oh, we got a little glitch on the screen. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. We can see it over here, folks. It looks like that. Uh, Quick Shots team Converse has been able to win. I'm not sure if you guys can still see the screen. We don't have it on ours, but we have it on the side monitors. Ash it does kill Quick Shots 14% ready for uh, for Converse as they're going to be trying to hold the point as we are back on the main screen. So you guys didn't miss too much. Don't worry. His hammer is going to clean up that fight on the Tracer as Ashton does have the Pulse Bomb available and he is ready to roll. Diva is demecked on the blue side of Converse. Garchomp, 1 HP, looking for him. He's going to try to call Mech on him maybe? No, Ashton again. Entry fragging and forcing point. If Ashton can start forcing the, those duels on point for his team, he'll be in much better shape as Maxwell is going to get the cleanup. Pulse Bomb comes out Rez on to Garchomp as they're not going to be able to really win this one here as Opia is going to get the kill onto the Zen. Noah going to die again on the Soldier. Flux gets popped. Quick Shot's not going to be in an Echo is in the Flux. Going to be low HP. Not going to get out. Quick Shot's half health. Discord on the point. Mind Guild gets popped. Copy gets used as well. Sigma. Copy almost at the Flux. Maxwell going to pop that Flux as the Copy. Looking for more. Opia is going to get the kill onto Hammer though. Big Flux comes in onto Lion. He's going to go down. Maxwell trying to turn it. Trank gets popped. He got a crazy fight. Maxwell kills two, and it looks like Converse actually going to be able to hold this one out. And this is the kind of long fight that they really don't want to drag on. Absolutely, and they invested so, so, so much into that. Was swapping back and forth. Noah now on the Soldier, and, and he was on that in the previous fight. It's so, so, so tough for Grandview. I think they're losing a lot of 1v1s, uh, just getting outdone in some areas. But anything is possible when Ashton's on your side. Yeah, anything is possible, but like again, like I wish Grandview would take these fights in a little bit better spots. The rally gets popped, they're gonna try to brawl them over here. But again, see, you could be rallying on point right now. Assassin gets the kill on the mercy, but because this rally on the side isn't that useful. Because you need to be on the point. Like if you force them out Ashton and go again. to the point and Ash is just doing doing God's work. Because all you need to really do is rally them back, and then once they're far enough back they can't contribute to the fight on point, you kite back two point and save your ultimates. But what do you think about this ult economy now? What what do you see? I really see an opportunity here for Grandview. Uh, controlling this, having presence over the point is really, really important. They need oh. to choke them out with the Briggs end, but that is a really, really, really tough loss. So deep into their into the other team's spawn. I don't know about that. Oh, oh and then Hammer gets too. a pulse kill. I like this visor, though, to try to at least get the space out. I've never really seen that visual for it, though. As, you know, visual. they're trying to go to point. As Converse, it looks like they should be able to close this one out. Bomb gets popped from Garchomp in the D in the state of DMAC. 
probably gonna win this map for him as Ashen is on the point. Can Ashen do Ashen things as Trank gets popped for Blue Sandwich? Surely Ashen does not turn this after one kill on the quick shots, right? Surely Ashton does not deadlift this one yet again. He's got the pulse bomb ready. Nice this one in the back. Trank gets popped. The counter Trank comes out. He's got to look for the pulse on the break. He's smart and he's gonna look for it. He's gonna look for it. He's gonna look for it. Looks for it. Oh, there he goes! Ashton, as Grandview is trying to turn this fight, Blue Sandwich gets one as well as Lion. Quick shots gets a kill on the Noah. Quick shots, gonna be low. Ashton wants him, chases him out, forces him out, comes back to point, and they're gonna be able to hold. Look I cannot at Ashton. believe it. I oh cannot my believe God. it. First of all, Blue Sandwich having himself one heck of a day. He's been feasting. He's been feasting all day. And once again, I love it. Keep this cam on Ashton. This man Cold is on ice fire. Ice in his veins, man. Ice in his veins. Call him Ashton Burr after Joe Burr, baby. We love to see that as they're going to be trying to take this point back. They do have EMP. It's going to be really hard for Grandview to beat the EMP. They have to bomb defensively and not let the Sombra get what she wants. You cannot let her get it as the EMP comes out. Nice break back coming out. A nice kill for Blue Sandwich to stuff them out here. The hammer's coming in. Only 20% to the post bomb. Big ults come up for Grandview as they save them. We're coming into last fight. They're going to try to initiate the visor. Don't get too greedy like last time. They have the advantage. They don't need to get too nice. greedy. That's A great kill need, by Noah. Noah. That's all you need, Noah. Keep your discipline. Play it slow, right? As Quick Shots is on the point. Uh, Opia still has the bomb. Gets D-Max. Pops the bomb against the Doomfist on the point. Ashton going to be looking for him. Can he get him? No, he can't. Pulse Bomb coming up. Quick Shot's going to go down. Rally gets popped, but he gets the minefield off. Rally for both teams. Doomfist in the back line. Max going to die. Zen dead for Grandview. Can they actually turn this? Kiwi is going to get one. Diva. Oh map. my god! What a boot from Chance and that probably is going to do it. I don't think there's any way that they can turn this and Converse going to close out that map. And it was down to the wire. Razor thin margin. So close. I, I cannot believe they turned that fight. I, I couldn't. I cannot believe they turned the fight. With the entry pick also from the Visor. I, I, it is amazing that they found a way. They were consistent. They were slow. And this is one of the things we're talking about. There is controlled aggression, right? Yeah. We talked about it with a lot of teams. They showed that perfectly. Not getting overwhelmed by the moment. Like, that was... I, I cannot... But I really thought that was Grandview's point. I was like, okay, here we go. Ready for the third point. That that was absolutely insane. We're seeing incredible play from all sides. Uh, one, one of the things I want to point out for the map is... Quick shots, Winston Primals. I think he at least killed five. Yeah. Three or four of them being off the maps. Like, it was an absolutely incredible play. Now, here's what's an important question, too, as we're heading to Watchpoint Gibraltar next. How many of those kills were over extensions from Grandview? It, it's – it. I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And, and I think that – I think that a decent amount of them actually were. Yeah. Right, and I think, but does that open the door. It does. It does open the door. It does open the door, and I think a lot of it also does come from sh like straight up the the insane confidence they should be playing with right now. After like running the gauntlet, losers bracket, yeah. getting to this point. I mean, they've gone from a very passive team down to a very very aggressive team. Mm -hmm. It has hurt them in some areas, but I think when the times get tough later into the series, it will help them a lot by keeping that keeping that fire alive. And I think for this specific map, this is like a must win for Grandview. For oh, Ashton, 100%. especially on point one, you are going to get most likely a 1v1. Versus, oh, yeah. Versus I mean, Ashton's been having a field day on this map all day. Yes. Like, so like, it's, it's, it's been free for him. It's been for, as free as a Costco sample. You know, he's out there. Just, I mean, am I wrong? You can't even no, face, but I know I'm not wrong. Come on now. As we do see quick shots on the Orisa, it looks like we might see some Orisa Diva. Potentially, I don't think they stay on that, though. His hammer's on the Torbjorn. We do see the double bubble potentially coming out from... Um, from Grandview as you know they've been really excelling on that comp all day but they could swap up to the diva we're not really sure exactly what they want to do yet we're not you know what uh, one of those wait and see absolutely I, I really think that this would be a really interesting pick it's uh, they, they this is a very much a planning team they have an awesome head coach converse I know, speaking of converse is an awesome head coach really knows what he's talking about this seems like a very 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 planned attack against what they've seen coming out from Grandview. Let's see how they handle it. Yeah, I like the Arisa Diva comp, actually. I think, you know, it can really catch some teams off guard as they do have... Oh, yeah, look, I, I like the Tor pocket pick, but the Echo should have free real estate. I think if you're Opia, though, I'm not sure if you want to pick Zarya, but again, he's got 80 charge already. If you can hold that kind of high ground, double bubble, and not let them in, the thing is, it's going to be really hard like to actually break through that Arisa shit. I think the Arisa has a pick designed to really throttle that Zarya. Um, as you see, look, he's low. They can pull him out, force his cooldowns in really inoptimal places, but we'll see. As the bubble does get popped, they need the Echo to force the off angle on the other side, but the Diva break Tor turret are going to be looking for that, so he won't really have the chance to 
sticky, right? Because you almost have to sticky the torp turret to actually force them off as they're going to be trying to poke them out here. Heart is oh. already past the bridge, by the way. We almost have the nano boost ready. 95% as we're back on the big screen here. 100 charge. I almost want to nano our Zarya there, right? You almost think as the monkey jumps out instead of in. But he's going to have the primal. Huge you can't can't die. Die. Can they break the drone? Oh my god, they can't break the drone. They're, oh, but maybe they can. Primal comes out. There's a big one, Max. Gets two. Lion going to get one as well. As they let themselves get cornered. And look who's been pushing the cart the entire time. Ashton won the way during that fight midway through the anti when we called anti Ashton won the tracer 1v1 and he already pushed it so far I called it mid fight he had already crossed underneath the bridge I could tell from how far the bar had gone he must have been pushing Maxwell further and further and further back and the brig was probably extremely preoccupied by the people in front of him and couldn't give packs to him to help in the 1v1 versus Ashton as we said he is the key for Grandview on this on this point yeah listen I, I, I think the big mistake a lot of the teams in the losers bracket made is they did not mark Ashton that man has been deadlifting all day as Lion's going to pop the rally very early, trying to walk through Zarya with grabs. The Winston is going to insta die to the rallying brig. As they're going to try to commit in with their own rally, nice little grab comes out. I'm not sure they'll be able to follow up as the drone gets popped, but they do stuff the rally and hold the space while Ashton is on the carpet hammer. Again, the Hanzo pick. I think this is all trying to mark Ashton to make his job as hard as possible. You see a Torb and the Hanzo come out with an Orisa poke comp? They there have to be trying to mark reason. Ashton, right? But here's the thing. I think Opia goes D.Va, yep, that's what you need to see. And if they go D.Va, that really makes a huge enable on the Echo. So now, what really needs to happen is Opia and Noah need to force the map open for Ashton and start rolling through with this Nano. You got Nano for this, you got Copy for this. Pulse Bomb can come later in the fight, but Garchomp does have Bomb. They're coming up on here the window here as they're up on the ship. A nice nade comes up, but look, you're on the card as Hammer is going to get a big kill on Brigida. You need the Copy to get a big Bomb here. You have to get a big Bomb as Copy. As Garchomp saving his Bomb, nice discipline. Got to get the kill onto the Winston. He's going to be forcing the cart next. But Ashton, again, has gotten that cart around the corner. Wait a minute. Blue Sandwich. Going to get the kill on the hammer with the nade. Ashton does have pulse. He can look to try to win this one here. But I doubt that he actually commits for us. They're going to try to reset here a little bit as Ashton forcing him off. Nice this one from him. The brig is back. Wait a minute, folks. Wait a minute, folks. They could try to turn this one as Ashton. Looking for the pulse. Gets quick shots. Going to be get down a little bit low. I don't think it's going to do enough damage. If they're going to try to walk in. 56% to the rally. Bomb gets popped. Garchomp. Oh! Garchomp gets two. Big from Garchomp. Hammer going to get the headshot onto Noah as well. Great ult usage there and discipline from Converse to play slow. Bait them in and stay disciplined with their ult timers. That is the name of the game for this Arista comp. It's just to slowly give up ground. Just slowly, 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 slowly. Let them burn out the ults on top of you and give up the ground as necessary. So even if it looks like Converse is getting pushed back in a lot of these scenarios, it's a very, very, very controlled. So I'm interested to see now, as Maxwell's coming up to his Pulse Bomb, do they try to make a hyper-aggressive play? Maybe possibly see the Ana to walk out top left, try to get a full Pulse Bomb on it. Let's see I, I think they is. nano their Winston here. If they're smart, they'll do it. Yep, there's the Nano Winston. The Dragon's ready. Nice hammer. They force the rally. Don't even engage until just wait it out. They're not really doing a whole lot there. So they do have the bomb ready. You got Primal on your own rally. You rally second for space as the Primal gets popped. But Lion gonna go down. That's a huge kill for Maxwell, completely thwarting their push. They actually probably would have won that fight if the Brig was been have been able to be kept alive and rally on the point but unfortunately again and this is where i think this hanzo pick is really really good for hammer because guess what what's that tracer gonna do they just hard checks are way faster so hanzo's always been very very good at and you know you gotta just give converse credit it seems like they're prepared for what grandview is really good at as they force ashton onto the ash they do have the rally available they're matching Look, uh, they're getting closer and closer to matching them. Yeah, they're calm. getting closer and closer. Honestly, if I'm Grandy, I'm putting Ash on Widow. I'm pretty sure he's a good Widow player. Let him shoot for days here, but... Here goes we'll, an Ash. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. He is a good Ash. But look at though. This has one HP before they even go in. And this is what I don't think they should do. I don't think they should do this because, again, whenever they were playing the Orisa, it seems like they just didn't know how to initiate. And I honestly thought they were doing fine on that dive comp because they were just one or two seconds away from getting the rally and bring alive instead of looking for the aggressive nades as blue sandwich has been doing look to nade your own team so the brig and the spire gets double the value building the ult faster and keeping you guys alive on those low rotations. mobility characters on point two offense are very 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 hard to play when they have high ground already 
it, it's it is gonna be very very hard they already had they're gonna have window here to stop any pushes in they got they got to use ults to get in they have to understand it's gonna be almost a waste but they have to use ults to get See, in you're it's never gonna break this you're never gonna break this right and this is where you kind of just are playing into their strength they kind of baited you right because like you're almost in a worse spot attempting this now because you're never gonna be able to get in because again if converse has shown anything today it's their ability to just consistently deny and use their high damage ultimates in a bunker themed comp first and win 80 to 90 percent of those engages before they even start i totally agree we got a little 1v1 going on here in the back line noah probably trying to surround them oh he's going to use the copy yeah, really I, investing here okay yeah well he has to break this show because he's going to be able to build this pulse bomb here and force the payload because maxwell got to be a little bit low i'm not sure if he's gonna be able to actually make it back up in time because here's the thing like how i guess they distracted him for the cross they're rallying they're Hammer. investing this here's is the it rally. this is it for this is it right they point. need to make something happen right now as noah is still on the point not quite there at the post but gets the the kill on the hammer which is going to make ash to be able to do a lot supercharger now up for converse oh but here comes quick shots gets one dog chomp gets two and they might be able to turn this fight it's ash it's on the point one hp the reload comes out rallies there for uh converse and th this is what you really just hate to see for grandview i feel like they just were doing so much better of a job playing that dive comp they instead of you know anything else and honestly if i'm then maybe if they go that full poke comp with the rissa just pick up a mercy go mercy zen absolutely right go mercy zen like the honor has been all right but you just go ball mercy zen and go play the poke like, they had the poke. several openings like they the, i think they would have won the point if not for that 2k bomb yeah uh, on the the fight where they were almost capping they hit a 2k bomb converse hit a 2k bomb and i think that saved them yeah and that's one of the most important things as a team is to identify like are we losing because there's something structurally wrong with what we're doing or have they just made some good plays on us that we could just play a little bit better? And I think in that scenario, as we talked about, like, no, we are structurally doing everything the right way. We are just making a couple small errors. And also, they're a great team. They're going to have their pop-off moments. And they did have their pop-off moments to just shut them down just enough. But <coughs> Excuse me. But grandview is a very defensive uh like, I, I team feel like i think they can do this strengths, though. i feel like that's all part of converse's plan like those defensive comps they've done such a good job on right like they're so disciplined with their ults like that 2k bomb that's how they turned it but i feel like that's their plan because their ult economy is just so good and it's been so solid all day i wouldn't even try to to match them on that bunker theme comp. well that's exactly what i'm saying is yeah. that you have to play like structurally like you can't like nothing is wrong with what you're doing and you definitely don't want to match them Absolutely, one hundred percent. But now we see Kiwi on the Zen here. I, they're on Brig Zen, Arissa Hog, Sim. I should they're doing surely... the pull off the high ground. Yeah, but they don't say Brig Zen with this, do they? Or maybe they're just going for the pull. Or, or, well, I, maybe Arissa Hog. They probably could pull out the wrecking ball here. As there's the Hog, that's not really going to get anything there. As they do TP the back line over to the left side. As Grandview is back on the full we dive. Oh, we're going to see ball. Okay, we are going to see the quick shots. Ball. I was going to say, there's no way they come out Brig Zen, TP their back line, and not going to switch to ball as. Ashton, now this is where I think Graham, you can actually get a big hole. Right? I think Noah and Ashton can really take these big angles. Close call, Max. Got to be careful. This is how you guys lost, uh, I think, in your first game to these guys. Yep. Where, you know, they killed you right here with a big name. Now they're not on the Ana. As Maxwell, got to get an entry kill onto Lion. You can't let that happen if you're Grandview. And again, because look at where they're stacked. They didn't really learn their lesson. Their positioning is just And that makes it so much harder for Ashton to win. And there it goes without the break to pack him. He doesn't get the healing from Carp because he's not on offense. And he ends up losing the 1v1. And that was so important for Grandview's hold to have him take away the Tracer and hold their cart. And look at the cart push further and further and further. Yeah, you know, really good play from Quick Shots. It just seems like the Converse is a well-oiled machine in terms of where they're playing. They know how to adapt. Like, I think no one really answered Grandview and their play style in the loser's bracket for the most part. But Converse is, and it doesn't seem like they have any alternative options or knowledge to actually, like, go through and win this point and, like, answer different strategies. Kiwi is going to get two kills there to clean this fight up. Gets Ashton and Opia. Quick Shots committing the mind because he knows that even if they commit it now, Playing with that five-minute time bank is just almost a, not a guaranteed win, but incredibly unlikely that a hole is going to be able to happen here as Chance has the rally. Look at this ult economy. Definitely favoring that of Converse with two support ults instead of one on Grandview. And a copy for copy. You'll have bomb for bomb almost. Really, Ashton is the only one with the advantage over his counterpart in terms of having that pulse bomb available. The copy does get popped. Is Noah has duped the Zen, and I believe Maxwell has duped the Winston, as they're going to be trying to make a play with this rally here, as nothing's really going to happen as the Tranks come out in the ship. Quick shots, getting the big PDs, naded in 1 HP. Ashton going to look for his guard chop, 
does get the extra kill onto the Ana. Nice kill to Blue Sandwich as well as the copy, but Max trades out with Chance. Oh my goodness, Noah gonna get the better of Maxwell in the Echo Duel. Wait a minute, this might be winnable. His quick shots is 1 HP. Can Ash finish him off? He can, as he does get the cleanup there. And Grandview, it's gonna take a miracle here, but it's definitely doable. It's absolutely possible, especially with the players they have and the way they like to play. Name of the game is exactly what to do what Converse did to you. Door stuff them. Do not let them walk in for free. You have an amazing player like Ashton that could uh, shade them no matter where they go, no matter who, which DPS you want to put them on, or if you want to shade the main the main part of the team. It looks like he's probably trying to go for a nice pulse on play here. Rather he might not even line. need it. He's about a one clip still. Kiwi off spot as he does have the pulse. The recall gets forced, so he's going to play passive for about 10 seconds as Noah. Only a quarter of the way to that duplicate. They're going to have to use some kind of big ult here to win his quick shots. It's a big PD. Look at him. He's all the way up that webcam. He's like a Chad over there. Tony Stark on Wrecking Ball. As the Pulse Bomb does get popped. Ashton Ghost is a hammer on the point, and the point's going to be pushed right now. You're going to have to drop no. him at the point. Oh, no. There's a kite bat. Maxwell going to get the second kill right there. As We'll see if they can turn a blue sandwich using the nano. So 90 to the nano. They need the nano here. They need the nano here on the Winston. If the Winston dies, that's all over. But he does get the nano off. The Trank is going to be late. The Winston's is going to be able to chase them down. Echo going to go down to 1 HP. Oh no, Max! So close, but Ashton is there to get the cleanup with Opium with the recall into the mines! The rally gets bumped! Sleep gets missed on quick shots. They're back on the point. They have spawn advantage. They just gotta survive, but Ashton is gonna go down. Quick shots, looking for the PD on the Ana. Does end up getting it, trying to get the kill, but Brigida is in the game, but... Cannot get the Winston! He gets slipped! He gets slipped, but Hammer, gonna get the kill. Garchomp gets the bomb on the Noah. Lion does try to turn it, though. Get a nice kill on the Baby Diva on Garchomp. Primal is on the point. They have spawn advantage. Echo does cancel the beam. 90 to the dupe. And C9! Oh, no! Converse gonna be able to take that there. Wow! I, I totally agree that their defensive play on defense was what, what definitely caused them to full stuff there. But it was... It was so <laughs> upsetting to see uh, the way that Grandview ended up going down there uh, yeah. at the second point because it was just – Ashton, I feel like, was putting so much on himself. And I could see – I was watching him always trying to the corner of my eye watching yeah. his health bar. Yeah. And once I saw it clip down and the point started to get pushed, it's it was over. all over. It was all over, yeah. So, I mean, if you're Grandview, what do you do differently here? I think if you're Grandview, I think honestly go back for a full mental reset. And this is what I mean by that. Like, go back to a little bit more – I can't believe we're saying this after how much we've talked uh, about them. Go back to a little bit more to the defensive style. Go back to more to, like – I'm not saying to play Arrested against them. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying, though, is to take more measured fights, to really try to plan it out more, to ult. I feel like they over-ult a lot in positions that they don't need to. And I think, I think if you do those type of things, I think you're going to be a lot better situation. Do, but, you know, do you know what I do if I'm them? Go ahead. I play Rush. They were very solid on that Rush. Yeah. Well, it depends on the map, right? It looks like we're going to Numbani. So maybe not on Numbani. Man, this could be. This is going to be really wacky, isn't it? I feel like they got something wacky on Numbani. I, I think they should do too. There's so many things you can play here also. Well, like it, really favors, it really favors thing. Tracer Echo. And look, look, they've been good on Tracer Echo. They really have been. Like, they've been pretty solid all around. But it just seems like Converse, just their old usage gives them the edge like i i would say in the mid fight that it's relatively even but unless ashen kills like four it's not that noah's not playing it's not that noah's playing poorly but the big turns have come from ashton yes and if you use ult economy properly use your ults well the ults can get you over that hurdle i also think one of the one of the big things that they did it converse did was they neutralized opia yeah. Well, one of the biggest things we saw through their lower bracket run was Opia Opia Zarya. Very well. Yeah. Well, not even that. He's, he was eating pulse bombs like almost every fight. Yes. And I feel like if you neutralize him, I think that was another large carry for their team. And if you neutralize him, if you slow down Ashton, like you're gonna be in a, you're gonna be in a tough spot. Even though Max had several primal kills, we had great nades from uh, Sandwich. So honestly. It's got to be a whole team bring up. As we said about the other one of the, the previous game we casted, there's almost no one single thing I can point out because there was so close. I feel like Grandview was so close in so many areas that there's not a suspicious, like a really big specific thing that they are totally failing at. I think these are just two very well matched teams, and it's been Converse's day.
Yeah, it really has been. His Converse, again, going to try to come out on that super defensive comp, as we've seen them do with the Arisa Diva, Torb, and Grandview going to stick to their guns here. Now, if I'm Grandview, though, are you? do you want to drop your break for a Mercy? Or, is, or even on a Zen? What do you think? Honestly, I think if you see this... I would I would go back and do that, but I, I think that at this point you're just kind of invested as a team. You, you're just not thinking about that. You're just thinking about, like, how can we do this? Yeah, they're, they're giving them a lot of room, and honestly, if they give you that room, just take it. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. A nice day to save him there. Going to get a nice third of that nano available. They need to try to break that teleporter very early in the fight as Ashen is on the flank on that back left side looking for a big rotation there. Because, look, the Sim Torbar set up so well, and Noah kind of knows that he can't really drop in there aggressively because he's just going to get checked by all of them, so... Ashton, if I'm him though, I gotta break that TP first. Cut off their options, right? Don't give them options to leave. This Opia is gonna down, go down very early. Look, they're kind of just stuck. Like you gotta disable their ability to move on the immobile comp before you engage. But Lion is gonna get a nice killer, and that's why I kind of almost think that you should just go Zen, because like you either play Mercy or you play Zen, because like the Brig. I can't believe I'm admitting this. Just not going to do very much against that cop. Right? Absolutely. Like, it's, it's, this is the one situation where, you know, I do not think that Brig is the answer. Also, playing with a little bit more patience. Because yeah. if you had, like, a lot of teams here, if you're going to play Monkey against a more bunkerish type of comp, you want to build the Nano. And you get to really dictate that to them. So now they're going to have the Nano for the Nano Monkey, but they're already pretty close. Converse is close to a lot of their major ults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his hammer is going to get the kill onto Ash and his stuff up and pop the core on point. Nano Monkey comes out. They are going to commit. I actually like this commit from them so they don't lose the ult time bank because it's going to force a lot out on paper as it, well, they don't have to use anything though as Max is going to die and they get away with just the core and you lose your Nano there. Like, that's a tough loss. And again, this is kind of what we're talking about. Like, their ult music is so good all around the board. Absolutely. I think that at this point, you're getting close to a lot of the ults. Uh, I think you're going to have to go for an all-out brawl on the sides. Break this turret uh, and, and just go for an all-out brawl on the sides. Uh, can he... Oh, is he not going to get up to primal? Very close. I don't think that the Torb is actually going to chase him out. 93% Ashen. Very low. Oh, no. Oh, no. He is going to get healed. They have the rally, but, like, the Sim is just beating with the Bongo, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. Like, there's so much damage. I just don't think the pick is worth it. I think you put Lion on a hero that can either hard enable Noah or a hero like Zen, where you have the trank to sustain the bongo or the core or even the bomb, and you have the damage potentials. And Nano Winston is going to come out. They're going to try nice picks there on the back line. They got to kill the immortality field. Another bro. anti too. Oh my gosh, they let the ammo go, but Noah. They got the space. He's got copy. A big copy on the Diva here can put in God's work for him, which is what they need. The window gets popped. Nice eat on the Molten Core to stop him from getting big value of the point, but he's so, so low. He's got to be able to build his bomb, but he's not going to be able to. His Opia does kill one, but it's not going to be enough. His Guard Chomp, look at, look at how defensive Guard Chomp has been with his bombs all game. And this is what we're talking about, about Converse being disciplined with their ult economy. Garchomp knows that that bomb is a last resort. Late fight, everyone else is cycling their ults, and their safety net is the Diva Bomb. Because their dive has to commit in, and if Garchomp saves his bomb, late fight when they have nothing in the big cluster of the fight, he pops bomb, has a second life, and they can't retake. Here's, here's Grand's view's answer. Noah to the Hanzo, Ashton to the Ash. This is their final fight of this point. They do not cap. So I think they just play it. They play it slow all the way down to like basically the last second. See if they can just get a pick. Count on just the mechanical skill. Oh! Wow. 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 Instantly deleted. Now they'll have another look here. But wow. Oh, oh, close shot there from Noah. Gave that Brigida a haircut. Oh, my goodness. He's looking for Garchomp. Trying to force him out. I think Garchomp really. Has been a, yeah, he's, he's been a very, very silent carry for them here. As they got three seconds to touch here. Opia going to get the touch. Quick shots on the ball. They had the sim wall. This is going to be a devastating wall to deal with. Because he's going to be able to put that right on the point. But quick shots. Oh, quick shots. Made a, made a mistake. His hammer is going to get the turret kill. On to the Winston. Core on the point. Core gets one. Garchomp gets another. And Core gets more. And there we go. And that was a rhyme. Is Maxwell. Oh, Hammer gets the hammer kill. Oh, my gosh. Hammer gets the hammer kill. Look at. He yeah, out. Looks like Chance has to pee. Oh, my God. Think, Why do you say it? I can read that, too. Why do you say it out loud? <laughs> listen, I'm just commentating what I see. That's just okay, what I. Okay. I guess we are at that point of the night. Look, uh, yeah. I, I think that I think that that answer toward it, like, I want to look into that answer a little bit that they tried at the end, where they said like, "Look, our die is not working. Let's just try to make have the mechanical skill because 
what were the other team? What were the other teams DPS playing? Torb and Sam. Yeah. It was like, give us enough time, we'll find a pick. Yeah. It's like generally the idea behind that. They just didn't have enough time, and they did. They and they had some shots as as we said, gave the brig a haircut, and there were probably some other shots because I believe uh, Noah by the end of the round was ninety eight percent to the dragon. So like that's obviously doing damage, hitting some shots, and a lot of times that's what it is. Like you can give yourself windows. Like hey. They were at that point. They had swapped off a ball, uh, off the wrist of the ball. You're gonna have basically free range shots. We're gonna give you some windows, mm -hmm. and if in 30 seconds we can't find a kill while they're playing towards them and we're playing Ash Hanzo, then sometimes you just gotta. Hi, Effie. Up and by say, the way, go next. We we were missing the Effie poster right there. Effie the, apparently has upgraded, or allegedly has upgraded a reset for Overwatch too. I guess we'll have to wait and see. According to the Blizzard developers, so we'll oh, hopefully really? get to see more about that with the beta around the corner. But I think you hit the nail on the head there. I mean. It's tough, although for me, it looks like we have a DC here, um, but I will say, I really think that Lion should swap off the Brigida. Like, I think that that would have been like an Onazen. Like, if they're not playing anything that can really get super aggressive into that, why, why not run the Onazen? Like, why not? As we see, oh, there's Cowman right there. What's up, Cowman? Give me a smile. Yeah, he yeah, doesn't know where to look. <laughs> to your left. Yeah, close enough, close enough. Um, but, so, you know, like, if I'm them... Especially against that incredibly defense-oriented composition, like I don't think that we really need to run the brig. I don't think you do either. I think because you need power. Like I feel like they lack firepower, and that extra firepower will also really enable Opia on the Diva to take more space. He can save way more DM because the shields are gonna be down faster. The turrets are down faster. There's more poke. There's more pressure. Another pocket pick I actually like to run on New Bonnie offense is Reaper. And TP just straight onto the high ground where they really try to deny. And they can't do too much to it. But I feel like... I don't want to say it was a compositional issue, but I think changing comps might have helped them get over the hurdle on that offense. I could agree, I could definitely agree with that. And I actually kind of liked the pick, as I said earlier, what they did towards the end and for the reasons I stated. But here's the tough thing. Converse has shown the, re the willingness to change. Yeah. If they don't run Brig here, and they run Mercy, I think they just swap to dive. I think they'll. Mm -hmm. I think they'll just swap to dive. I think you have to run the Brig. Oh, on the defense, on absolutely. Yeah, on but defense, on the offense, I think they have think to run Brig just for the respect, just for the respect factor. Because mm -hmm. if they come out, even if they walk out on double shield, I would not be surprised if they literally walked right back and, and just spawn and swap and yeah. swap dive and mm -hmm. just instantly won. Yeah. So, I, I think it, I think that's what it takes here. But I think that look, you have to ask yourself here, like this. This is it. Like, we, like, it's do or die now, right? Like, what are we going to do? We have to basically full hold. Like, what's the answer here? And I honestly think if you just look at yourselves, like, okay, Opia, Noah, Ashton. Like, what, what can we do? That's what, that would honestly be my question if I was a player on the field. Like, if I was, because I played main tank, like, what can I help? What can I do to make sure you pop off here? Because mm -hmm. it, it's going to be through you. It's not going to be through me. It's not going to be through Ana. It's going to be it's going to be through you. You are going to be the reason we do it. How can I assist you so you also don't attempt to overreach? Yeah. Also, I don't want to just give you the same resources and then you fall because you're trying to do too much. How, what can I do to you if if you're Ashton right now and I said that to you? Like, what can I do as a main tank? What can I do, or what can I do as a a main support to help you succeed in this next full hold? What would you tell me? Put damage in. Pick big frag picks that will blow open windows forcibly. Okay. Like, I think Converse has just been brute forcing, uh, aside from Garchomp, Garchomp has just been playing very disciplined while the rest of his team makes the aggressive play. So Garchomp mm -hmm. has been the foundation for that team that's not really been talked about too much. And as long when you have that consistent foundation that allows Maxwell to get greedy, that lets Hammer get greedy, that lets Quick Shots get greedy, and we saw them die in a lot of fights, and guess who was alive in every single one of them that got the one or two kills to close out the fight? Even on Legion. Who was alive last? It was Garchomp. Pretty much every time. And here we go. Yes, here Back we go. Match. match point here for Converse. I mean, if they cap this, they are going to be able to take it home. As what? What are we doing here, folks? I mean, I think they're just they're just talking about something. Oh, they're just talking go. about something. As they do end up rolling out here on the dive, trying to respect that break because we do see Ashen like on the Hanzo here. I like the Hanzo from Ashen actually. I, although it's going to be really difficult to play into the ball comp, I won't lie. That's not going to be easy as they do let Quick Shot set up for free again. Like they're 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 kind of losing these fights before they even start, right? But they aren't really sure where they need to go to stop it from happening. These quick shots. Here he comes, rolling it. Yeah. Oh, nice little stun. Oh my! Great healing. Yeah, out there. great healing. Great nade coming out again. 
the defensive days. I think that's a big thing that they could be doing really, really well as Blue Sandwich did get a good one earlier, but Max taking a lot of damage. I feel like he and Opie have not been synergized, and that's the price you pay for it. There's not really much denial on the space or tank synergy coming out for them to DM and hold the space together, which has really hurt them as that Hanzo shot almost gets that Zenyatta. Very, very low. They're forcing the point. Almost have to take the Echo. Aggressively take the duel. I do like that from him as the Stickies do come out on the quick shots, but I don't think they'll be able to get a kill. Oh! Close call, but Maxwell gonna clean up this spike. Chance gets the kill onto Noah. That's it. And that is gonna do it, folks. Ashen does get the kill onto Kiwi, but that does it. Your winners of the Kentucky Community Invitational Spring 2022 is gonna be Converse, who comes up with a 3-0 over Grandview. Your undisputed champions. They said they would do it. They said they, they would said do they it. Would do they it. said they would do it. They said they would do it. They said they I suppose. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Uh, I, I suppose that I do have to go see Gar Chomp at Six Flags. Look at this man right here. Where's he, he's he's on his phone. He's he's texting his mom, telling her that he won the tournament. As uh, he, he's he's smirking over there. Look at him go. And first of all, thank you everybody for coming to this tournament. We are so blessed to have been able to put this on for you guys and, and just have such a great crowd of up and coming talent in the Overwatch scene. You guys are all awesome. Quick shots, rocking the varsity jersey. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just been a great time to have everybody here. So thank everyone so much. Our big shout out to our production who have killed it all day. Huge shout out to Gen G for sponsoring, being the official sponsor of UK Esports. The University of Kentucky for building this cornerstone facility that is going to hopefully see a lot of use in the future, whether you be from Lexington, from Kentucky, or across the country, across the world for that matter, as a kid that grew up here who, you know, obviously had to deal, I mean, you understand this, Blake, with a lot of, like, uh, parents and, and people talking about how not gaming wasn't anything, quit wasting mm -hmm. your time, do all this stuff, you know, especially here in Kentucky, to see a tournament like this be put on really right up the street from where we grew up means more than you know to both of us and the thing is it's not about us though it's about you guys and it makes me so thrilled to see people really put in the work travel across the country to come here and compete we love that we're going to continue to do everything we can to make sure that you guys get the experiences and the opportunities that you all deserve and we could not be more blessed to have such a great community around this so thank you all absolutely so much. and and i think one of the best things about this land is just how happy i've seen people just talking and interacting the community. We were sitting down in the stands and some of the Louisville players were like, it came to some of our players were like, you just want to do some pugs? You just want to go just play? Just play. We you just want to go play? play. It's, it's an amazing environment where you are now around a community of people that welcome you, that want to just have fun with you. They just mm -hmm. want to experience it, want to compete with you, obviously. Yeah. But in between that, want to hang out with you. Hey, man, you want to go get lunch? You want to go do this? Like It builds really strong and cool connections that you remember for a long time. And as especially through collegiate through freshman year sophomore year junior year senior year if you start playing in the same ranks of these people you will probably see that many 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 lands and gr grow into some really cool rivalries and friendships and that's what's uh, the power of sports and the power of esports in this instance and so i think it's one of the best uh, maybe like my favorite thing about about the land environment that uk has created for this tournament mm -hmm. so yeah Thank you guys so much for coming. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure what production would like us to do from, from here on out, but I'm sure that they are just as grateful as we are to have every single one of you here. I think maybe we... Pr Present awards. Presenting awards. Presenting awards. Okay, I figured as much. So I think at some point here, we are going to be heading it over to Dividing, who will be on the main stage with our champions, Converse University. And you know, it looks like Converse is going to the Atlanta Land with their with their prize money. I love Absolutely. it. They're they're fueling up. They're just using it to go play some more. And that's what you love and to see. And wire to wire, they were the best team. I I would say like they were wire to the wire, they were the so best. So who's team. who's your MVP? You know what's so amazing about their team is like I almost can't figure out how to pick one. Yeah, like that that's actually how good they were. It's like it just as a unit. Yeah, it, that's what I'm saying. It's almost like I almost get like the team is the MVP. I know that sounds like such like a cop out answer, but for like a lot of the teams, I really felt like there was one just gigantic carry, like standout star or two. I mean, is there one I, I for you? Say that was like, I kind of say Garchomp. The reason why I say that, I didn't see him make any mistakes. Absolutely. And not just not make mistakes. I think he came in clutch. He turned Because fights. there was a couple times that they actually were on the back foot. And not just uh, several, several times. And, and he would foot. be there to turn. Exactly. And it was, no. just, it was just understood. Like, when we get in this situation, you have to he, be the He one was there the every carry. time. I, I can't I think could of buy that. I could totally buy that. There. 
and and that flies under the radar unless you got like really really like you're really paying attention and thinking about it. Like I I can't really think of times where he made crucial mistakes. No, not at all, not at all. And like, I like he quick shots made big plays a lot. A lot of these other guys made big plays, but being a rock solid consistent player probably the most important thing in the game. Absolutely, it's a do it all player. It's a do it all position, obviously in the character of Diva. And he showed everything about that. There was not too much aggression, not too much uh, passive play either. Uh, it was just, they reminded me, and tell me if you, you disagree or agree with this, they reminded me of season one NYXL, where it was like you yeah. just could, like you couldn't aggress onto them. It just didn't work. Yeah. Like in, in and the moment you, you thought, did. the moment you thought that they, they were going to uh, buy too passively, they would have gone aggressive. But I think we are ready for the awards. Okay. All right. Uh, we're going to take it to the main stage. Oh, we're not. Oh, we're not doing oh, that. We're not. Okay. Sorry. We're not doing that. I okay. apologize. Uh, but this but I, I really just go on really quick back to what I was saying. I really feel like they felt like NYXL. Were they together as a unit? Obviously, they had Jonak, but like together as a unit, they were unkillable. Oh, there was yeah. no amount that you could put on to them, no amount of pressure you could apply, no matter how many comps you swapped, no matter what you did, you could not stop the like the stone wall that was NYXL season one. Do you uh, agree with that? Uh, that, that like comparison? I mean, I agree with everything besides NYXL being unstoppable. I mean, oh, okay, know, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I don't no disrespect to them. It's just you know, I think I I, I take quick shots over Jonak any day. Am I wrong? I mean, you just don't understand. It's right. He's not a man of culture. I just I, I just I'm, it's too You're late not a real, for this guy. Uh, is I mean, it I chat? Mean, is it too late for this? It's just too late. For I mean, listen. Just, every time the NYXL takes. stat came up against the East Coast guys, we gave them a little lesson about how to play East Coast Overwatch, and they uh, they never won. I mean, I could pull the up clips from that are actually great. I mean, listen. <laughs> I have I no them, idea listen, what listen, They have four outplayers on their team. We're playing Arisa, Hog, Reaper, Torb, Ryan, Soldier, and like I. Something else, I don't, or maybe I don't remember what it was, and we're capping with five minutes on the clock. I mean, it's just the proofs in the pudding. Shout out to shout out to Juby from Mayfield, Kentucky, first out player in Kentucky. Absolutely, baby, we'd love to see that. Um, but you know, it's just I, I think all around the board, it's just it's it's just really hard for me to not give it to Garchomp. That's that's kind of what what I'm I actually with. and when you said that and you really gave me your explanation and how we had talked about him previously throughout the match, I actually totally agree. Yeah. I totally um, agree. I, I believe you are ready for the awards. No, so, almost ready. Oh, almost, almost ready. ready. Almost ready. Well, oh, we're oh, almost ready to end. Okay. Um, so this yeah, sorry. Be, I'm I'm getting a little confused. We're, we're, we're tired. It's been a, it's been a long day. It's been a very long day. But um, we're gonna we're gonna kick it over to them. Um, Blake, any last words? Um, I just really want to say, as someone that like you know, just on a personal note, like I have never I've been coaching forever at, at different levels, but I've never cast at this level or had fun the the happiness and the compliments and the kindness that like other people in the production from other casters from people in the crowd i personally really appreciated that and i think that makes a holistic point of just the great environment it happens when you bring a community together with a purpose of competition and friendship and I, I really think that that moment isn't just true for me that is probably true for a lot of people everybody hyping each other up oh man ashton you were popping off oh man that that oklahoma ken state uh, kennesaw state match that was amazing probably makes everybody feel really really great and honestly i hope there was those moments for every single person out there and hopefully for some people in the audience man that they really resonated with some of those moments some of those cool moments either the casters people on stage the walkouts anything like that and i hope the people that are kind of close when we have more of these things, sure. come on down. Yeah, come, on, on down. come on down. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to do it for me as well. Um, it's been a pleasure for everyone. Um, it's Sam signing out, Blake signing out. I'm going to take you all to the awards. See you all. There's not, that's not what happens. <laughs>
Thank you.